Hello all. Welcome to Sunday Night Bible Study. Glad to have you. Uh, let's see what's going on here. All right. Yeah. Deep. Yeah, I'm gonna be talking about spiritual warfare tonight, but I'm gonna be going to Second Kings six. Um also I wanna really um I wanna outline things that we deal with with spiritual warfare. And um also about how important it is to go about it. In the way that the Lord set out to, and, and we have examples of that. Huh. That I believe I believe actually Ephesians six and Second Kings six actually the outline of, of how things went down. Uh, it's basically the same message and the expectation of the Lord and how we deal with things, uh, how we prepare for it. And that we will be trained for it. I pray for. Uh, I guess. I guess, in my opinion, I'm going to say that I, I'm going to pray for those that are in error. I'm going to pray for those that despitefully use us and. Uh, and that are just, you know, in many cases, just sadly mistaken. Um, what I'm not going to do is do a back and forth. Um, for some reason, I think that's what's expected nowadays on these streams. Um, I think some things are definitely miscommunicated and misunderstood. And some people get so... Um, how can I say, uh, vigilant in doing so that the error becomes dogmatic? Um, I think that's called a seared consciousness, or seared yeah. consciousness. and so that, that's why it's, it's good to take a step back and turn it, you know, first know that we do all things as under the Lord first. So don't allow what people do to get in the way of what the Lord wants you to, you know, how he wants you to see things and go about things. Um, sometimes things are exposed, you know, in the midst of all this, Brian. Um Maybe even more so. Maybe we should have already seen it. But, you know. I think you saw it. I think yeah. you saw it, but yet you think you still wanted to, you know, you, you don't want to abandon people. Um, you know, you, I think between you and I, because I've, I've basically come to embrace my limitations, be like, you know what, I know if I'm just going to lose my cool, which I probably would end up doing. And I should probably just divorce myself from the entire situation. Otherwise, it's just going to make worse. But if you, for some reason, are a little bit more mature than me, <laughs> obviously. Um, so <laughs> in some areas, perhaps, right? I mean, if you're able to, uh, you know, because I, I don't want to ever get to the point where uh, I'm trying to give off the, the perception that I'm inhaling and exhaling righteousness, right? Like, ooh. Because uh, I, I, like, for if if I don't go to it's, I don't have the impression that I'm like too aloof or too good to fellowship with with whoever. It's not that at all. It's that I don't think I'm good enough because I know I would just lose my my cool. I know that would happen. At this point, I'm. That's. I mean. And I'm not bragging, but I think that's part of maturity is knowing one's own limitations. Not to be like, you know what? I'm going to go challenge myself again and see if I don't, 
you know, lose my cool again. I already know I'm going to do it. So, you know what, what's the point of it? Um, you know, it's basically like, you know, putting your head up against a brick wall. If somebody, if other people can do that. And my view of something like that is if, if I'm noticing, you know, if things that I've openly noticed, things you've openly noticed, I, I don't think that I'm, I'm not, I don't think we're the only ones. So if other people see fit to either go and try to fix certain situations or not, you know, that's on them. I'm not going to judge them for it. That's why, like I told you very clearly, I think, I hope, hopefully I did that, you know, I, I'm never going to judge you for who you, you know, different various people or channels that you choose to, to, to deal with at all. Cause I, you know, I get it. M my, my holding myself aloof as it were, doesn't have to do with, with, with my, you know, devaluating anybody. It's, it's devaluating myself. Cause again, like I, like I said, I, it's, it's cause I don't want to think I, I know where I'm going to go. It's not that I think that I'm, I'm too good for anybody. It's because I know that I'm not good enough <laughs> and I'm going to lose my cool. And I'm just saying at that point, it's not, it's not going to be valuable for anybody. So, yeah. Well, you know, I've learned this, uh, these streams things. that, these streams that like have a, like a sort of like this, like the news is going to be at six o'clock every night. Right. And if there isn't a story, there needs to be a story. Right. And sometimes people get in this habit of having these streams <laughs> And it's almost like they're just looking for the smallest trigger and they don't really go in depth to, to, to seek out, you know, what's really going on here, what's really being said. And I think a lot of things get miscommunicated just at the, uh, the helm of, uh, um, you know, got, got to have that stream tonight. Gotta Honestly, have that I don't think there was much miscommunicated. I think the communication was very well. I think they, they, I think people spoke very clearly about their views last night. I don't think there was miscommunication. I think it was ill communication, but because it's an ill situation. But I don't think anybody was unclear with their views. You know, well, and, what, and my view at least. But I, and I'm reserving my views on on motivation. Like I, all I'm speaking of right now is just sort of hmm. why I'm not speaking on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I would. I'm, well, I'm talking about like with Kelly Powell. At least right now. The, you know, the, the the title of the stream was about Kelly, and he kept getting interrupted every two seconds, every two sentences or every two words, actually they would, they would pause and they would go on about this, all this stuff. And I yet to hear Kelly, what he said, and I, I yet to even hear the implications, you know, of what's being said about Kelly. Oh, and, oh you know what? Yeah. You, you know, I, I see what you're and, saying. Now. And that, that was, to... that was annoying to me, you know? Um, I mean, cause this is where I stand. Uh, Kelly's a good brother of mine and I've heard his testimony. I know he doesn't believe in a work salvation, uh, he, things might have got said in a way that they got took out of context, or maybe Kelly uh, didn't, wasn't clear, or precise on something, maybe or something. But um, uh, whatever it may be, I, I've yet to hear, you know, what he was being accused of. Um, okay. What it is is elements have come in with an intel with a very intellectual and therefore very delect de de delect delectable version of what we know as. Christianity or holiness or being in Christ. And I said an intellectual version of it. Now, somebody may already have some rudimentary or, or, or so some, you know, somebody may have a relationship with the spirit already. I'm not speaking about that, but if somebody comes in with this other version of it, that's intellectual. And now all of a sudden their entire foundation of how you're looking at what it means to walk in Christ and what it means to be holy is now brought down to algorithms, you know, or like, you know, or a plus B equals, you know, this, this logic to where, to where now all of a sudden, if you put it within this perfectly logical framework, you are not going to leave room for the spirit because the spirit operates in realms that we cannot grasp. And if you're bringing it in purely logical and intellectual, well, that, that demands to be grasped. So now all of a sudden, if, if I'm like, well, wait a minute, buddy, it seems like the spirit's not in this. They're like, well, show me that. Show me where the spirit's not in this. And that becomes a complete false dilemma. And it's a trap. It's a demonic trap because now you're pulling people away from a spiritual relationship and in to a particularly, uh, you know, algorithmic relationship. Show me in this chart where I, I need to do that, where I need, you know, and it's like, okay. And then all of a sudden, if you're not, and now you're speaking a completely different language. And now, and, and this is where, 
where we've gotten to. And the reason why it's delectable is because the things of the world um, and the things of the intellect, you know, that's what's pleasing to, to, to the man. Because a man, a man's mind demands knowledge. I want to know the answer. And it's like, well, sorry, maybe you can't know the answer. Maybe God is God. And that's what you need to accept. Well, what been, and and then when I bring you a question, what do you mean? I it, am I in sin or you know am I a new person in Christ or not? Am I it's like does that mean I you know can I lose my salvation or not? Sounds like you're you sound like a Calvinist, Paul. You sound like a work salvationist, Paul. You know by the book you sound like this, but this is because they're choosing they're openly blatantly choosing to ignore the Holy Spirit, and then it's like, and if you try to discuss that. You, then it is like you're speaking another language. And this is why my conclusion is that these people do not know the Holy Spirit. Or if they do, they're sure, surely um, in they're a different being led by the time Holy zone. Yeah. <laughs> and that's well, what really ultimately functionally matters, you know, as far as our walk and what we're trying to do. Because who are we trying to serve? The flesh? Mm -hmm. Or are we trying to serve? You know, we're supposed to starve the flesh, right? Well, you can have all kinds of truth. I think we discussed this before. And if you don't have the priority right, right, and 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 for one, uh, that's to be led by the Spirit and truth. You know, to speak the truth in love. Um, if you're going to do that, you're going to be honest. You're going to be, you're going to be careful. You're going to be patient. You're going to be slow to speak. Uh, you're going to be peaceful. You're going to be pure, in the tent and heart. You're not going to be real quick to make accusations. You're not going to be, uh, which I think is talking evil of your brother. Um, you're not going to be, you know, it, it's almost like you can see that behind it, there's a spirit of envy or strife that really just wants to twist things and go out of its way uh, to turn things into what they're not or what could have been miscommunicated or even or uh, not even given the benefit of the doubt of that. Um, and so. I just want to say tonight, I want to do, I don't want to uh, do that same thing towards, um, you know, that channel and, and what was said last night. But, but I do want to say this, that uh, here in this channel, uh, as far as I can speak for myself, uh, my agenda is to handle the word of God carefully, to be led by the spirit as much as possible. And I know I'm with fault, um, but the spirit is not. And, uh, so I'll always point, you know, to the word of God and uh, willing to be corrected. Um, but at the same time, uh, I will not stand idly by uh, in the midst of this. Uh, um, I got to be careful how I say this, but uh, I will not stand idly by and and allow this to just be what's acceptable when it's not acceptable. Um, and I was, I was talking to Brian actually earlier in your uh, stream, uh, Kelly, that you presented earlier yesterday um, about not even going over there. You know, it's almost like I, I, I knew better than to even go over there. Um, but I was curious as to what in the world could he be talking about? Because I know I've heard, I don't know how many times I've heard, uh, Brother Kelly Powers give his testimony, his gospel. Um, I know how he, he believes in continuing in good works because we've been ordaining that and the Bible teaches that. Uh, and he can say that without hesitation of understanding that it doesn't come against our salvation if we fail right. to do so. You know, where so some reason free grace can't do that. Well, the fact that this is even a question just shows how far off left field people are allowing themselves to be stretched. And I, I don't mean from you. I mean, in the greater question, because all because what we're essentially dealing with here is if I come up and I say, I, I don't really like, or, or if I come up and say, I like waffles. And now I'm like, man, I didn't know you hated pancakes. Right. <laughs> Like, did you hear about so and so? They really hate pancakes. And it's like, well, that's not what I said. But nobody wants. It's not really interesting that you like waffles. Mm. But if you hate pancakes, I mean, all we're talking about here is just 
plain sensational, worldly sensationalism. I think if if I was gonna, at the very at the very best, you know, when it just comes down to it, which again is its mm-hmm. own, it contains its own de- delectability. Which, mm-hmm. I mean, if if people, but again, it depends on what we're trying to get out of something. Because the, the difference with the internet, you know, if if we were literally living in a village where where we had to like eat together, you know, and winter together. And, uh, you know, that sort of thing, as opposed to the Internet, because there are people that I because it's very easy. I'll make friends with anybody when it comes down to it. But when I consider myself a friend with somebody, that doesn't mean that I'm going to kiss their butt. <laughs> you know what I mean? And even if I get to the point where I'm because uh, because, yeah, but 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 but, I, but the difference is, is if I'm representing Christ. Christ is my only friend. Right. And so if, if there's something there to where it's, yeah, it's, if there's something in good conscience, I can't, because uh, I know there's stuff like, well, w- what we're doing on the internet, this isn't a church. This is friends. Mm-hmm. We're, sp- we're all friends here, right? Let's all sit around and be friends. And I'm sorry, I, I personally am not in this to make friends. I, I feel like that's like if maybe if I was like an eighth grader, that's, that's what I think of when I think of like, oh, I'm trying to get on the internet and make friends. I, I don't know. I, I, I can't say maybe necessarily what I am on the internet for. Um, and if I do make friends, then that, that then may that be a blessed and holy thing in the Lord, right? Because mm-hmm. that's what we're supposed that I think we, that is a good thing. That is to, because that's what we're supposed to, we're supposed to come together in the Lord. And so if friendship comes out of that, like with you and I, right? Like you and I have become a very good friends. Yes. Um, you know, other people I consider friends or have considered friends, but then when it comes down to it, there's a difference between being a friend and being a member of a family. And I've come from a pretty dysfunctional family myself. And when I look at, so therefore maybe that's why it's, I'm a little bit more argumentative with people who I consider that I'm closer with. And if I can, if you can call yourself a Christian, then I am going to hold you to a higher standard than what I hold anybody else especially so if i consider you a family member then i already think well you i know you're not going anywhere i'm going to see you in heaven one day buddy and if the person i'm looking at right now and talking to right now if that's not the person i'm actually going to be talking to in heaven so if i think you're so far gone into the depths of 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 sin even if i think you are born again and say like this is why because again then i still don't i don't know you and this is why I'm like, are you saved? Because, because again, that, that doesn't matter to me. Because the person I'm looking at, the person I'm actually speaking to, if they're the one that's unrepentantly living in sin, then that's not the person that I'm going to know in heaven. Because the person in heaven is a new creature. And so when I, then I'm not even going to recognize you. So then why should I even get to know you in this life? Right? Unless, you know, I'm trying to... Like, again, I'm speaking of people that just unrepentantly don't seem to care about their sin and then yet call themselves a Christian. And then lie. I mean, this is the thing. You mean, you, you deal with addicts all the time. So it's, it's you know, we should expect a struggle. And like I said, I, I'm, I would take the coward's way out and I'm just like, I'm not even dealing with it anymore. I'm just going to go and. Go into my little corner and make my little videos. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. You know, there's so many different. I know I've learned this in people's walk of faith. There's so many different seasons and different times that you can be, you know, interjecting in someone's life, where they're learning, they're overcoming, or they maybe had to learn that same thing twelve different times now, or a hundred different times. Um, and then you look in your life and you see the same thing. I mean, for me, the hypocrisy keeps me from, you know, just joining myself from someone um, in fellowship, unless it's something to the extent where it's causing issues among the body or it's something that is being accepted and is okay when it's not. Um and I think this is where the big miss, the, you know, the the big mix up is sometimes with this, is that when we start accepting wrongdoing as okay because we're forgiven or because we all sin, and we're not looking at it as actually something that, that 
that needs to be attended to because it's harmful. You know, or because it's against the one that, that died for us. You know, it's against our, 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 our master, our king, our God. It, and if that don't matter to you, you know, then there's probably other things that, that have to be worked out, you know, uh, to get to that to get to that point where you start desiring, you know, what he desires and you start hating what he hates. Um, and you still fall short. You know, I, I think that is something that I would never want to lose grips of is in, in the reality of all things. Even though we have this expectation, we all do fall short. Um, so I would rather edify someone, you know, like, for instance, if, if it became that uh, you were brought up in such a way where you're argumentative, Kelvy, and uh, we go back and forth. And d do I think that the best way to deal with that is to argue with you all the time? Of course not. I, I would want you to see that, hey, I understand where you're coming from. You got that background. I got this background, too. I'm dealing with this, you know, so I get it. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to be that kind of hypocrite where I don't understand that. But at the same time, uh, I think the best way to deal with it would be not to argue. You know, to show another way, to show that uh, I understand where you're coming from. I understand that we all got weaknesses and I'm not going to count yours out and not look at mine. Um, but I am going to say this, that, you know, there's a better way. You know what I mean? And the only way to do that is not to rebuke you every time and call it out every time. But when these occasions arise, you know what you do? You just, you love them through it, man. You pray for them and you try to be silent through the most of it, you know? Um, and, and vice versa with me. If I've got something where I, I say one thing, but then I do another and all this, and I, I constantly come from this uh, background where uh, I've had this habit and you know it's, and you've already explained it to me. I already rebuked me for it. And at the same time, uh, how are you going to handle it? Well, you're going to you're going to show that there's another way. You know, you're going to lead by example, right? And I think that's the best testimony we can have with one another, and and you know to love one another. And well, uh, I think it is scriptural that we're supposed to be being conformed into the image of Christ. <laughs> yeah, but it's through faith. Yeah. You know, it's not through perfection. Um, it is through perfection. It's through Christ's perfection. Right. Well, it, it's the perfection of our faith, though. I mean, like, for instance, well, yeah, I, I, I believe, I believe his power will come in, yeah, and, and do something that we couldn't do eventually, right? Uh, well, it's like if if the what is drawing us towards God ultimately to sanct through sanctification uh, in our justification towards glorification is the perfection of of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so that is a draw. That's an activity, you know, because the people want to talk about what it means to be uh, positionally changed in God. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm positionally changed. There was a line there. When I was on one side of the line, I was not in the Lord. Now I've been drawn to this other side of the line, and now I am in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And nothing's going to and then that's that's it. Well, that's not really scriptural because well, it's, it's just incomplete. Like it's not that it's not true. It's just not complete. It's not the complete picture. So when somebody points to that and say, this is the way it is, mm -hmm. you're like, well, there's other things. And then when they then then that's where it becomes unbiblical. And it might be demonic. <laughs> well, I think there should be a striving, but I don't think there's ever going to be a perfection. Um, because even Paul said, I have not obtained it yet, but one thing I do know, I'm putting that behind me, you know, and then he's reaching forward, you know, uh, for the, for the prize, for the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. It isn't that, that we're ever going to be as Jesus is in perfection, but it is that we are striving towards that, that we are being corrected by that, that we are looking to that as what is right. You know, yeah, every bit of imperfection in us is was another na another hammering of the nail into his into the nails in his his body. I, I firmly believe that. Yeah. So God, really, I should I should hate my sin. I'm not commanding somebody to hate their sins or they're not saved. 
I should, I'm just saying, I'm just making a statement that every sin that you commit is another hammering into the nail of Christ. Mm -hmm. And if you're okay with that, you know, again, this speak, then the, the very sheer state of that is if, if you can say that that's cool. Nail, keep those nails in, buddy, because you know what? You're God. You can take it. You can take it, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then, um, to me, I, I don't, I don't share that attitude. <laughs> I don't want to have made my Lord suffer, and therefore, I do hate my sins. And that's called conviction, isn't it? What else is conviction of the Holy Spirit? Not condemnation, which is of Satan, mm -hmm. but conviction of the Holy Spirit. You know, is but the understanding that you are in sin and that you, you know, it's it's the pain. It's the spiritual equivalent of pain. Right. I've just touched a hot coffee pot. I feel pain. I stop touching it, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's a. There's a lot to be understood there, and there. I, I don't want to ever turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. That's where I'm at on that, right? Where I just, I, I just take for granted, and I have in my past. I I, I have. Um, we I we have got to accept I, we're going to do that. We are going to do that, and yeah. knowing we're going to do that, we got to keep vigilant because that that's the this, pretending that we don't do that. That's that sinless perfectionism. No, 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 I'm not on a sin. It's like, no, you got to understand that it's going to happen. You know, it's like, it's like, I mean, what's the, the stupidest thing to compare it to? It's You got to go get your haircut. Sorry. You can't pretend like, you just can't pretend like it's not going to, something's got to be done. You know, that there's nobody on earth, you know, unless you give yourself some kind of electrolysis uh, in your hair fog, but you got to get your haircut no matter what. You can be the laziest dirt, you know, because everybody's going to know because you're going to have long hair. Right. <laughs> it's, a, mm. it's like it's nature's clock. It's nature's way of showing that stuff's got to get done. Like, and this is all we see in nature is the is is, you know, is like we said, like wind, water, you know, all things that are in life that are flowing. Um, and that's that's what it's about. There isn't just like, well, stamped to perfection. And now this is it. No, we're living. We're living in, in Christ. And that means walking. Uh you know, dwelling and breathing rather than just kind of this, this, uh, cause again, like I said, there is a positional change, mm -hmm. but there's a lot more that comes with that. Yep. Well, I guess we need to start this off. Uh, uh I just want to say thank you to everyone that's here tonight. Uh, I hope we, uh, are given eyes to see ears to hear and that the good Lord will change our hearts. Uh, in doing so, and um, I pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would oversee this fellowship tonight, that you would be, your spirit would lead, guide, and direct us, Lord, and may your will be done, and may you have your way, Lord. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you strengthen us in our inner man, Lord, by the power of your might and your spirit, and by the power of your spirit. God, I pray that we look to you for this, Lord, and, and may you you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace, Lord. All right. Uh, I guess we'll just start off by saying uh, we've we've talked about our substantiation in Christ. We've talked about our walk in faith. And now we're going to get to the part of Ephesians where we're talking about our stand. Uh, of course, we're going to finish up in our walk here a little bit. Ephesians 6.1 is going to continue in uh, you know, talking to the children, uh, what's commanded of them and the, the father and the mother, how to, how to be with their children. Uh, and then we're going to get right into the warfare, which is, uh, where I'm really focusing tonight and, uh, uh go ahead, Sean, I'll let you, uh, all right. Uh, children, Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it well that it may be well with thee, 
and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling. In singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord whether he be bond or free. Hmm. <clears throat> That's very interesting, isn't it? That's rough, man. <laughs> <Isn't it? laughs> yeah, but I wonder if Christians understand that, that, you know, there's rewards even while we're here on earth. This whole understanding of why we're saying that, you know, uh, like the whole conversation last night and everything, it, the reason we go about things ordained to do good works and all this, knowing that... Uh, Whatsoever good thing a man doeth, whether he be bond or free, that means whether he's saved or not, the word of God is not going to return to him void. If people do what the word of God teaches, and God teaches rewards for such things, or he teaches uh, uh, punishment for such things, or judgment, then it, it applies. While we're on earth in this flesh, there are things that will come about us. Uh, just, it has nothing to do with your salvation. Has nothing to do with the judgment at judgment day, but it does have to do with our daily walk. Yeah, with goodwill doing service as to the Lord, not to men. And it says, yeah. what, what doing doing work no matter what your job is, even if it's cleaning toilets, right? Then do do the best job you can as if you're 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 doing it for the Lord, because you are, because all things are given by the Lord. And it comes down to it. So do it the best you can unto the Lord. Because all these things on earth are like a vapor. We know that. So somebody's like, oh, this is something bad. You know, even if I lose my freaking, I'm sorry for my, my vulgar language. But even if I lose my, uh, like my keys or my wallet or something. And it's really, because I, I, it seems like I don't find it unless I, I end up crying out. And I'm like, ah, man. And I mean, I. I don't like try to like swear or nothing, but it's just enough to get. And then I, I realize I'm like, who, who am I? What am I getting angry at here? Mm -hmm. Everything is under control. There's really no need to get. And the same thing if you are like in, in your particular line of work, if you're angry at like doing this or that, it's like still do a good job. Cause you know, cause if there's people like, you know, if you're mad at your boss or if you're, or, or the job is difficult, like th this should serve as a motivation. And anybody in any line of work or in doing anything at all, doing dishes, doing your laundry, do everything as to, to you're doing it to, to the Lord. Because he's always watching you. If he's in you, then he's in you. And you should be working as if the Lord. So that, And a lot of this is so that not just to glorify the Lord, because if anybody knows that you are doing work, oh, what a great worker he is. Oh, that Christian guy. Oh, yeah. You know? And it's not that, oh, well, he's so great because he's a Christian. He does work. It's not that. It's not for that. If you are doing that and boasting in it or on your, of your own sake, then, then, then yeah, you shouldn't be doing it <laughs> because then you're not mature enough to be actually you know, doing it. Then you need to go back and study. If you, you know, if you're like, oh, I'm doing this great work because I'm a Christian, you know, that's not, that's not what this is saying. But this is what people get accused of. And, you know, and that's where it's like, if, how do you answer to that? You, you got to be in the right spirit you know, to, to be doing these things. Because if these things are done without the spirit, then they are just going to be done in the man anyway. And it's, it's easy to m m m uh, what's the word? mimic doing stuff. Because uh, the only way we can, like most of the world perceives stuff, they don't perceive it spirit, spiritually. But when we do something spiritually, it has a reflection into the world that the worldly person is going to see and it should stand out as being holy and sanctified and so when they see that they say oh that's something that's holy and sanctified not of where i'm at 
But if you just describe it as just merely, oh, I'm over here, you know, as opposed to over there, as opposed to being actually holy and sanctified. So there's any number of things that are just merely different. We're not called to be merely different, mm -hmm. holy and sanctified. And, you know, back then it was more common to see, like, masters and servants as, an you know, as, as white people made a living. Uh, it was more common to see this. And so when Paul is referring to these things, uh, if you notice, he says, and you masters do the same things unto them for bearing threatening. He's being hold, you know, uh, have understanding, do good to them, be patient with them. You know, somebody gets mouthy. You know, you might want to get a little patient. Somebody gets out of hand. Uh, you got to have understanding. They don't understand yet. You know, and, and I've noticed this, that the only way to really help people is to ensample that same thing you want them to understand. Uh, so you need to go about it that way in order for them to get it. But if you're going about it in the same rage, in the same rebellion, the same riotous manner that these people are doing that so, um, you know, you're, you're probably not going to get your point across very well. We're going to call you a hypocrite. Oh, that's the thing. What 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 we should keep keep a firm eye on what we're trying to get across, right? Yeah. And what reason? Yeah, at least go about it in the manner. You know, if you're wanting them to be a certain way, then maybe you need to understand you have to be that way too. Well, that's the thing. We know we're not going to be completely, but we need to be headed because if 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 we're going to talk about positionality, I mean, we're really we're still talking about heading in one direction or heading in another direction. But you can still be facing one direction and yet still be moving back. You know? But this is the difference. The guy and a pastor tell me once, like, you know, the difference between like you can have a relationship with your father, you know, and yet never talk to him. Yet you still technically have a relationship. It's not a very good relationship. So you can say, I know my father, but that's not the same thing as walking in fellowship with him. Yeah. And that's not a problem for you. Like, well, I mean, that's a the thing. Then, then, you know, this, everybody knows what's in their own heart. So, it's like okay, then you you we want to be walking in fellowship with the Lord, right? But like if judgment on each other for not doing that, we should help. We should want to help each other. Yeah, you but know? even with the masters and servants like here, right? Wagging our finger. Oh, you're not serving the Lord like you should be. Like I, you know, yeah, that's that's good. But then if yeah, there's there's so many different ways. Well, to even, even with the master and servant here, the way you're looking at things, it's the same thing with like the father and the children about not bringing your children to wrath, but bringing them up to the admonition of the Lord. Um, you know, we're taught to go about things in meekness and wisdom, truth and love, peacefulness. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the way we should go about things. So forbearing one another, forgiving one another, edifying one another. And when you teach people the right way to go about things in such a way, uh, you know, it's, it's way more beneficial and it is definitely fruitful uh to go to do things in such such a manner so finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of god that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to do, um, you may be able to withstand in the day, in, in the, sorry, in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, interesting and having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 
praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. All right, then, Sean, Sean, let's hold up just a second, please, if you don't mind. Um, I, I just want to share something that I, I went through with this. Um, just backing up on uh, the armor of God, you know, um, first, I, I love how Paul said, be strong in the Lord and the power is might." When we were in Ephesians 3, remember he asked the prayer that he had, he said that he would, he would pray that God would grant to us right that we'd be strengthened in our inner man by the power of his spirit right and and i think uh, for one and, and and when he gets down to the end of this he's talking about staying in prayer a, a constant prayer and and i think we continually pray because even though we do all this preparation uh, really what uh, the prayer that we have is that god would grant to us these things you know, to have the understanding, to have all that we need uh, for him to strengthen us in our inner man by the power of the spirit. That we're actually putting all dependency on God, even though we are reading the word, obeying the word, taking a stand in the word. All right. We're trusting God. Our helmet of salvation, the gospel of peace is really at broad constantly. You know, where I, I don't know if you guys have this in you. But what the Spirit put in me is that I'm constantly looking to the gospel of Jesus to understand things. I'm constantly looking at the gospel of Jesus to, to overcome things. I'm constantly looking at the promise of God and his son and all that it gives me, all the riches and glory and all my faith is dependent on and contingent on that the only thing that merits the right for me to even come to God and have peace with God is through what Christ has accomplished is through what God has set out in his son. Nothing Amen. of myself, but that is of faith, faith in Christ Jesus. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, 2 Kings 6, but uh, if I can, I want to share this with you guys just briefly. Uh, there's six points I want to make before I go into this. One, evangelism, to succeed in spiritual warfare, we spread God's word, right? Do there's trust to succeed in spiritual warfare. We trust in God to provide for you. Uh, three, there's vigilance to succeed in spiritual warfare. Be wary of Satan's attacks. You know, and don't come complacent. Like there's some people I know they get ridiculous. Everything's about Satan, you know, and but I think we got to be careful too. Uh, not to where we get to that ridiculous end of things. You know, I know that people can be ridiculous uh, that we just dismiss it easily either because I, I've learned this, that Satan will do anything. He's seeking whom he may destroy. He's like a roaring lion and there ain't nothing that he won't do um, to do so. And four would be our faith in that, you know, to have the, the succession in the spiritual warfare. We, we have faith in God's protection and his promises in, in his word. We believe him when he says something. We put it in our heart. It has a place in our heart. And uh, five is love. Uh, you're going to see even in, in this, when, when God showed uh, to the prophet the angels that were camped around about him with chariots of fire that was protecting them. Yeah. He said, you know, he wanted to know, did we blind them? Do we, you know, do we do something to them? And he said, no, feed them, feed your enemies. So we're taught to love our enemies. This is very important in understanding our spiritual warfare, how we go about things. We're not out to get them back to retaliate. We're hoping that they come into the truth, you know, in, in the understanding that they need. Um, so, yeah, love your enemies. And six is obedience, and that's to succeed in spiritual warfare. Obey God's word. This is so important. This is where 
I found that some people in free grace, they dismiss this as something that uh, is actually an issue or something sometimes. I find it really odd how they look at this sometimes. Um, and then they'll say, oh, no, we don't mean that. We Well, okay, you don't mean that, but that is what you're putting across. And then seven, and this is most importantly, I think, in the end, is repentance. Repent of your sins. When things are revealed in the spiritual warfare, let's say uh, God has, uh, we've, we, in 2 Corinthians 10, it talks about a readiness that we have in us to revenge all disobedience with obedience, right? Because our, our, our it says that in 2 Corinthians 10, that our, our spiritual gear that we have in, in spiritual warfare is not carnal, but it's to the, uh, uh, the pulling up of the strongholds. And what I found is in our spiritual warfare, a lot of times there are things that we haven't recognized in our own life. Maybe we're too busy at looking at everybody else's mistakes. We're not looking within. And we have these strongholds in us that are getting dismissed. They're getting overlooked. And there is no true repentance. There is no coming into the knowledge of the truth. I believe true repentance is coming into the knowledge of the truth of God and what he set out. This is the way to go about things. This is what it is. And so uh, in these steps of, of what we're talking about here with our spiritual warfare, I want you guys to keep this in mind in 2 Corinthians 6. I'm not going to go too deep in it and get involved in it, but there was a time when um, uh, to this prophet, Elisha, uh, it was revealed to the king of the, nor the northern uh, Israel, um, that even though his enemy was against him, he wanted him to see what God was doing. Right? So it was revealed to him. And I, I want you guys to know that through our faith in Jesus Christ and through the promises of God's word, right, the Spirit reveals to us what is freely given to us that are in Christ Jesus. So we've not been given a spirit of fear, right? But of love and power and of a sound mind. It, the, we are we, we are in the promises of God. We trust God, even though we may fail. If God is for us, who can be against us, right? But I'll tell you something. God is not for us going about things in a way that God is against. So, as much as there is many doctrines out there that keep you from this teaching, I want you to know in spiritual warfare, it is important how we go about things. It isn't, I'm saved and I'm good, and that's it. It's also that, okay, God set out that this is how we go about things. We trust Him. We have faith in Him. Um, and, and when I fail, he, you know, He's. I, I don't have to be concerned. God is with me. But I still need to look within my own self. Am I doing things the way God wants me to? Am I, you know, am I going about these things the way God wants me to? And if not, am I willing to come into the acknowledgement of that truth, which is true repentance to God, and accept that as the way to go? So when we go back to Ephesians 6, And I apply these things from from Second Kings six, where I've I've seen that, that it was demonstrated in the uh, the story of Second Kings six, and and I, I would like to go through it, but it would probably take a while. Uh, I would ask that you guys take your time and 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 go to Second Kings six and study this out, and you'll see that the example that I'm talking about is uh, in line with what I'm saying here. Um, but I, I want you guys to understand this that. When we put on the whole armor of God, that's what we're doing. You know, we're standing in the acknowledgement of the truth of God and what He set out. All right, and Be strong in the Lord. Yeah, Amen. That's what it says in verse ten. It says, and it's a the, the word is a, an imperative, which is a command. Now I'm not saying it's a commandment, but it's, it's something we're told to be to be done. Um, it's it's a present tense word, so be can to, to be strong. We need this is something. We, it's not like oh, you were strong once, now come into the Lord. 
Mm-hmm. This is be strong in the Lord. It's what we're told to be. Don't argue with me, right? Don't argue with us. And passive voice. You do now the, the, the passive voice of the word for be strong is interesting. Because basically, I think the word is correct. The power that overcomes, we are given the power to overcome. Like we're, we're not given power for its own sake, that we're given power that we use and say, I have power. The power we have is to overcome. And when our confidence is in him. Well, he overcomes it through us, basically. Yeah, amen. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's doing it through us, amen. Yeah, our confidence is in him. He's doing it through us, right? And, uh, and while it's in us, it is happening. Like, well, it's it's like, well, no, I'm not sinning because he already took my sins. Well, no, you you, you are a sinner. And you are in the process of, you know, if you, you know, you, you are a sinner. You're in the process of being a sinner right now. But Christ is in you in the process of of sanctifying you. And this is the, this is what it is to be living in Christ. Is to, and, and again, it, it is a, it's, it's not supposed to be a necessarily comfortable. This is why uh, armor. Uh, there's not a lot of armor that's that's comfortable, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'll, I'll just say this about Second Kings six because I'm really trying to stay away from the lengthiness of of getting into that. Um, but I, I don't want to disregard it either. Um, when it, it's when God has miraculously showed Elijah, his fearful servant, that an army of angels was protecting him from an enemy army. I don't know if you guys know that, but God is, you know, when you're a child of God, God is with you. And the guardian angels reveal that this chapter deals with spiritual warfare for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the powers, against the world's forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. God reveals seven lessons, right, for succeeding in spiritual warfare. And that was evangelism, trust. Vigilance, faith, love, obedience, and repentance when you sin. Uh, these are things, uh, because we're, you know, uh, covered in the blood and and uh, renewed in the Holy Spirit, that we are in, in the promise of God, in the seal of his Holy Spirit of promise, um, that God's promise is true, that th- this repentance is I think the end result, repentance is the end result. It's it's where God has done a work in your life. He's revealed things to you, and now you see the truth, and you see this is the way to go about things, right? So you come into that knowledge of truth. And in doing so, you, there's an acceptance. Okay, this is the way I should go about things. Um. But there was a uh, there was an Armenian army that surrounded uh, the the northern army of Israel. About Second Kings again. Yep. Is yeah. that the same and, one you were talking about? Yeah. Okay. Second Kings chapter six. And through Elijah's prayers, God then allowed the servant to see the army of angels that surrounded them. To succeed in spiritual warfare, you have to have faith that God is protecting you. When you are serving him, you know you you have to understand that. Amen. And so, a lot of times, what I've learned through this, guys, is that you know when I want to retaliate or I want to defend myself instead of deny myself, you know, I've learned this: in order for the Lord to increase, like for to be fruitful, God, we must decrease, we must deny ourselves, we got to pick up our cross, and we follow Christ. That's it. That's the power of His might. Yeah. Be strong, but be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's not your own strength. That's in the power of his might. And then we have the armor. And then we withstand. Be armed, withstanding. And I'm seeing the word is antihistamine. An- an- is that right? Antihistamine. To withstand or stand against. Also used in James 4.7. And in First Peter five nine, to stand against. Hey Kelly, good to have you on, and uh, good to see you, brother. Franco, 
Man, there's so many on tonight. John B. Mark wins. I don't know if I mentioned everybody earlier, but I just want to say, man, it's a blessing to have you guys. And uh, all right, uh, get, getting back to Ephesians six, though, on, on the armor. Um, I, I just want you to see how Second Kings six and, and the relation to that and to this is that um, being strong in the Lord and the power of His might is believing God that He is with you. And if God is for us, who can be against us? And we're going about to do things uh, uh, for the Lord as a servant of the Lord. We, we have to have this confidence in him that he's with us, right? And so when I'm putting on the armor of God, the confidence is already that the armor I'm putting on uh, can be trusted. All right? So my faith in, in the promises of God can be trusted. Right. Uh, the helmet of salvation that protects me is that in my mind that I have the mind of Christ, that I have his promises. I have what he's uh, the Holy Spirit's given me freely. Uh, are, are, as, as made revealed, revealed to me, made known to me freely what's given to me because I'm a child of God, because I, I'm within the Christ crucified in his salvation in the power of God through his will, through his uh it's perfect will, right? Not of my will or the will of this flesh, but of the will of God. Uh, <laughs> Amen. So we can withstand in this evil day, having done all to stand just based on that. That's what we're standing on. We're standing, therefore, we're having our learns got girt about in this truth, right? It isn't any strength of my own. It's that God is with me. And I know his promises. Amen. And so that breastplate of righteousness that I have is that imputed righteousness that he's that he's imputed to us, right? And my feet, oh, sorry. Yeah. I was just yeah. going to end it with this. And my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The thing that is keeping me in this truth, I'm constantly looking at the gospel of Jesus Christ and the promises that are given to me. And I'm living my life accordingly to what has been given to me as Christ, you know, as I've received him, so shall I also walk in my faith. So I'm taking that shield of faith and I'm quenching every fiery dart. And uh, I'm praying always in prayer, <laughs> supplication and spirit, not only for myself, but for all brethren, right? As we're all in this fight together in this unity in Christ, because we know that God must grant these things and must give them to us. And so my allegiance is, the reason I'm praying is because I know that it comes from God and I'm going to him for it. So my I'm, all my confidence is in him. I'm going to read from uh, Isaiah chapter 59, uh, starting at uh, verse 11. Uh, we, we roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. And as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off and truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter yea truth faileth and he that departeth from evil and he that departeth yea truth faileth and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey and the lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no judgment and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness it sustained him mm. for he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak mm. amen we should probably read the first parts of that because that was the judgment against whom Basically, like, you know, it's putting the uh, the distinction. 
According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. To the islands he will repay recompense, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. I'm learning from that there's a lot of early teachings that Jacob and Israel are also used as messianic. And as, as like Jacob here would be referring to the Messiah. It's interesting. And this is agreed upon in like Talmudic writings. Mm. Mm -hmm. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, my words which I have put on thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of thy mouth, out of thy seed, nor out of thy mouth, of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Hmm. Thankful for the love of God. Amen. Saint, that, that, reading the, the prophets, the Old Testament stuff, it's, you know, I, I, there is a danger... I don't know if, if it's a, a danger is the right word, but again, the the rainbow hippie Jesus, <laughs> right? Is yeah, uh, yeah. it's not accurate. <laughs> no, no, the liberal Jesus isn't in the Bible. So we never finished Ephesians, did we? We were on, or wait, am I looking at the right screen? Yeah. 21. <clears throat> but ye that, or sorry, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus. A beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with you all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Versus loving him without sincerity. Right? Would that be the implication? You're muted if you're if you're trying to talk. I'm oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I mean that kind of goes in the face of grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Well, what about those that are worshiping the devil but they're still saved and never had nothing to do with Christ? They for two seconds they they agreed with the gospel. Is that sincerity? Apparently, you can prove that scripturally. But it, I, was, I think somebody, technically, you know, if you just want to take pieces out of scripture, you could prove, you could prove a lot of things <laughs> scripturally. <laughs> you could prove a lot of different things uh, scripturally. If you're just simply going by the book alone, right? And not by the spirit. Mm -hmm. This is why the you know the, the reformed the reformed uh, dogma of the five solas, you know, sola fide, sola, you know, that's because again, I, I came out of this, I came into Christianity not through any of these things. I mean, except for maybe through you know, if 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 you want to look at it through the lens of Calvary Chapel, that if I'm gonna be honest, you know, my studies did come through that. 
So if you want to look at that, like, you know, pre-trib dispensationalism, Westcott, or, or not Westcott, or uh, what's the Schofield, you know, I've, I've, I've heard all the different uh, hmm. accusations, but uh, I have also compared, you know, so that's been the last like 13 years of my life is comparing all these different views of Christianity. You know, that's like somebody was like, oh, you're, you're, you're looking at these, or no, they said, I'm arguing with you. And, and I'm actually arguing with all these like church fathers. And I'm just like, no, that's not the case at all. Like about the, the, I'm, I'm looking at, if I look at, I already have my, my, my views that I believe in. Right. Like I, yeah. I like as much as I know, like, again, some things can get edified. That's what edification means is, is coming more firmly to be able to, like, I remember years and years and years ago, I would have never have absolutely said, yes, I, I believe you do not lose your state of, of, uh, of justification when you are saved. Like, you know, I can remember when I wouldn't have said that. And now yeah. I've been edified in my walk and in my my, my growth with the Lord. And now I, I will say that. Absolutely, I'll say that. And I'll, but I'll be able to point to scripture and I'll be able to, to discuss it without just, you know, without just arguing blindly. And that's what it means to be edified by, by scripture. Or, and here's the thing, I, I've come to the conclusion at this point, and, and, and arguing with Calvinisms, and, and also, is that once a certain people indeed have a of that in their mind, I'm not going to change their mind. And and the thing is, did the Lord, does the Lord expect me to change their mind? No, I don't think he does. I think the Lord is absolutely aware that this guy is going to believe in one way, right or wrong. Because all we need to be right about is who Jesus Christ is and what he did for us. Again, mm -hmm. if I, I want to speculate or philosophize over the mechanism used behind the scenes of cosmic souls and causality, you know, that's where that's on you, you know. But if we Very agree cool. with the Lord, then we agree on the Lord. But if if if, if that Calvinist is going to be like, no, I don't get it, yeah, you know, and it's like, okay, well, I've I've accepted at this point that's the way they're wired. <laughs> <laughs> right mm. at this point it, we're you know we might as well be like you know like black and white but let's just come together in his sight you know <laughs> well i i know truly that my salvation is dependent on god loving us you know that he gave his son not me loving him right but when paul says grace be with them that that, that he's saying that the way the way they're maturing in christ you know, I'm not saying that they're not saved or if, if they're not at this point or whatever it may be. But, but the way that we're maturing in Christ, you know, by Paul saying grace be with you, he's saying, I can see that you are conforming to what, you know, God intended with the salvation. That this is what you're uh, you're going about things in the way, you know, that God would want you to. And for some reason. People don't put, like, this is important. And I'll tell you this much. If you're living a life where you have received Christ, right, and you have nothing to do with him, and you're living out there in this wicked way, you're bringing nothing but havoc and hell in your life. I mean, it's torturous. I've been on that path a few times and had to get off of it immediately. Not even realizing, you know, and coming to my senses and, and saying, what in the world is going on? I, what am I thinking? Why am I even going about things this way? How disingenuous is this to say that I believe in Jesus and I'm living this life that doesn't believe in Jesus? You know? Um, What's a relationship? Yeah, well, there, there's this reconciliation for me to have fellowship with God, but I'm choosing not to even have fellowship with him after being reconciled. It's like if 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 my parents were divorced, my only technical relationship with my father was the check that came in the mail every month, right? Like, which <laughs> that's not really, it's like, all right, well, he's there. There's something, there's some kind of transaction happening, but it doesn't really mean I know him. Yeah, but to make it like this isn't a big deal. All right, okay, yes. Let's say when we get to the heaven, it's not about your salvation. I get that. But let's say this. While you're here on earth, you're going to live a life of hell. Do you care about them enough to let them know that? 
You love them enough. See, in this ministry where I'm at, I see people that take this path. I took it at one time in my life. And I just want to say to people, you don't want to go down that path. You do, you, there is a better way you know, to, to have this abundance in Christ, to have life more abundantly in him, so that even if you are suffering, you're suffering for what is good rather than what is wrong. Amen. If you're turning towards light and Christ, then that which is away from the light and that which is darkness is going to appear a lot more dark than what you're probably used to, the more you're facing towards the Lord. So, again, it's I agree. We, we shouldn't have to wag our finger and tell people, stop, don't you sin, don't you sin, don't you do that sin. Um, now, again, if we're friends or, or brought our fellowship with people who are who are actively, again, this is an individual thing. But in general, I do believe if we are pointing people to the light of what Jesus has done and what, you know, how we are supposed to, to glorify him and spread the gospel, then you don't have to work. Like, that, that is that is naturally, positionally going to be in a different, uh, in a different uh, mode than, than people who are going to be actively in sin. They're just not going to be compatible. So I don't have to tell people, get away from that light. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't have to tell people, get away from that darkness if I am actually telling them where the light is. You know, like there, there's a difference there. Because this, so this is the difference in positive preaching versus negative preaching, right? Now, again, there's going to be, there are undoubtedly going to be times for, for various things as the spirit leads and depending on who you're talking to. But I, I firmly think if we're, and this is why I used to tell people back in the day as well, like, you know, like in my earlier walk and, and talking to people that I knew, like if you're worried so much about about your own sins, you, you, but if, if, if you're basically attacking shadows because sins are the lack of godliness. So if you have sin in your life, whatever it is, all that sin is, is the void. It's not a thing. You, you can't think of it like an actual thing. Like, it's not like there's a clump of slime that's sin in your spiritual life. No, it's just, it's the fact that you're doing something that's not in the Lord. Therefore, if you start doing stuff that is in the Lord, you're going to all of a sudden look back. Next thing you know, and it's going to be like, you know, days, years, weeks, whatever, whatever later. And be like, wow, that sin was in my life. And, but all that sin was, was the lack of God in my life. So now that I'm moving towards Christ, I'm trying to serve Christ, spreading the gospel, learning about him, walking in him, doing what he says, you know, clothing the... The, the 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 naked feeding the hungry whatever it, and this isn't about works for your salvation this is about getting closer and walk the, the just like when Jesus says I do the will of my Father that does not mean that Jesus is not doing his own will his will is the will of his Father because he loves the Father because he does what the Father is he's in complete and utter agreement with the Father so just like if we are in 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 in, in in tune with the son, we will also be doing his will. And it's not because we're being forced to, it's because this is what we genuinely want to do. And then they're going to look aside and be like, Oh, Hey Jesus, look, who's here. Like you're doing the same. We're doing the same thing. Oh, we're doing the will of the father because we're, we're led by the same Holy spirit. This is just my, how I've, Come to see these, because and then looking at it like that, like, all the all these other different viewpoints about how you interpret scripture, they, they should all trickle down to that. And if they don't, then I have to question them. You know, let me just share this. Like part of our our um, spiritual warfare, right? It's part of what we're equipping ourselves with is is for one the word of God. You know, God says something, we take it to heart, and it has a place in our heart that it is true. I mean, it is so true that it has the first place in my heart. It is, it, it's ruling in my heart, right? That This is the way things are. Uh, so when Paul's talking here, he's talking about the future glory. He's talking about uh, something to be mindful of. We're supposed to have an eternal mindset in this promise that we have with Christ. And that the things that we're doing now, sometimes we can, you know, you can get in that struggle. Well, why is it worth it? You might be in a place where you're all alone making this stand. Everybody else is having a good time, but you're taking the hardship here. And why is it worth it? 
You know, what, what is this? You know, why is it worth this? Uh, what if you're being outcast, you know, and at, at the same time, they're not understanding your understanding and you want to retaliate because your, your feelings are hurt and all this. You maybe want to do 10 streams about how wrong they are. Right. Just so you can prove that you were right and put them down and make them feel bad or whatever it is that you want to retaliate to. But uh, let me just say this. I just want to read this, man. Maybe God's word says things a lot better than I can. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. So they're saying, you know, even this fleshly body that we have and all the corruption that it has, it's looking forward to that, you know, that new body that we're getting in Christ. Amen. Uh, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who's subject to same in hope. You'll find that very interesting. That even though the, the, this uh, body that we have was made to, to vanity, which is uh, to selfish conceit, right? Uh, he subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of the body. I would, first fruits of the Spirit, I'd love to get into that teaching sometime, but anyway. Um, because he's talking about Christians, then he's also segregating the first fruits of the spirit there for a reason, but that'll be another day. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? You know that it's impossible to please God without faith. So if God wants us to hope, then that means he wants us to hear his word. He wants us to believe him because God has said it. And, and we believe him on the basis that God is God and God will not lie and he cannot lie. Right. God wants us to have our confidence in him. It's very clear. So likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. That means our weaknesses. And we, we must all come to the understanding that we're all poor. We all have weaknesses, right? The, the, the sooner you come into that truth and align with that truth, the more you'll be in the repentance to God. Now, that is true repentance to God. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Not only do we not know what we should pray for, but how we should go about things. And this is what's going to be done. Uh, you know, it, it, when it, it was talking about our warfare, how we're always in prayer and supplication for not only us but for all saints and perseverance for all saints right but because why we're putting all our confidence in god and we know that we have weaknesses each one of us might have different ones right and so we're all in prayer for one another and we all know we need god to intervene we all know that we need to be strengthened our inner man by god and we all believe we will be we put our hope in him and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for saints according to the will of God. What is the will of God? It is that we say this prayer. It is that we depend on God. It is that we put on that whole armor of God, right? Which is a dependence on God. That armor is basically a dependence on God based on the promises that are given to us in the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? And, and we stand in this faith. We stand in after done all to stand, we still just stand with our loins girt about in truth. Amen. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son. And, you know, who are all these, uh, you know, predestined and justified and sanctified? Who is this? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. 
for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. And, and I'll tell you who all these people are. It's those people that when they hear the gospel, they believe God and they receive him. They believe on the name of Jesus. They receive him because they trust God and they put their hope and faith in God alone. Nothing of themselves, only in what Christ accomplished on the cross and in his resurrection, the victory that he's been given over death over sin and death. Those are the ones that were predestined. Those are the ones uh, that he justified. Though, that whosoever believes, those are the ones. So who's he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Hallelujah. Guys, listen. We can listen to this word today and we can put it in our hearts and I hope it gives you this confidence that if God is for us, who can be against us? I have that on my wall. I wish if I could turn my video around. It's on my wall in my room in here. I got a pick Jesus, got a big old guitar pick. And then it's got, if God is for us, who could be against us? That is right when I first got saved and the Holy Spirit come in my life. I want to say when I first got saved, but uh, after I went through a fall, actually, and the Lord came back in, uh, in my life in a mighty way um, and filled me with the Holy Spirit. I, I couldn't help but that this, this verse just kept ringing with me and I kept saying, all glory be to God. So who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, did my fall separate me? No. Did distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl sword? No. It is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. That even when we're being persecuted, and I believe this verse is, is genuinely, specifically talking about towards those that are actually going through um, uh, harm or persecution because you're doing what's right. Where I'm using the excuse of, uh, or using the example of, of me failing uh, but I'll tell you what I did do what's right is I still trusted God through it all. And he raised me back up. But who shall separate us from the love of Christ? None of these things shall. And, and we are counted all the day long as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, as this goes right back in Ephesians 6, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, having your loins, having your loins girt about with truth. Because I remember one study talking about the the girt, like the uh, the belt, is where all the tools hang from. You know, so everything's like hanging on the truth. You know, that sort of thing. There's sort of studies going into each of the. Each of the accessories on the, you know, on the Roman, because there I go, Paul was chained, you know, or, or, or the, the, the Roman soldier was actually the one chained to Paul, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to open this up. Let's see. Sorry, I should take notes on the stuff I want to say. My my my, my mind is gets cleared out. Definition. Yeah, Cardinal, the truth. Truth. Oh, 
I was gonna ask you something. I can't remember. Ah. Something about salvation. Uh, I can't remember now. I was gonna say, do you understand how when people say, because so you just said something about. Oh, I think it's coming back to me. The concept of getting saved. Like if somebody say, oh, I got saved. Because mm -hmm. at some point I noticed that a lot of the terminology that I have come to use is very niche, niche, or, you know, it's very specific. Like I used to say, oh, born again. And then I learned that oh, a lot of Christians don't consider born again to be a thing. Like it's just like a figure of speech or something. Or like even, like, I remember when I read like, oh, evangelical, it's like, oh, there's some Christians that believe they're supposed to actually spread the gospel to others. And I'm like, isn't that like like so uh, yes. my, my very skewed because like a, a lot of the guys and, and i also notice uh, there's like because i never grew up in christianity really and you guys and a lot of the people that i see that are really getting into the, to a lot of so, some of these issues that we've been talking about um i wonder if a lot of it is because like they it, it's very it's very for them it's very introspective to where like well it's like oh i know i've always been a christian i know i've always been raised in in the bible so when you know, what i'm doing must be what a christian is supposed to be doing you know as opposed to people who weren't raised in this like christian environment and this is why i think maybe i, don't, I think i can't remember why i was bringing this up Sorry, I, I, I forgot. Like, I, I gotta take more notes. <laughs> this is again, I'm only half remembering what I wanted to say. Hey, first, last. How's it going? Pretty good. How's it going? How's it? How you doing, Paul? Doing okay, man. How are you? Good. No, I mean, like, are you? How's your recovery coming? Oh. Um, the, the actual disease part of it is doing great. You know, I'm, I'm doing great on that end. Uh, the medicine that I've taken, you know, to get me well on that part has some side effects that I'm dealing with now, um, the edema and different stuff. Uh, but I'm, I'm getting through that too, man. You know, it's just taking a lot of time. Amen. But yeah, the, the concept of getting saved, because I'm trying to remember what I thought about that before I like, you know, learned a lot about what I had ended up learning about. Because it's just because did I think like, oh, I'm saved now. Now I'm saved or now I'm born again. Like I remember learning about these things. So I'm trying to remember what I thought about it before I learned about it, you know, which is kind of hard. But because the thing of somebody declares to me, hey, I got saved. I mean, that kind of statement, because like, I'm never going to stop. I'm not going to say somebody shouldn't say that, I think, unless maybe that is what I'm getting at. I don't know. I'm just thinking out louder. But uh, um, I can only take somebody's word for that, that they claim I got saved. Because I notice when I say stuff like that, I usually say I came to faith or I came to the Lord, or this sort of thing. Because I do believe we get born again. But mm -hmm. that's the thing. That the sanctification is the process. And so that's what I was going to ask. I was like, do you see how somebody who does, who, and now they may even go as far as conditionalism, because they're choosing to take the, the temporal perspective of wherever you are along on that course on that timeline to mm. put that sanctification or i'm sorry to put that salvation label only at the end of that timeline well now you know because 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 th they, they're mixing up the entire point of you know the difference in justification because I, I think we're all in it well, i think you and i at least are in agreement you know mm. we're saved when we're justified and yeah and I, I believe we're justified when we um by faith, when we hear the word and we receive him, which means that, you know, when I'm receiving him, I'm saying, 
not only am I saying that I agree with the word, but I'm committed to it. This is, you know, I'm, I'm actually interacting with it, uh, with God and receiving Christ. Yeah, but what does God know? God knows everything. So if he somebody knows, he knows your heart, yeah. So he knows if whoever we're talking about, whatever, you know, person A, B, or C decides to come to the Lord or decides to make a proclamation or do an altar call or whatever, however you want to look at that. Right. Like God, the Lord knows from the end, from the beginning. So, and this is where, when, when that person gets, the Holy Spirit actually enters them. Like, because all, all, I, all I know, all I will proclaim is that when the Holy Spirit does enter you, you are justified. And he does not enter you unless you believe that his son is risen from the dead. And, and like, uh, you know, if you believe the gospel. And it's all these things that are happening. And, and it, it is a sequence, right? I think it's even more than just believing it. It's, it's actually coming to him. Like for me, um, there was a time when I could say that I knew the gospel, right? But I didn't understand repentance. I didn't understand. And there, there was so there were certain things that the way that I was coming to him was not the way that God set out. You know, I was coming to him with trying to merit his, uh, try to have merit with him because I did something in a certain way other than you know, uh, believing him and receiving him. Um, so I was like, okay, well, I quit doing this and I quit doing that. So that verifies that I'm saved, you know, or that verifies that I'm And the way that I was coming to him was just not in truth. Uh, the truth was, is that I was only to look to Christ and what he accomplished. See, that, none of that makes any sense to me. Because, I, I, and I, I, well, I, hold on, that... let me finish. I was only to look to Christ and what he accomplished in his death burial and receive him based on that as my only salvation unto God, right? Instead of, okay, God, I straightened up. I truly repented because I'll tell you the problem I had with this is that I looked at a verse that, that it, because I didn't understand repentance, that unless you repent, you'll perish, right? And the way I was looking at repentance was, uh, was it wrong? Okay. The way I was looking at repentance was like something that I was meriting with God because I quit certain sins or whatever, right? It was a work salvation. Um, and when I finally understood that that wasn't the truth, that is not what God set out. And it was only according to God's mercy, according to what Christ accomplished. Then when I came to him and I received him, I, I was receiving him based off of, you know, the knowledge of, of God and, and what he set out his son. Um, and that's when I truly received salvation. That's when I was truly in faith. Good to see you, Rock. Hey, Rock. Good evening, guys. Yeah, coming to. Yeah, that's where the that what they call the Ordos Salutis, but this is where I, I'm just saying I can understand if somebody doesn't want to, because it, it, the, the, sorry, I'm all over the place. The problem is what somebody's if somebody in their own mind can have. And should have assurance. Now that is a different question as to how we regard a brother in the Lord. Because if a brother comes to you and says, "Am I really saved? Is the Lord really the Lord?" Like all these kind of whatever, whatever you can think of, whatever kind of doubts. That's still no matter what you tell them is going to be between. I muted you, Rock. Sorry. Um, whatever you tell them is just is going to be a hypothetical anyway, because you don't really know. All you can do is tell them what's in Scripture, and this is what we're supposed to do anyway. But when it comes to your personal walk with the Lord, of just you, you and yourself and the Lord, um, again, this is where people we have to acknowledge that people do struggle because there's people that are in all different. Um, for levels of you know different uh, you know rungs upon their ladder of their growth. I, I don't know what the what the right because again there's different levels of maturity. We know that. So the question that we have to say is like how do we how do we approach people or, or how do we respond 
when people bring these questions to us. I mean, a lot of the, because if, if we're not, if we, if, if we don't have, I don't want to say faith, but if we don't have uh, either assurance in our view or a, or a solid foundation or a solid understanding of why we believe what we believe, um, then we, I think we should work on getting that, um, you know, beyond giving out advice. <laughs> but again, not to say we, we can't share our feelings with each other, but. Yeah, well, you, uh, you know, you know the answer, man. We, we edify them in Christ, right? And and we preach the gospel in doing so. And um, we, we try to, I think we definitely have to be more careful to be more clear on the gospel of Jesus, uh, more, more concise, you know, um, when it comes to choosing our words carefully, taking them to the scripture, let the scripture speak, you know, uh, let them hear the word of God. And, um, do you think people can be brought into sanctific a form of sanctification prior to justification? Even if they never are predestined to become actually justified, do you think that, that, that that's I think that well, then, then you would believe in election if you I mean that's that's you would be a Calvinist if you believe that I think is that because, what that is well because that would be well because I'm just thinking of a term of when people if if somebody has a false sense of security because ultimately yeah. that needs to be I, I think that's like if we're talking about like the issues with the, the a lot of the free grace arguing is that by that understanding then there's nobody who you can ever say was a false convert you know. And it's like, oh, well, I guess I'll see you in heaven anyway. So, and I think just like you, you could accuse a Calvinist of having no true motivation to spread the gospel. Well, they would have no true motivation to edify anybody, you know? Oh, you're struggling. Well, don't worry. It doesn't matter anyway, because you're, you're, you're going to heaven anyway. And just like a Calvinist would be like, oh, you're, you know, we, you know, I didn't spread the gospel. It doesn't matter. You're elect anyway. Like each ones are just different extremes of, you know, of where the, I think the truth must, must lie in the middle well, that's quite a statement to make, isn't it? That nobody's ever believed in vain, so there is no false converts. Um, when the Bible clearly teaches, you know, Paul warns against such a thing that, that it is possible. So, now can somebody think, Am I one of these? Because now I know this is before prior to Christ's, uh, Christ's resurrection, but the scene where he was in the he said, One of you is going to betray me, didn't it say the, the disciples were all like. Wondered if it was going to be, if it was them. Like, am I going to be the one to betray you? Like, what is that? Like, the, now again, now I know, I understand that was before, you know, the resurrection of the Holy Spirit came. Through. Well, we're all going to stand before God in, in our sincerity to Christ, you know, in our sincerity to want to be saved and, and, and that whether or not we were in the truth. I, I believe uh, when Paul was talking about believing in vain, a majority of what he was speaking on was according to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, receiving the truth, because the, during that time there was people that were turning that into all kinds of different things that it was not. Um, so, uh, but, but also, you know, on the other hand, there is, there, there's a sincerity there. Um, uh, you know, do you want to be saved? You know, Jesus asked the man 38 years of being uh, plagued. Do you want to be saved? You know, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be saved? Um, you know, that's between them and God. I, I can't speak for them, you know. One thing in terms of like where I was saying about sanctification, I don't mean sanctification as like even necessarily a spiritual thing, except for that it's something that's in, 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 instantiated by the spirit. Because let's say somebody decides, somebody who's not a believer, but let's say they have come to an understanding that they are a sinner. They're like, oh, something's wrong in my life. I should go do something. So then they decide to like join a, a church or a convent or like, because uh, what I'm specifically thinking of, of these, these guys I read about from the early church era who came in amongst the church and then became big time heretics and became like, just like, you know, people that ended up leading a lot of people into, into a strand. It's like, I'm thinking of their situation where they, they must've at some point joined because they, because, you know, I, I think even if somebody isn't with the Holy spirit, they can still recognize that they're a sinner I mean, otherwise, then we would also be like a Calvinist, right? So in this case, they join. So because of the fact that they are aware, so then they were drawn by what they know about the gospel, or they're drawn about what they know about Christ. 
but and so it's still having an effect on them. So now they join this group and they're like, okay, what am I going to do group? So they're at this point, they're still not born again. Now, even that maybe they even heard the gospel 200 times already, and they still don't really believe it because they don't understand it because they don't have any, they don't have the Holy spirit, but they're still in their own power in their own life, trying to improve themselves like a self-help program. Right. You know, it's kind of like joining a, a yoga club or something. And now, and now at some point, that person truly may become saved. But I think it also is possible that somebody might go through that entire process of, of being a member of a church or a convent or a, or a, a monastery or whatever that kind of thing looks like. And, and that's a thing. And so let's say you see we're all members of this monastery and we know like, like 14 different people who, who have joined and they're doing all the right things. They're going through all the right moves and they're trying their very best. I still think that there's not a single possible way that we could personally verify that they are truly born again by the Holy Spirit. Now, there may be things that happen that that can do, but I don't think of our own power we can just decide, oh, they're saved just simply because they're a member of our group. You know, like I can think I can make a pretty good judgment like on people that I true, like, you know, like on, you know, like people that I know. You know, like you, Paul, like but Paul, I hope you'll be able to say, like, oh, yeah, I truly believe as much as anybody that 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 you are born again, Paul, that you have the Holy Spirit. But then again, we, we don't you don't come to me with struggles like I think I'm not saved. Like I'm, I'm thinking of people that because I know that there are people that probably do struggle with this. Um, and I'm just thinking of there are people who probably have spent like their whole lives in a church and yet don't still they, that, that they still don't actually know the Lord, which is I mean, I hear about it quite often right like people that have been in a church but yet all of a sudden they leave like well nobody ever answered my questions or nobody ever did this or that or nobody ever and it's sort of like in that regard and this is where because i heard somebody saying earlier oh if you're saying that somebody was it last night they were talking about this if you're going to claim that somebody wasn't truly saved then that's a really like they're they acting like, they're acting like that was like a really like egregious claim to make because like how dare you say because because our because that's what our view needs to be right if it's somebody did become a satan worshiper or a, a puppy torturer or whatever you want to get to and decided to you know then we would be like eh, i guess they didn't really have the holy spirit um or i guess they didn't really or, like that's on a surface level that is our view but they look at, the, but there's something they were saying last night, which I can't really remember exactly what their reasoning was, was like, that was like, like, oh, that's, that, that means that I, I don't remember what it was, but it was something that was kind of ridiculous, I think. Although I can't remember it, so I can't remember. I, I, I believe when the Bible says you'll be known by your fruit, right? I believe it, it, it's that you'll be known by the faith mm -hmm. that you're in. You know, for me, the, the main fruit that we must have is that we're in the faith that God set out in the Son. Um, I don't, I don't know that we would be perfect in every little, uh, you know, like where Paul pulled away from the Gentiles and he wasn't walking according to the faith. Um, I, I don't think it's that, you know, we, there's things that we don't do, I, I'm, but I'm talking about when it comes to our salvation, what we believe, you know, to be saved. I think that matters. Um, hey, what about somebody else? I don't know if it's our business. I mean, it's our business, but we have to accept that we, about what we're worried about. Because again, if we're just talking about our relationship, our fellowship with each other, I think that it's it, that we just have to accept that if, if if say the four of us are here in the name of Jesus, regardless of if we have disagreements about this or that, somehow we're still here in the name of Jesus. Now, if it turns out, you know, like one of us is in some kind of crazy error, we're still here in the name of Jesus. Right. And ultimately, like, that's all we can really know about each other. Now, if somebody's like, oh, I don't like Jesus. I'm not here because of Jesus. Then it's like, OK, well, that's, you know, and then you're not. But ultimately, that's where. What, what our claim is, what, 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 but what somebody else is, is doing again, whether or not they're truly born again, whether or whether I personally have judged. Right. Because I know at one point, first, last, and I had that we got into some heavy discussions once, and you were like, "You're accusing me of not being saved," and I'm like, "No, I'm really not." And and maybe, and you're like, and it's kind of like, I guess I can see where you're. Yeah, this is where I don't try to to even if I I can make 
I can throw out uh, logical conclusions. That doesn't mean that's my entirety of my conclusion where I'm just like, like I, I can just, I can take a stance without firmly. I don't, I don't, just, I don't think we have to put ourselves in that seat. I think what we need to do is plant <laughs> seeds, water, edify, preach the gospel and let God be the judge of all that. You know, at the end of the day, I just, I don't think that's something that I have to put myself in that position to, uh, to be. And, you know, someone claims to me to be a brother and they're in the faith. Uh, who am I to say that he's not? Um, you know, I just, I don't think it's my place to, to, you know, to judge that. Uh, but I do think this, that re regardless, uh, I'm going to constantly uh, plant the seed, plant, constantly water it, right? And God will give the increase, right? So. How, how do they handle Matthew 7 and 23? I know how I handle it. You know, that it wasn't their works that uh, that they come in the name of Jesus and their works that, that was their salvation. That's why the Lord never knew them. They're in that iniquity. You know, they were workers of iniquity thinking in such a corrupt way. Uh, that they, You know, that's why the Lord never knew them. They never come through Christ. Uh, they come in what they merited, you know. That's how I see it. I don't know how they would see it. I don't know. That's the I never knew you. Yeah. Don't they say that he was that's only talking about uh specific like Pharisees? Like it's not talking about everybody, it's just talking about those specific people they were talking about at that time. Uh yeah okay. That's what I, I think that applies to any of us. So if we come with any kind of merit of our own selves, you know, that he that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is kind of righteous. Not him that comes and said, "Well, I've done this in thy name, I've done that in thy name." You know. Because they have to. Because that's where they, you know, the idea of a false convert can't really can't really exist and i don't even see why that even again like i said it, unless we're living in like a medieval monastery like who's a false convert who's a secret calvinist like like are we larping as like medieval uh you know like <laughs> Well, you know, I remember there was times in my life when I was younger, and, and, you know, like I said, I didn't understand repentance. I didn't understand a lot of things. And I was sitting there going, well, you know what? I go to church six, seven days a week. Yeah, I, really, I did. I was in I was in Christian school that was in my own church. Um, you know, I, I, I know the gospel of this, and surely I'm saved. But the, I, I'll tell you this. There is this unrest, you know, and the Bible talks about people that come in arrest and, and, and then those that are in unrest. There is this unrest that I just don't think, I believe God's being merciful by allowing this. That the blindness and the unrest uh, is another sign that, uh, you know, there's something you need to come and get right with God, whatever that may be. And uh, That's why I think, like I said, I've come into clear like arguing with people that have just their identity as Christians is Calvinists or whatever type of thing where it's like you're not gonna you're not gonna change change their mind and I don't think it's you know so it's like all right that I just I've decided okay is if this person goes to their to their grave with this view surely God knew that this is what they were gonna whether or not it's it's true or not that whatever their view is or their view is not true in my view is whatever the, the fact of the matter is if either one of us is going to go to our grave believing that it, what is that how is that going to affect our eternity and is it going to affect our eternity and if it's not going to affect our eternity then what is the purpose of it now that god has allowed it to happen is it, is it for the purpose of confusion no god is not god is not the author of confusion amen 
So it's it's to, to me, it's an opportunity for us to show our fruits towards people who are in the same spirit. Because I, I can believe that somebody can be as, as wrong as possible about about uh, you know reformed theology, and yet they can have the Holy Spirit in them. But yet they're you know they're just because again, be, be, having the Holy Spirit in you doesn't make you a automaton. You know, so you can still have you still have your own opinion, and that opinion can be wrong. <laughs> well, you know, Christ didn't come to condemn; He came to save. You know, and it's God doesn't want uh, want any of us to perish. He, he wishes that we would all come to, or His will is that we all come to repentance. You know, so um, which is to come into the knowledge of the truth. So it and, lets us show our fruits towards each other. If I'm, yeah. oh, you're such a, like, you know, then it's like, all right, I don't think because. If, if if you're unless you're going to think that they're really not saved and you're doing this because you're trying to to scare them into heaven, you know, or, you know, because you don't want to flatter them into hell, you know, that's all because. But if you do admit like, yeah, they're they're probably born again, but I just think they're wrong. You know, and it's like, well, is it are you is it useful? You know, when you if you try to force feed somebody something in the same way, they're just going to be more apt to spit it out. <laughs> And again, I think all you can do is edify a man in the truth, you know, that, you know, it's not what we've done, but it's what he's done. And just have that full surrender, uh, trusting in Christ to get through it and overcome. Um, and, I, and if they're not saved, if they haven't found it, they will find it. You know, if they are being edified in the truth and 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 then follow up in the truth, you know, so. And I'm, fr I'm friends with plenty of people that I don't believe are saved, you know, and I don't lie to them about it. And, you know, and I, I don't think, you know, it doesn't and matter so, what I think, you know, it doesn't exactly. You know, if I determine that if I come to the conclusion that somebody that I know is like, well, oh, whoa, I'm, I don't think you got the Holy Spirit and you're like, I'm not going to be, I can't be friends with you anymore. If anything, we should want, this is my, my opinion. Now, again, with to where we're sinning and being tempted, that's a whole other thing. But I think we should want to be friends with the very quotations, because I'm not fake friends, would truly be concerned for people who we do believe are in error. That's a fact, you know, and that's for the sake of not for our own pride, but because we should want the truth of God to be known. It's for everybody that's that's walking in error. That's basically like they're walking towards off a cliff, and and if unless we are complete jerk bags, we should want to stop anybody, no matter who they are, whether we know them or not, whether we don't like the cut of their jib, we should not want them to be walking off a cliff to their doom. There's no and and therefore no. It should it should be no. something that we're just like it tears our heart apart, like. Um, if you do have the Holy Spirit and you're being led and there's, let's say there's a young, you know, there's young carnal believers too. I, I mean, there, there's times we're carnal and how we go about yeah, that. We... I, I mean, at the end of the day, this is why I think you got to remove all that from you like that, um, whatever this judgment is and just really be scripted on, you know, edifying, preaching the gospel, walking according to the gospel. You know, and and you know, trying to lead by example, not by rebuke, or as you know, as, as someone casting judgment on someone, because um, I just don't think that's our place to do that. Well, again, I think there's a difference between un, unjust weights, but I, I don't think we can help but but I mean, I'm not just saying with judging, but. I mean, uh, we're, we're going to judge. So knowing that we need to keep a, we need, we need to, we need to have, and we, we need to be inhibited. Let me ask you guys this question. Can I ask a question? Um, now this is a weird phenomenon. Like <laughs> we all know the truth, right? And we all think we're right. But like a lot of it disagrees. So how does that work? You mean a lot of our truths are, are not actually in line with each other, is that what you're saying? Basically, yeah. I mean there's a lot of different I mean, let's just as an example, I know it's not a major major thing, but let's say like the old earth, 
you know, the young creation or young earth creation. You know, they have different ways of looking at it. And, you know, I don't, not only that, but all the other subjects you guys talk about, free grace, this, that, and the other. There's a lot of, um, you know, if we all know the truth, why is there so many opposing kind of ways of looking at it? But at the same time, I'm like you. I don't, I don't say you're wrong or anything. I just say, oh, I just look at it differently. Well, there's different levels. We can all agree of the truth that we're all riding in the same ship. And maybe that's the only truth we need to agree on. But what, how deep Jesus the ocean is truth. under us, where our destination is, who the captain is, you know, if it's a steamship or if it's a, or like all these different things, there's a different, you know, different aspects of it. So I guess then we could argue about what's important. <laughs> to 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 have the information of, I guess yeah, it would I think, be where the lifeboats are. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's why a foundational truth is is something that we can all agree on. Um, it, as the word is the authority, but things where, um, you know, when you get in the whole council of the word and you start looking at things and there's like questions, uh, where you know some people like some the way some people look at. Uh, women can be pastors in churches and some women, you know, they have their verses or their ideas. And then there's other people have verses that say they can't, and, you know, how far are we going to take this? How far are we going to go? Um, well, for me, the foundational truth, right. Uh, is we got to get that right. There is no if, ands or buts. And that only comes from the authority of the word of God. Um, and where we can go in the word of God and, and pick things apart and argue over certain things like women pastors, different things like that. Um, I don't think it's to me, I don't think it's as, as important as, uh, you know, how far are you going to take these things? You know, is it going to come to the point where there's such a division? Uh, I, I, like for instance, if there's a church that supported that, and I went, I have the option of going to another church. I might choose to do that. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean I'm like uh, disassociating that they're brothers or sisters in Christ. I just don't agree with the way they look at the Word of God on that on that matter. Um. So yeah, I think we have to be careful how we look at things and, and how we allow it to divide us and, and what kind of division, uh, you know, that there is. Um, there, I'll, I'll tell you this much there is certain things and you know in the way people look at things that I don't feel comfortable with practicing certain things I believe it's against the word of God so there's no way I could be a part of their church you know as far as going to their church and practicing these things um, so I'll probably go to a different church but it doesn't mean I don't believe that they're you know not my brothers and sisters in Christ But as far as salvation goes, yeah, that's something that we have to all be in agreement with. Okay, I'm going I'm to try to answer it like this. I, I think I've said this before. I, mean, I like to use the analogies that are given, like the bread and the water and stuff like that. But, um, like, we're all eating the bread which and the fish, which is symbolic of the word, right? The bread is the flesh. The word became flesh. Um, but what was left over after we all ate it all was fragments. So we've all consumed the bread, the word, the spirit, but what we've got is like, everybody has fragments. And I think that's, that's okay. I used to think that was a bad thing, but we just, we just don't know it all. We just have pieces of what we know. Was, was it incomplete fragments? Because weren't they used to, what was it? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, that was it. That was it. Well, guys, I have to, I have to start tending to myself with meds and cook dinner and different things, so I have to get off here. Um, but I really enjoyed the study tonight, and I will leave it to you fellows. And uh, thanks everyone for coming tonight. All right, Paul. And God bless, guys. God bless you, man.
What is was. what does Kelvy Quayo even mean? Is this some kind of science fiction thing? No, <laughs> I just made it up. What? Oh, okay. Um, the name of my Final Fantasy VII character back in nineteen ninety-seven, I think. No, I just so it is it. a science fiction thing. I guess it's actually meant to sound uh, uh, Quenya. Which is a because at the time I was playing, uh, I was role play, I was game mastering Middle Earth games, which was like Lord of the Rings based tabletop, and so I was trying to make names that were uh, like Quenya, which the the Quenya Noder Elf language is supposed to sound like uh, Finnish, so I guess Kelvi Quayo is probably closest to equivalent would be Finnish. <laughs> wow, dude, that is. Yeah, I, I like to finish language too. It's um, I heard the, uh, I heard I, I heard your premiere. It was some letter to somebody, hyenas or something to Rome. I no, it's us. Huh? N no, it's us. Yeah. Did you notice? I had, <laughs> I think I didn't go and look, but I think the dude was trying to do puns with the guy's name, because and so I kind of uh, took some liberties because the name Noitus. No I'm thinking that then, because there's a couple of lines where he says, "Oh, and Noetus doesn't know anything," like or something like that. And I'm like, oh. I, "Is he is he playing? Is he doing a pun?" Because I know they like to do that a lot in those ancient writings. Is like pun off of people's names. Um, so there's one part where he's because I think the word Noia basically means mind. Um, now there's one part where he says Noetus has a different mind, and so there the pun wouldn't work in English. But the very next line is, and Noetus doesn't actually have the knowledge of this or doesn't have the understanding of this. So I changed the word understanding to doesn't know. And I said, but Noetus doesn't know anything or something like that. Because <laughs> I because because the very there's the line before that, they were trying it seemed like he was trying to do a pun off his name, which didn't work. So I kind of made it work in the next line. I don't know. I was very pleased with myself on that. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a good letter in the sense that he kept talking about the word and he was trying to explain things as, as best he could. So I, I, wanted, I thought about you when I found that I did. I can't, I can't deny. <laughs> and I, I thought, oh, okay, that's, yeah. Some of the points he made, I said, oh, okay, well, that's exactly what I'm saying, you know? Um, so I wondered, can, I wondered if you want, you wanted to do a review of it. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, because I could get your opinion on what he's trying to say, and then I could say, what is this? Yeah, movie? and I know there's some controversy on, matter of fact, there was one line that I left out of it, because when he first uses the word economy, in parentheses, the translation says, of the three persons of the Trinity. And I immediately was like, I know this was added by the translator, and I know if anybody actually comes across this and hears that, it's going to mislead them into thinking that this was literally said by this guy at, at this time and it wasn't so i left that part out except there is another part where he does use the word trinity but there is the when he first says economy yeah in the translation it says in of the three persons of the trinity and their disposition and i was like yeah that's a little that's that's putting a little too much um eisegesis into it you know <laughs> no i i do remember that he did say trinity you're right he said it Yeah, and, and rock. Um, yeah, long time to see, man. Good to see you. I saw you were on the. Uh, I saw you last night. Yeah. Good. Where'd Paul go? Uh he had to. He rolled. He had to. He's got. A, he's got a, some. Some time constraints these days. Oh, okay. Unfortunately. Yeah, this was ridiculous last night. See, I don't think it was anything out of the ordinary, but it's it's just a matter of where the searchlights are pointing. You know what I mean? Because I've I've seen that sort of thing where it's just kind of like, all right, well, don't don't it, it. Basically, it's the us against them. If you don't agree with yeah. us. And you're not with us, you're against us. 
What are you guys talking about? Was it the Praise Channel last night? Yeah, because um, at some point, Kelly Powers, Free in Perspective, um, you know, he did this, he did a live stream where he just listed all these, just basically did a big giant list and said, these are the false teachings that are going around. Yeah. Right, I saw that. And one of them, he just clearly just straight up said, free grace. And now he went on to explain it. And, you know, of course, there's nuances to explanations. Um, and as soon as he was explaining it, I could just hear it. I could hear it in my head. People like, oh, he's back loading works. And I'm bringing up that Noetis thing now. The Hippolytus. Um, so, and that's become, you know, praise I am and the dude, like that's basically, that's their new identity in, in Christ. Like if you notice, they don't talk about being in Christ. They talk about when they came to grace. Now they'll say it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So they're pretty much putting themselves in the same line, just like where Calvinist is like, I'm just speaking of the gospel. Calvinism is the gospel. You know, it's like, oh, then I don't know the gospel, I guess. Just like they'll say, well, this free grace is the gospel. And it's like, all right, well, I guess, you know, it's it's like in either way, they're just, they're putting up a barrier. They're Nicobium Nicolaitans, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I was waiting to be on that list. I don't, I think maybe there was one thing on the list that was applied to me. I can't remember. Oh, you mean with the, well, it's Hell interesting. Yes. I was looking up this thing that this Noetus believed, and he's considered a, a monarchianist. Do you do you know what that is? Like, do you, is that because I guess monarchianism? Because I was originally going to be like, oh, this is oneness, and it's like, oh, wait a minute, it's not necessary. And I guess the difference is they're not really speaking so much as to the identity of the Holy Spirit, but they're speaking to the identity of because it's one thing just because. I guess you wouldn't be minority because you're not you're not necessarily or maybe you are, like because there's a difference in saying the Jesus is the Father, the Father and the Son are the same person, rather than saying Jesus and the Holy Spirit are the same person, or the Father and the Spirit are the same. So you know you can kind of, in my in my mind, it's just a matter of where the the error is just focused in a different spot. Where about a and I say that because obviously in my view they're all three persons. Whereby you could say, oh, well, there's the Holy Spirit, and then there's the Father and the Son. Or there's the Father, and then there's the Son and the Spirit, you know? And kind of like how they're all... And I'm, gonna, I'm about to bring that up. Yeah, Rock, I don't know where you are on the whole... Trinity versus oneness. If you would, some people really don't don't enjoy going getting into the Trinity debates. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think there's a fine line, and neither side is really seeing the other side. Yeah, a lot of the definitions are so similar. It's like one word difference. Well, that's what the um, I'm sure I've. Rant, 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 rattled on about it before that uh, um, on the, the councils by by uh, Hillary and there's a couple other early writers that that wrote something called on the councils but I know Hillary's specifically was about the different um, Christian views of the Trinity in the East and he specifically said that was like look you, you know that he brought up that they were arguing about what words to use oh you guys are just using the same word but you're using different things like there's all these these subtleties are well, they, they've, they've all been there. For okay, here, here's what I noticed. When I looked at the Nicene Creed, this is just my observation. When they describe the Father, very simple. It was very... Uh, I got a call there. Uh, when they described the Father, it was very simple. It was very, you know, easy to understand. Very few sentences. When it came to the Holy Spirit, again, real easy, easy to understand, couple sentences. But when it came to the Son, it sounded to me like they were really just trying to figure it out. Get, get trying it out to of the way. And a definition and just way too long of an explanation. Well, see, that makes sense to me. 
because knowing at that point for the, because for several decades at that point, there had been these false teachings and actually longer than that based off of this letter right here, which is a hundred years before that. Um, so, I mean, in my mind, it, it's like that because they're, they're just making sure that they got that they're covering all their, their, because the, they're doing it in response to false teachers. I don't think they're proclaiming what belief is, but because the, majority of their opinion is their belief is the same thing that the Bible teaches. So they're not trying to rewrite the Bible in the Nicene Creed. They're trying to refute what other people are saying erroneously against the Bible. Because that's, and yeah, that, that, was, that was the gist of, of Hillary's writing. So that's where I love the fact that he brings up that he he, he never heard of the Nicene Creed before he traveled to Turkey, you know, like 40 years after the Nicene Creed. And he says, but he still still taught the same concepts. And there was a bunch of people that were claiming, well, you should let's just stop using the word homoousius or stop using the word homoousius because it's confusing people and it's not in scripture. And he's like, well, it didn't confuse the people at Nicaea and they all agreed on it. So, you know, and so rather than condemning people for using certain words that you don't agree with, you know, have a little grace and try to understand what they're saying, which is what his, that's what he was saying that, and because he, he, he looked at the different views and just kind of just, yeah, it's, and that's the thing. And like I was saying before, with stuff like this stuff isn't meant to be just, you know, <laughs> easily and immediately grasped. And I think these things, if they force us to pray, because we know God's not the author of confusion, but there, we know that he has mysteries. So how do you make a distinction between confusion and mystery? Because it must be possible. And I think that's a, I think that's where, where we come to, to the Lord because of the fact that we, we don't know everything. But we cause confusion when we insert our own opinions, no doubt. Now, knowing it's our nature to insert our own opinions and keep ourselves in check. <clears throat> but at least we can use scripture to, to compare it. Were you going to play the video or is this the actual text? Uh, this is the actual text. Um, I could play the video. I don't know if you want to go because I mean the whole thing is like an hour. Yeah, it is kind of long. It's under it's under an hour, but I don't know if because I mean I I kind of remember because I mean I technically I read it about five times before I got ready. Okay, well then I'll I'll try to make a point or whatever. He said the word of God a lot, and he oh god so I mean he oh, would say like a... oh I'm sorry what oh no I was remembering the stuff that I had read about this because the word logos is used a lot in this. Um, and I read this is one of the, I had never, what I was amazed by when I found this, that I had never really heard of it before or hadn't remembered that I had heard of it because apparently this is the earliest explanation, I guess, other than Tertullian, right? Um, the earliest like description of the Trinity and explanation. Of now I've read people that kind of deny it and they're like, Oh, you're kind of reaching there, but you know, but I mean, unless somebody forged, <laughs> Unless somebody's going to claim that, that they added stuff like because the, the Holy Spirit, then no, the Trinity is absolutely here, like 100 percent. Well, yeah, he even says Trinity. Yeah. And, and in that sense, you know, you could say, well, it's, you know, the word Trinity is just he's using it as a functional word. He's not like trying to ascribe doctrine of the Trinity. I mean, obviously, the word Trinity here is in capital, but that's because it's written here in English. But I don't think that he. Um... See, here's the part that I believe does not belong there. So I did not read this. So this is where he first starts to talk about it. Because he's like, no, Noetus does not understand the truth. The scriptures are not at once to be repudiated. For who will not say that there is one God? Because I know that the one, and I've heard, I actually just heard this argument, you know, from one of these debates, there, you know, where Jesus and the father and the son are the same because it's like well they're all god you say god died on the cross father is god so father was on the cross 
simple, simple, simple. You know, it's like, what's the problem here? But this is where he's getting into the difference of the economy. And now this part where he says, that is the number and disposition of persons in the Trinity. I did not read this part when I recited this because I don't think this. Now, I could be wrong, but this seems a little convenient. If this guy said this <laughs> in this writing, this seems like something that would have been added. It seems like something the translator was ex explaining. Exactly. And he talks about economy. Now, there are some other parts where he says economy, and then it says disposition, which is meaning, because some of the parts in this, it's amazing, because this these arguments are very similar to the arguments from, like, Boethius later on and Hillary. So, I mean, all these guys are, are working off each other, or they would probably say, no, we're working off of Scripture, because they are using Scripture to back up everything they're saying, uh, you know, arguably. Because when he, <clears throat> there's one part where he says, and sorry, we can go over this. I, I'm totally just ADD and out. Um, um, where he says disposition, the plurality, that's what it is. He says, yes, God is one. Beside him, there was nothing. See, this is a chapter and God subsisting alone. Because basically the first section of this is him describing the error. And then the next section of this is him describing what he believes is the truth, which is then he goes on to describe the Trinity. Uh, God subsisting alone and having nothing contemporaneous with himself, determined to create the world, conceiving the world. And now there are some stuff that is interesting because he says, make statements like the word is the mind of the father, like those sorts of things. Um, okay. There's another part where he says that the son wasn't perfect until he came into flesh as a perfect son. So there's some interesting tidbits, but right here's right beside him, there was nothing. So there's only one God. It's sufficient simply to know that there was nothing contemporaneous with God before he created anything. So he's making a distinction between everything non-created, which is just simply God, and everything that is created, that is everything that God created. So while existing alone, yet existed in plurality. And he says, well, so then what do you mean? What was with God? He said he wasn't without reason, wisdom, power, counsel. And if you recognize these these are where you go into scripture where it says the seven spirits of God are with me. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. And it's like the spirit of counsel, the spirit of wisdom, the power. Of, and it's like, and then people say, well, does that mean there's God is seven? Is there a septim septimnogy or whatever? You know, it's like, well, no. It's also, if we're just talking about spirit in general, you know, we're talking about spirit is the spirit of God, the activity of God, what God's about. Like this, these, this ineffable quality. Um, of God's work. And so these things existed because I think what this is implying is that if these things, if God did not have a plurality, if you had a, a single simple monad, um, then God can't really technically do anything. He can't logically move or breathe or speak or do anything. So there needs to be a plurality of some form. Otherwise, you can't have, you know, if there's then there's, you know, there's no meaning to anything. If there's just a simple single singularity um, of, because again, God can't move. God isn't speaking. God isn't knowing. There's no thoughts. There's no nothing. So it just, it's, it doesn't, it, I don't think it can follow, but I don't know. Do you think that's like a brute force argument? Well, here's what I'm, what, how I'm, what I'm going to ask is like, isn't the plurality, the reason and the wisdom and the power and the counsel? Isn't that the plurality? That is a plurality. Yes. In other words, when he says existing alone, yet existing in plurality, he's not talking well, about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's talking about right. reason, wisdom, power, counsel. Yeah, at this he's point, he's not things. seeking to enumerate um, God's personal qualities, just God's qualities in general. I'm going to have to go back and look at this, to be honest, because it actually looks pretty good. Um, but there's well, one I mean, question, or one, or go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, if, if you want to, like, I mean, we, we can just go through it from the beginning. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I mean, for the most part. Um, I'm not trying, I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying, like, no, let's, let's necessarily skip around and not, like, I'm just, uh, I, I always have trouble focusing. <laughs> Well, I got to get to bed, guys. Y'all have a good night.
Thanks for coming in, man. Nice talking. Yeah, good to see you, man. God bless you. Definitely good to see you. I mean, hello, N95. Are you gonna read it? Are you N75. <laughs> You're gonna read the whole thing for 50 minutes, or? Okay, okay. I'll just make well, there's like certain. I know there's certain parts I can skip. Okay. Um, well, okay. At some point, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in here, and at some point, he says the word was man. He just says the word a lot. He says the word was manifest. He even says the word is used 107 or no 75 times in this. <laughs> he even says, from what I remember. We could say the word. The sun necessarily didn't really pre-exist until he was born. Because that's what a sun is. It's humanity. It's the sun. But um, but then later on, he says, it's the spirit that manifested. And you can see from your Ephesians thing that the yeah. sword of the spirit is the word. So, in any case, whatever you want to do it. Um, I I know what part you're talking about. Okay, yeah, because he and I'm saying he would say the word manifested, the word manifested, and later on he said the spirit manifested. I'm like, oh, okay, well that's kind of what I'm saying. Yes, because I've always uh, uh, affirm that the spirit is always if 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 the word is manifesting, the spirit is going to be manifesting. Well, I mean, manifesting in flesh. I think that's what he meant. You can see that in First John chapter 1. That's how it was manifested. Yeah, well, it wouldn't, st it, it's, it still wouldn't discount a distinction between the, the spirit and the word, though. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. Sure. Yeah, no, you're right, of course. But I'm just saying that the word is, comes from the spirit, ultimately. Because you're going to say, oh, how is it that this, the spirit of God has been manifest? Because ultimately manifest means, sh you know, shown, proven. Yeah. Then if it's, if it's only, if it's in the sun, how do we have access to the, actually, I remember the, if it's the part I'm thinking of, because he talks about the apostles believed. Maybe I should just just read it all. <laughs> I was going to do this anyway at some other point on another stream because I was originally going to do Hippolytus uh, against or a refutation of all heresies, which I've already recorded the first book. But I realized the first couple sections of it, he's basically he's describing the cosmologies of these like pre-Socratic philosophers, and he's describing all of their like they're basically like flat Earth views. And their views are very similar to what a lot of flat earthers teach. <laughs> and so I decided like, I, it might be useful to actually put illustrations in with this once I do it. So I decided it's probably gonna take a lot longer than I thought. So that's why I did this, this what I thought was gonna be shorter. Oh, it's not, I mean, it's a bit shorter. This work here, which is this. Must have been a very long letter to be, I mean, if when you read it, it's 50 minutes long. I mean, this letter must be pretty long. I think, uh, it, it, from going through all these, it seems to me between 45 minutes to an hour is about the length of a scroll. Because <laughs> when I get to each book, like each book is usually within like 45 minutes to an hour. And I'm thinking, and I've even got to the point where if, I, if I, they're broken up into chapters, somehow it ends up being like exactly like 52 minutes, 53 minutes, or one hour and two minutes. It's like, all right, depending on what the language was and how well it was spoken, like it, it, it's where you can see these little epistemological sort of Easter eggs, I'm sure. Okay. Always fun. Um, the word of God came down from heaven, entered into the Virgin Mary, in order that taking the flesh from her and assuming also a human, which I mean irrational soul, and becoming... But no, I, I do remember the part that, that you're talking about where he basically switches from word to spirit. Yeah. And I specifically was like, uh, I'd, I would like to talk to. So, yeah, let me.
Again, unless you do what, like you said, do you want to just go through the whole thing? <laughs> um, well, whatever you want to do. It's, well, no, let's, let's see what we, so he's like, okay, they seek to exhibit the foundation of their dogma by citing the words, I am the God of your fathers. You shall have no other gods beside me. And he's like, and they're mixing together. Um, I am the first and the last. And besides me, there is none other. Um, so they're saying, oh, that proves God is one. So like, oh, so basically that means oneness. I actually thought about when I read this of just saying that proves oneness. <laughs> but I, I was like, yeah, I don't want to put too many like obvious. And then they answered in this manner. Therefore, I acknowledge Christ to be God. He is the father himself. And he's indeed well, okay, God. Now that, that's now that's interesting. He is the father himself. Yeah, this is what he's quoting what the heretics are saying. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I tried to make and when I read this, I tried to read it like like David Wood reads Muslims. <laughs> if because there's one part where he keeps saying, uh I think he keeps saying, You see. So I kept reading, You see, then he says that this is God, who is the only one who afterwards did show himself and converse with men. So yeah, so this is basically the, these are the scriptures that the these, 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 basically, this is called monarchianism, which is that the father is the son and the father is the one who suffered. It's also called uh, patripassianism, which is that the father suffered. Um, and again, so that's a little bit distinct from just like, you know, I guess whatever the general, the spirit, like, you know, the, that the spirit isn't a person necessarily. Because um, that's where you know you start getting into the Nestorianism and one the Eutychianism, blah -dee -da. Uh So, so yeah, they're using the scriptures for that. Also, the, these here just showing that oh, if it's talking about the Messiah, it's talking about God. It's talking about the same God. Um, therefore, it's talking about the Father. Do you see? He says how the scriptures proclaim one God. And as this is clearly exhibited in these passages, our testimonies to it, I am under necessity, he says, since one is acknowledged to make this one the subject of suffering. Sick like, for Christ was God and suffered on account of us, being himself the father, that he might be able also to save us. So he's like, okay, if Christ wasn't the father, then he wouldn't be he wouldn't be able to save us. So it's 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 you can see the the fact that he's that this is a problem for the person writing this, like to me, like shows like the idea of what we teach the Trinity to be was already there. Cause he's like, look at how this guy is misunderstanding. Cause again, it's the second part of this letter, but he actually goes on to explain. Uh, in this way, then we choose to set for these things. They make use only of one class of passages just in the same one sided manner that Theodotus employed when he sought to prove that Christ was a mere man. So you can see the distinction here because there's other writings I've seen where they they're talking about, um, you know, the, this idea of you know this this oneness type of idea versus this uh, Arian type of idea of Christ being a mere man because they they basically a lot of times they'll they lump them together. It sounds like the same sort of arguments that we hear today. They almost the same. Yeah. Once you get down, it, it kind of runs the gambit. Once, because you know, acknowledging that there is some truth, or that there is the truth existing somewhere, you know, despite if anybody can, truly knows it or not, yeah, people are going to be viewing it from different sides of the of the matter. But I mean, yeah, because yeah, so people making use of only one class of passages in a one-sided manner. Um, it's like, but neither has one party nor the other understood the matter rightly, as the scriptures themselves confute their senselessness and attest to the truth. See, brethren, what a rational, audacious dogma they have introduced that they say without shame that the Father is himself Christ, himself the Son, himself was born, himself suffered, and himself raised himself. Okay, but it is not so. So what is the scripture... Uh, scriptures speak what is right, but Noetus is of a different mind from them, yet Noetus does not understand the truth. The scriptures are not at once to be repudiated. For who will not say that there is one God? So he's like, yeah, of course there's one God. So, because remember, Noetus' argument is, well, if Jesus is God, and the Father is God, and there's one God, then Jesus is the Father. That's the argument. 
and the Trinity okay. argument argues differently. <laughs> okay. Well, here we go. I e. <clears throat> um, there's the he will not say that there's one God. Yet he will not, on that account, deny the economy. Now, again, this is probably added by the translator. The number and disposition of the persons in the Trinity. Because he does make the distinction between persons and uh, and the substance and power of the one God, of God himself. Okay. The proper way, therefore, to deal with the question is, first of all, to refute the interpretation put upon these passages by these men, and then to refute to explain their real meaning. For it is right in the first place to expound the truth that the Father is one God, okay. of whom is every family, by whom are all things, of whom are all things, and we in him. Okay. Which, honestly, the, the addition of these for these for this... It would be interesting to go in and study on, but I, I really didn't. Man, I, I'm thinking because he's he's still describing the economy of the one God, as far as these this plurality, just like where he was describing the spirit and the plurality are the things of God, what he's doing, like the, these these things that. Well, again, if you get into the disposition, disposition and the economy, so it's it's what God is. What God is <laughs> in in eternity, and it's, if and if God is ever going to if cap is if God is capable of logical movement or logical living by any standard of living or knowledge or action or understanding, then there must be some form of plurality, and then that plurality is and then the Trinity is an explanation of that plurality, and the plurality again just simply being. The fact that God cannot logically be a monad. Because a monad can't logically go anywhere or do anything. Because if, if the monad is going to go anywhere and do anything, then it needs to, there needs to be a, a difference in spatial relation and time to do something. Like you, you suddenly have added dimensions that don't exist with a mere monad. And so there needs to be some kind of plurality. And this is where the word economy is, is brought into play. Now, later on, you know, like later on, you got terms like the economic trinity versus the ontological trinity, which, I mean, all of them are just describing the trinity because they're all just, you know, they're all trying to approach it from different ways because economy is basically what the relationship is with each other. Ontological just simply means they're all the same God one god god is one so it's like yeah so yes we believe in an ontological trinity that these what these three things are they are they are one even though we're describing three distinctions what we choose to call those distinctions again we don't call them gods <laughs> because they're not because god is one and it's like okay because unless we are implying the meaning of person to just mean a single being then you can say, well, then that's three single gods. But that's not what we're implying that to mean. I don't know if there's a better word for it. This is why this guy uses economy. <laughs> anyway, let us, as I said, see how he is confuted. Let us search for the truth. He quotes the words, Egypt has labored in the merchandise. I don't know if you want to get in too deep into these, because I don't know if you use these scriptures. Um, he cites without understanding what precedes them. So he says he's taking these scriptures out of context. And he says, for with anything... They mutilate the scriptures. Hey, what's up? Good to see you. Sorry, I'm vaguely looking at the chat as much as I should. Um, so it says, let him quote the passage as a whole, and he will discover the reason kept in view in writing it. For we have from the beginning in the section a little above, we ought to commence there and showing. This is where it's like, I don't want to read just the whole thing, so it would be really boring. Ask me concerning my son. So here he's quoting the scriptures, the entirety of the scripture. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if this is part of what you really wanted to get into. This is why I'm skipping over this sort of. Okay. Because unless you're, unless you find this convincing that this scripture proves that the father is the son. No, 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 no. Because it's basically just showing that there is 
God is in somebody in the scriptures prophesying that at some point people are going to come to somebody who is on earth and is going to say, you are the God of Israel, the Savior. So this is where the argument is, like, oh, isn't this the Father? Because the God is the Father, it's the Savior. And he's like, well, no, there's, you know, this doesn't, even though you're, you know, he's like, yeah, he's claiming, yeah, God is the Savior, but this still isn't proving, you know. So anyway, in you, therefore, says he, God is, but in whom is God except in Christ Jesus the Father's word. So he's asking who is being talked about in this. For you are God, and we knew not the God of Israel and the Savior. In you, therefore, says he, God is. But in whom is God except in Christ Jesus, the Father's word? So here's making a distinction between the Father and the Father's word, but saying, yet God is in the word and the mystery of the economy. So this is where we're going into, oh, and the Trinity is there. So the mystery of the Trinity. Because basically when he's saying economy, he, he means essentially saying the Trinity. And again, exhibiting the truth regarding him, he points to the fact of his being in the flesh when he says, I have raised him up in righteousness. So again, he's expounding upon that earlier, quoting of the prophets, and all his ways are straight. So the prophecy is that I have raised him up in righteousness and all his ways are straight. So, he's, so actually, it would maybe it would be good to go into this. Actually, maybe... Look at the actual biblical quote. Because <laughs> it's clearly God speaking. I have made the earth and man upon it. I with my hand has established the heaven. I have commanded all the stars. I have raised him up and all his ways are straight. He shall build my city. He shall turn back the captivity, not for price nor reward, said the Lord of hosts. Thus said the Lord of hosts. Egypt has labored, the merchandise of Ethiopia, and the Sabians, men of stature, shall come upon you, and they shall be slaves to you, and they shall come after you, bound with manacles, and they shall fall down unto you, and they shall make supplication unto you, because God is in you. And there is no God beside you, for you are God, and we knew not. The God of Israel, the Savior. In you, therefore, says he, God is. But in whom is God except in Christ Jesus, the Father's word, and the mystery of the economy. And again, exhibiting the truth regarding him, he points to the fact of his being in flesh when he says, I have raised him up in righteousness and all his ways are straight. For what is this? Of whom does God, or I'm sorry, do, of whom does the father thus testify? So the father is talking about, so he's saying, okay, the father is the one speaking here. So the father must be speaking of somebody else. You know, just law of exclusion, you know, like, He's not saying I. That makes sense so far. I have raised him up in righteousness. Okay. Uh, so he says, it is of the son that the father says, I have raised him up in righteousness. And that the father did raise up his son in righteousness. The apostle Paul bears witness saying, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. So I guess I could point this to you and say, isn't this, because I think you, what do you think of this? Because this is making a distinction between not just the father and Jesus Christ, but the spirit that dwells in us, doesn't it? Because remember, the, the argument from the Trinitarian point of view is that the spirit is himself a distinct person so who dwells in us well i mean okay but the spirit of him are we talking christ or the father here or just the spirit of god or the spirit of him because i when i read it to me it's the spirit of christ that raised up christ well the purpose of what's being said here is is you're you're telling somebody that they're with god so the spirit of him that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead, him that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead is the father. So yeah, the no, spirit, that's, that's great. I mean, that's, I love hearing that. So would you be then thinking that the father then must be a, the spirit? Because if it's a spirit of him, then there is the, the X of the Y, you know, that raised the Z. Yeah, I mean, to me, you've got God, the Father in heaven, and he sends his spirit into the world. And the Son 
and the Father have the same spirit. That's the Trinity to me. But So, well, sending things into the world. So, because in the way, if I was going to say something like that, I would say, like, you know, the Father, when he created, he gave, he did, he, he first, he gave life to all things by sending his spirit into the world there. But he created stuff by his word. So there is a distinction because the spirit is is what is giving life. And so, yeah, God, the spirit is doing something different than what the word is doing. Um, in, that, in that economy. Okay. Well, if I heard that, the way I would respond is I'd say, okay, well, you're, you're talking about Genesis chapter one, right? When everything was created. Well, the first thing or the second thing is the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And the very next thing is God said. So I'm just saying the word is from the spirit. That's his spirit goes into the world and says these things and things are created. Well, no, I mean, I, I wasn't necessarily talking about Genesis. I was actually more thinking of Isaiah where he says, let's say if the Lord who is, you know, given breath and spirit into the world and gives and gives given life onto everything that walks in it. But okay. there's so, so there's there's that because not everything that's in creation has spirit, you know, they don't have, it doesn't have life, but yet all of creation did come from God. And so my argument here again, for the distinction in, in the Holy spirit and the, and the word is that all things are created by the word, but not all things are endowed with spirit. So when, when we see scripture saying, Oh, the, you know, the spirit is sent out, um, you know, the spirit is him. That's that the spirit is, is, is that which is, uh, quickening and giving life um but the work of the word of the son of god you know the son of the father is the where is the work of actual creation and form itself it's almost like the aristotelian aristotelian like idea like form like the fact that something has a form is one thing but just because something has a form doesn't mean it has a spirit now again when we're talking about god they, they're all three together so you know god's always a living god but when we i'm just talking about creation here if something is have is given creation if it's created, it doesn't necessarily have a spirit. So we know that there is creation that comes from God, but then we know that the spirit is in, you know, when God endows things with spirit, and when I say endow things, I mean, that doesn't mean everything has the Holy Spirit. But again, the very concept of what spirit is, I mean, it's, I'm not going to pretend to be able to explain that. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, no, this is... Except for when it's God, it's personal. That's the difference. When God is 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 doing this spirit, is doing the spiritness, it's a, it's a personal thing. Because what I'm what I'm coming to conclude is that there's only two different types of activity, and again, activity being distinct from from a substantial, sub from a substantialness, substantial stuff, and then there's the activity of the stuff. But out of an activity, things activities are either can either be classified accidental or personal. Um, I, I I don't know if there's a third one because accidental is is more is also now if, if I'm going to merge that with incidental. Because again, I always think of it like, okay, two asteroids randomly colliding in the middle of space is is the is as far from personal as you can get. You know, an asteroid falling from the sky and and killing me—that's even not personal. You know, only a person can interact with a per. The only type of personal relationship that is possible is between two persons. Because I I don't know I don't know if it can be argued that I can have a personal relationship with with an object that doesn't have its own personhood. And the the and the argument goes into you know, God in eternity does have a relationship with himself. And then God's spirit, if God's spirit has a relationship with something, that is a relationship sans the, the son of God as a personal relationship. Because again, something can be created by the son of God and yet not be in a personal relationship with the son of God. But the difference is though, again, I can have a spiritual relationship if the spirit of God is moving me, there's nothing that God can possibly do that's accidental. So everything that God's spirit is doing is under the direct will and control of God. Now, I understand you can get into, like, what's the difference between their center of consciousness and the minds and that sort of thing. But the difference is, though, is that the, there is a distinction. It's just simply a personal distinction. Not without getting into consciousness and centers of consciousnesses and minds and that sort of thing, because I know that's where the overlap when the, you know, the a lot of the argument for personhood comes in. Okay. Um, 
I'm glad you highlighted this part. So let's let me look at this. But if the spirit of him who raised up Christ. So was the spirit of him, the spirit of God, was that spirit with Christ when he was on the cross? Question. Obviously it was. I already know the answer. So, and, but then, but then Christ will say, I will raise myself up, so to speak. So that's kind of what I'm saying is Christ is that spirit in flesh. That's just how I see it. But well, let's go on on this. Um, behold the word spoken and by that. That's Romans eight. Um, Oh, yeah, let me let me just go to that real quick since we're on it. And then it says that that same spirit will dwell in you. But Christ is always saying, look, I'm going to dwell in you. You're going to dwell in me. His father is going to dwell in you. You're going to dwell in the father. We're all going to dwell in the body of Christ. So, yeah, I mean, there is a there are three distinctions there. Right? I'll make a concession here or however you want to say it. I can I can understand why you're saying the trinity of the persons, the economy. I, I can understand that. It's just not how I would explain it. I mean, shouldn't you, this is, this is, this, this isn't an argument. This is from left field. Shouldn't you want to explain it in a way that like, if you agree that we're looking at the same thing, well, but yeah, I'm taking it. go ahead. Well, go ahead. if you agree, we're looking at the same thing and, you know, ultimately, but yet your way of explaining it, differs than like the orthodox way then shouldn't you be the one to conform to the way we we describe it because again only if we're talking about descriptions not understandings of it if we understand it differently obviously we don't want to we don't want to conflate our views no, i won't and i'll tell you why because the the bible doesn't necessarily use the word persons it use uses the word name it doesn't really use the word essence it doesn't really say the word nature so these, this, these are things that explain the Trinity, but they're not necessarily biblical words, in my opinion. Essence, nature, persons. So I'm just looking at it from more of a how I would how I would interpret it biblically. I'm studying it, even though I you're right. I can see the economy. Yes, you're right. He's right. I'm just maybe taking it another looking at it from another perspective or taking it a little deeper or however you want to say it. Well, maybe a pull back a little. Cuz if it's the spirit of him. So I'm I maybe I'm still not cuz if it's the spirit of him that raised up Jesus. And you're saying and and your view is that that's not talking about the trinity there that the spirit of him <laughs> well no i i think that there obviously is a trinity father son holy spirit i'm just like i just said it's i'm just right but, but then where I, i'm still trying to have because i'm trying i'm trying to st I, I still can't necessarily steal man your view because okay. I'm, I'm not clear on because if, if you're okay. looking at this for example then where are you placing as a spirit of him so now we have the spirit of okay. him because if you're going to have to say that that the Father is of, because we, we we agree that Him is the Father, but then God. that the Father would need to be the same. I mean, the Spirit of yeah, Him. Yeah, you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. That raised okay, up the, Jesus from the dead. You're right. They they are one and they are three in some sort of economical way. I you're right. I can see that now. Um. Um, there's well, one verse that does. I give it the thing with the persons, where it's like, well, why do you claim that a per? Because because I've I've seen the argument where a person where because for me the 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 error comes in in saying, and I'm, I don't think you do this, but generally when people say that person must equal being, you know, if a person equals a being, then yeah, then that's automatically that's tritheism, right? If we're talking about a being being a god. But when we start bringing in words like being, you know, just like you said, we start talking about natures and essences and ontology, you know, ontoses and, and, and metanoia or, uh, you know, like homoousias and all this kind of stuff. 
this is where we need to, if we're, if we're, if we're going to start bringing in these kind of words, then we need to be clear, as clear as possible. Or we're going to muddy the waters. <laughs> okay. Now, it, you know, but so in your view, would you think that a, a, um, one bad thing that came out of it. So you, cause you, you think the way that a Trinitarian describes these things is incorrect, right? As far as the three persons. Well, like, no, I, I can right now I would say, look, I can't say it's not in, it's incorrect. It's just that I would describe it differently. You would use different words, different perspective. Well, cause but, I, I disagree with some Trinitarian language that some Trinitarians use, right? So, and I think that a lot of times it comes from that when we start, but, but, but aside from that, would you say like, if you see like a, um, well, no, that's a whole different thing. Cause I'm, I'm, that's probably oneness Pentecostal where they start looking at the spirit. Like if the spirit isn't, cause one of my arguments for why this is fa fairly essential is that if it's not, if somebody doesn't affirm the spirit to literally be God, to be, you know, Hashem himself, the spirit, you know, not the same spirit that is the son that came out of Mary because he was, a, you know, like, like that there being a distinct, like, just like you said, like, if it's, if we don't say this, because again, if somebody just lacks the saying of that, that in itself isn't necessarily bad or heretical. It's just, in my view, it would be incomplete if they don't come to that understanding at some point, if they were to try to apprehend it. But if you don't, but then when I see people later on, they look at the spirit like it is a, the force, the impersonal force. It's a spirit of God. It's like a fumes. The, the vapors has come off of God, and now I've got them, and now I'm sort of, you know, it, it, you know, almost like it's like a like a, like the, the Sibylline oracle, you know, is now like I've inhaled the the, the fumes that have come from this, and now I, I've endowed with this special power, you know, if because if we if we don't look at it like the reverence, because I think it's a it's a form of reverence, not idolatry. If it wasn't God, anything we, we do with reverence that isn't God is idolatry. But making God the center of all things. Now, again, because the spirit is ephemeral in himself to where he can't be, you know, he doesn't have a form. This is where, you know, we pray in the name of Christ. There is a part where he says we pray to the Holy Spirit in here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, let me find that. I, I remember that in that. Oh, did I un... Oh, wait. Let me go back. Um, bum, 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 Where is it? Share this tab. Instead. So behold, the word spoken by the prophet is thus made good. I have raised him up in righteousness. And in saying God is in you, he referred to the mystery of the economy, because when the word was made incarnate and became man the father was in the son and the son in the father while the son was living among men okay wait i'm sorry to stop but can you can you see what i'm saying here if the word is ultimately the spirit is he's with the spirit the spirit of god is from god and is god that same spirit is with the son or is the son that's how they are one that's the trinity well, you remember also where he says, uh, where Jesus says, let them be in me as I am in you, right? Right, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm realizing now, you know, a lot of the end times stuff in the, in, Bible, in the Bible is they tell the same thing over and over and over again, all throughout the Bible, and they say it in different ways. And I'm seeing that the Trinity is a lot like that, too. He keeps saying the same thing in different ways. Yet the way I'm look, I mean, yeah, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you, um, but yeah, when, when people say, "Oh, Christ is in me," and I believe He is, but how is He in me? Does that mean the Son Himself? Because somebody being in, it's the Spirit, like, what, right? It must be the Spirit because when we're talking about somebody being in somebody, you know, because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the form and person of God. So it wouldn't really make necessary sense to say, oh, the form of God is in me, 
right? Yeah. We must say that, but we still say God is in me, but we still say Christ is in me. But the only way Christ is in you is if the Holy Spirit is in you because the Holy Spirit is with God. God is Christ and the Father is in Christ. Like it's all, they're all, they are one, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's how we are one with him being brought yeah. into his righteousness and his perfection and, eco and economy, as it were. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, that's you're right. Yeah, the the, the body of Christ, the, the temple, the Father's house. But you're right. The Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of the Father. They're all the same thing, essentially. It's just a different way of describing. Well, what you just said is God is one. They're all the same thing. God is one God. The Lord is one Lord. The Lord God our God the Father. is one. God the Father. And yeah, yeah. There's always another question. I don't know. Well, that that's see that, that that's not in the actual. It's just the, the Lord is one Lord. To say that the Lord is only the Father, I don't think is correct. Yeah, you're right. I was wrong. I was just <laughs> I was just trying to come up with an answer. Oh, I, th I thought you were slipping that in there to, to just to make to 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 remind me that, you know, that we utterly disagree on this. I, don't know. I, thought, I, I thought you were agreeing, but then you're like, oh, no, the, only the father is God. Um, then, well, no, no, no. yeah, obviously we're back to square one. <laughs> yeah, make one slip up, one wrong word. It's like, oh, my God. Well, I mean, that's well, that, that's a that's a legit stance to think that only the father is because again, but see, that's the thing. The Father is is the the true God. It's it's a true statement. Right. The Father is the true God, but that doesn't nullify the statement. The Son is the true God, and the Holy Spirit is the true God. Yeah, yeah. No, I can see what you what you're saying about the economy of the Trinity. Yeah, you're right. And the fact that, and because that's his point here, where he says the Son living among men. Because he's like, well, the father, the only way that the father is in any way, because the, the father doesn't come and live among men, too. Because a lot of it's the holiness of the father to where the father doesn't get sent. The father doesn't come off of his throne. Like, you know, there's all these sorts of spiritualized right. ideas. Um, this, therefore, was signified, brethren, that in reality, the mystery of the economy by the Holy Ghost and the Virgin was this word constituting yet one son to God. Now, there you I go. would be on why he makes, because sometimes he says Holy Ghost, and other times he says Holy Spirit. I'm sure that's a, I, well, I'm guessing that's a translator thing. Listen to what he's saying. The Holy Ghost and the no. Virgin made the Son. You got a flesh body and you got a spirit. That's what a person is. Well, remember, if the Holy Ghost is involved, it's it's God Himself doing it. So I don't want to say the Virgin made. I mean, made through. In reality, the mystery of the economy by the Holy Ghost, signified by the, the mystery of the Holy by the Holy Ghost and the Virgin, was the Word. Yeah, just like Scripture says, constituting yet one Son to God. Now this dude gets into the identity of the Son because he said because in his view, even though he describes the the Word as being eternally begotten from the Son from the beginning, from the beginning of the beginning, from before the beginning. He still says that he wasn't actually perfectly the Son until he actually was in flesh. There you go. Yeah, the that's controversial the idea. Because yeah. I, I I would disagree with that. In that sense, I would say this guy is actually contradicting himself because I think the very meaning of Son in itself is as an ontological title, that which is, is uh, begotten from that which it's begotten from, from the Father. So if the eternal Father is the eternal, then the eternal Son, I put, I would argue with this guy, would be eternal. <laughs> um, and it's not simply that I say this, but he attests himself, it who came down from heaven, where he speaks thus, no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. I've seen that used, uh, talking about the hypostatic union. Um, you know, like the, the sun in heaven, the sun coming down from heaven. Um, right. There's another interesting part later on he gets to where Paul is describing 
the father talking about the son where he says, I, I will make my, you know, he was make, he will make his enemies his footstools um, with the exception of him who sent him. So it's like, okay, so God surely is going to make his enemies his footstool with the exception of who? Of God. So that's the son is, you know, all that is, you know, that authority given to the son with making his enemies its footstool with the exception of the father, because the father is the one who sent him. So obviously he's not going to have, you know, power over the father like that. <laughs> If we're talking about this, 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 you know, authority, but we'll get to that. Uh, we can, and, sorry, I, I need to, I need to get a second monitor on this guy. Take care of be if you're on. <laughs> yeah. What's up? <laughs> oh, it's G, man. Are you uh, are you crunching up? Uh... Sorry, I'm I'm uh, building a house for a second here. <laughs> um, what can he seek besides? Where is he? Kind of came down. <laughs> what then he can he seek besides what is thus written? Will he say for so that flesh was in heaven? Yet there is the flesh which was presented by the Father's word as an offering. The flesh that came by the spirit and the virgin, once okay, again, there you go. boom, and it was demonstrated to be the perfect son of God. There you so go. So this is, and this is described elsewhere in other writings by these early guys. Again, which I mean, I think it's scriptural because uh, the, the 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 word of God taken on flesh. Now this flesh and the Holy Spirit, um, through their, you know. Th through what's happened here, this this miracle of birth, um, now we have God in flesh, the go. Son of God in flesh, and now because the Son of God is in flesh, now flesh is now has access to perfection. Uh, is just, that there? Or are you saying that? Uh, there's a part if it's not here later on where it says that Jesus yeah. is is incarnated in every way except that he doesn't have sin. Okay. And so, but, but again, what, what, what it is also, so where Christ comes down and takes on the suffering for us and takes the punishment for us. And then when he goes and, and he takes this flesh up to the father, and that's what he's saying here, where he makes an offering. The flesh came by the spirit and the virgin demonstrated to be perfect son of God. It is evident. Therefore he offered himself to the father. This is talking. I mean, this is, and people say penal substitutionary atonement or, you know, however you want to slice it to, to take off the penal, take off the, I mean, whatever. I mean, this is that the the sin was paid for by the flesh of Christ. And now he's gone up to taking this flesh into heaven. And now flesh can now exist in heaven because a sinless flesh has existed in heaven. The first fruits are there now. And, and this is signifying us and that work justifies us. And we who believe it, and we're brought uh -huh. into that same, that sameness with him in our flesh when we are resurrected does that make sense yeah 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 that's all yeah that's great uh flesh came out of spirit demonstrated to be first and he was in heaven by the word unincarnate who then was in heaven but the word unincarnate who was dispatched to show that he was upon earth and was also in heaven and he was for he was were here you go this is what you're talking about for he was word, he was spirit, he was power. There we go. But it also, notice it's not saying the son incarnate. It doesn't say right, because son. this guy doesn't believe the second person of the Trinity was technically the son until he was born of Mary. Okay, thank you. I, I pretty much agree with that. Even though he agrees he was called the son. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, why I'm yeah. arguing with this guy. I'd be like, dude, if he's called the son, then he's the son. In prophecy. In prophecy. Yeah. Well, because that's where he's like, well, he did it because God knew. So that's why he said it. But again, yeah. I'm like, well, on to like, if, because later on, maybe it's here where he says the only reason he's called the son, anyways, to, is so we know what, what's being talked about. Because we know what a son is. Um, See, so yeah, after he was word, but I think here he's he's basically just affirming the Trinity again, because as far as word, spirit, and power, because he says, you know, we're it's the same power, same God. 
it's right there would be like the same, you know, same name, basically. The same took to himself the name. Com it, yeah, yeah, that's what I was just talking about. The same took to himself the name common and current among men and, and was called from the beginning the son of man on account of what he was to be. Yes, it's right here in front of me. I didn't even see. Although okay. he was not yet man. There you go. As Daniel testifies, when he says, I saw and behold one like the Son of Man come on the clouds of heaven, rightly then did he say that he who was in heaven was called from the beginning by this name, the Word of God, as being that from the beginning. So he was the Word of God from the beginning. But this guy is like, well, later made this the, the Son, or even though called the Son. Again, my argument, because... Yeah, I, I would still argue with this because we're made in the image of God. So God is the first one who even has an image. So to say, well, the word didn't look like a man until he was born. I mean, we have incarnate, I mean, not incarnate, but we have appearances of Christ in, in the Old Testament all over the place. I would even argue every appearance of God in the Old Testament is Christ. Just not in the... In the role of Messiah at that point, right? But in the role of of the Word of God, the Messenger of God, you know, the all that, uh, you know, the, the yeah, the Angel of God. Okay, well, I, I hate, yeah, I, that's great, but I hate to say it again. I'm going to take it one step further and say everything that they've heard and all the um, Christ Christophanies in the Old Testament. I would use a different word. I'd say this is the manifestation of the, his spirit. Yeah, but you can have a manifestation of the spirit and yet not have the sun be in there, right? Well, it's that spirit that becomes the sun, born in flesh. It's not, it's not the same thing, though. I can say this is a work of the spirit. The spirit is at work here. Now, yeah, you can say, well, there wouldn't have been at work unless the sun existed. Sure. I mean, that's a given. But that's still a distinction between... The what because that that's what economy means is that one thing is doing one thing and one thing is doing another thing. If they're doing the exact identical thing and they're interchangeable, then that's not economy. You know, that's okay, like I'll, five I'll, equals ten. No, that that's all good. I appreciate you doing this, but I'm just going to make a statement just to get it out on the table. This is how I kind of see it now, because I can never figure out Melchizedek, the word. You know what? What is all? Who's who? What's going on here? I, I, I now the way I'm looking at this. I think Melchizedek was just a guy, but he was oh. rep, he was in a, in a he was representative though. But the angel of the Lord. So, uh, the way I'm seeing it now is in the beginning the spirit of God moved upon the face of the planet, really the waters, and everything, all the word and all the visual appearances is that spirit, angel of the Lord, Melchizedek. Everything that's heard, spoken, all the visions, and then that same spirit is born in flesh. That's how nobody has actually ever seen, quote, the Father. We just see his spirit, so to speak. Yeah, but a spirit isn't seen. If it's if it is seen, then it's something well, it's something besides spirit. It's a okay, form. Yeah, well, yeah I, I see what you mean. Yep. Now you can see something in the spirit, or I can see somebody in the spirit of the you know that, that's that's the distinction. Because, or if you can see the motion of the spirit, and if you sure if you see God, then surely you can claim, well, am I seeing the spirit? I mean, you're seeing the spirit of God in in action. No, but again, that's where Jesus says, like, you don't see, you know, you can only see the wind. You can, I mean, you can only see, you can't see the wind. You can only see the leaves being blown by it. So that's the only distinction that I'm making. I'm mean, in that particular framework. <laughs> Uh -huh. No, you're right. no, it's a little hard to, to take. I know. Um, this is God. So we'll go back and uh, we didn't wish to, we didn't start to some design on things. I say, oh, bring stuff up. I hope I haven't done anything. If I've done anything like that, then I apologize. And if you want to let me know what I did on that, then I will certainly address it, my man. Friends over family, over friends, we are gods and family. Friends and friends, friends to the end. Chucky. Amen. If we're in the Lord, we're in we're the family of Christ. I mean, if, the, if we're our father, if God is our father, you know, either God's our father or Satan's our father, right? 
I mean, if we <laughs> probably not the most. Uh... Think about this. Uh, so I don't mean to sidetrack. I really like going through this, but say you got the wind right, and he was even saying the leaves. You see the wind in the leaves, but say you've got the wind, you don't see it. <clears throat> but have you ever seen a dust devil? Uh, like a tornado thing, where the dust is becomes a part of the the wind. And you, you kind of see the wind. Well, it's not really see. coming. Man, the, the first, but before I did this against Noetus, did, did you listen to any of the against Manichaeus or the, or about the Manichaean, the one I did before this? Or one of them I did. Dude, they get so much into this, uh, like everything we're talking about here as far as like the difference between, I'm, I'm so surprised because, I mean, I shouldn't be because this is what these guys did all day these, back in you know, 2000, 3000 years ago. But um because they are talking about like something moving versus something being in motion versus, okay, if that thing needs to, if motion itself exists, because the Manichaeans, they thought that motion was a substance. And this is where he was like, this doesn't make any sense that motion is its own substance because motion must be the motion of something like these pre-Socratics and stuff. Cause they were looking at this from, yeah. But anyway, the, the, like I said, the Hippolytus, the, the work by him called Refutation of All Heresies. He goes through the pre-Socratics pre all the way up to, um, you know, and then finally in the like Plato and then like, you know, Socrates, Aristotle. And then, you know, once they start getting into morality versus cosmology and then it mixes together, you know, it goes into all that. But I'm, I'm saying like th th that'll be well, no, I'm sure I'm sure you, you'll be around. Check it out at some point. But it, it'll, it'll be really cool. I, I, I intend to make it like. Um, uh, like illustrate, I'm going to put images showing what these guys are talking about when it gets in the Pythagoras. Have you ever heard of Pythagoras? In the sacred geometry where oh. it's like one line okay you have a monad a duad two things so now there's only a certain amount of things you can do once you get to three now all of a sudden you actually can have a form and then you know then you get to the the the, the fourth the, the uh, and then it, there's all these different things and then you can have and you know they and then they merge together with different patterns and then you can make this out of that and they say all oh, creation is based on this sacred geometry and la di la di la and uh it's anyway Talk about getting sidetracked. <laughs> but yeah, no, what you were saying with, as far as like, I guess, because again, like this is something, these are, these are valid, uh, you know, valid discussions that we're having as far as, when, or, or concerns that we're having when it comes to what is the nature of motion? What is the nature of, of something having substance? You know, where about, you know, you're saying that, because just like, so where I disagreed with you earlier, because you said that in a dust devil, well, I don't know. Maybe I don't disagree with you because you're saying in Dust Devil, like the sand merges with the wind, and exactly. I'm like, well, typically, it's not. Yeah. It's it's the motion though is the because one of the one of the arguments against Manichaeism because they had a pure duality, but he's like, if these things are purely one thing is dark and one thing is as light, he's like, if there's no intermediate thing to connect those two, then you have no means to say that they even have any kind of connection. So what is the connection? But however, I could look at okay oxygen of the wind then you could say maybe the motion itself is the connective force between that makes the merging so this is what i see i'm trying to make this work as what you're saying um when in the, just in the form of a dust devil because it's like as far as this if i could is there a way that i can think of that as true that it's the wind is merging okay. with the substance because technically you know the only way like the it's the substance is conforming to motion. Motion is its own, is its completely separate concept. So the substance itself isn't becoming merged, even though it's 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 in tune with what it's doing. Uh, if that makes any sense. <laughs> well, you're definitely taking it like like I'm doing. You're you're definitely looking at it from another perspective or taking it deeper. But what was interesting about the dust devil thing is that if you look at it like that, that's really what a person is right they're the dust of the earth and the spirit within it or the air moving do you see the form of the air in the dust like a person you, <laughs> that makes sense it makes sense to me but all right uh yeah but 
it would be interesting then looking at taking that, but then looking at what the distinctive between still it, using that as a model, the distinction between a tree, you know, a Volkswagen, a dog, you know, because we know that there is some kind of distinction beyond just simply the, 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 the motion and the matter that it's made up of. Because I would still argue, in addition to matter and the motion, there needs to be form too. Um, but I don't know. That's <laughs> well. The technically, the air is physical. If you look it up, it'll tell you. It'll say air is physical. Uh, I mean, meaning that it exists within the realm of physics. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can feel it. You know, Metaphysical. Like but no, I mean that being uh, as opposed to having a. Well, I mean, that's where we can go into the, you know, solids, um, you know, solids, gas. And, you know, we could argue about if plasma is actually a, the fourth element or if plasma is actually a state, you know, a, a valid state of matter. Or if it's just the, you know, ionic, if it's just another state of gas. But anyway, we'll get it back into this. Uh, what is meant? And he says other passages that this is God and there shall be none other. Okay. So I think this is the argument from Noetus against the Trinity. Uh, that this is God. There shall none other be accounted of in comparison of him. So he says, well, that he said rightly. So he's like, okay, you're right about that. We're in comparison of the father who shall be accounted for. This is our God. There shall be none other be accounted of in comparison of it. As like I said earlier, we can rightly say, the Father is the true God, but that doesn't mean the Son isn't the true God. <laughs> and okay. the Spirit isn't the true God. So this is our God. There should be none other accounted for in comparison of Him. He has found out all the way of knowledge. He has given it. So He's He's saying, like, look at the rest of the passages that that this guy is using. Because then it says He has given it unto Jacob His servant and to Israel His beloved. Now these guys literally say when they're saying Jacob and Israel that they're talking to messianic that these are messianic prophecy. And I don't know if. If they have a good argument for that or not. Well, it does but, say capital his servant. I... <laughs> sure. Well, that's obviously what's meant by the, when the translator did this. Okay, yeah. Uh, he says, well, for who is Jacob his servant, Israel his beloved, but he of whom he cries, saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, hear him. Yeah, I, I'm just I'm just taking a skeptical approach. I mean, I I do agree with this. I mean, I, I don't disagree that this is referring to Christ in this passage that he's citing. Um, having received then all knowledge from the Father, the perfect is, and this is that there's the distinction right there. The perfect Israel and the true Jacob afterwards did show himself upon earth and conversed with men. And who again is meant by Israel, but a man who sees God. Because that's what, what they say. That's what Israel means. He who sees God. And there is none. There's no one who sees God except the Son alone. The perfect man who alone declares the will of the Father. For John also says, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared him. I remember that was like explained him. Because he's the word. Uh and again, he who came down from heaven testifies that he, or testifies what he has heard and seen. This then is he to whom the Father has given all knowledge, who did show himself upon earth and converse with men. Let's look upon the apostles' word. Who whose are the fathers, of whom is concerning the. See, I think I should look those up, or do we know what these what these passages clear enough? Concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. This word declares the mystery of the truth rightly and clearly. He who is over all is God. For thus he speaks boldly, all things are delivered unto me of the Father. He who is over all, God blessed, has been born. Having been made man, he is yet God forever. For to this effect, John also has said, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. And well has he named Christ the Almighty, for in this he has said only what Christ testifies of himself. For Christ gave this testimony, all things are delivered unto me of the, my Father. 
and Christ rules all things, has been appointed almighty by the Father. And in like manner, Paul also sets forth that all things are delivered unto him, said Christ, the first fruits, afterwards, they that are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end. Then he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. See, we're, there's, for all things are put under him, but when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is ex expected which did put all things under him. Is this not? Then shall he also himself be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. I'm going to look that up because... I'm not sure if that's first Corinthians 15 28. First Corinthians, let me share this tab. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry. I mean, okay. I'm just thinking. For he saith all things are his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, interesting. It is manifest that he is accepted. He is accepted. So somebody has put. So here, here's the argument here, because it took me a while to get this. And this is what Paul is saying here in print. As he's saying, oh, it, it says in the scripture and the prophets and the, uh, Psalms, I believe, um, you know, he, he has put all things under his feet. So when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted. So there's somebody whose feet or somebody who is not put under his feet. That's him to whom gave it to him to do this, which is the father to the son. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because the way he's he's quoting this is not exact. Because <laughs> obviously he didn't have the, the King James Bible back then. <laughs> but when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Because so the Father put all things under the Son. And when all things should be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So you see the Son goes back under the Father. Or I don't even know if back would even be proper to say. Like this is God doing what God does in, in perfection. But yeah, but again, this this I understand this isn't arguing against you. Uh, this is yeah, arguing. No, no. Uh, this is the argument against the monarchianist monarchianism and patripassianism. Um, so going on with Paul, for he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy shall be destroyed. His death for all things are put under him. When he says that all things are put under him, as manifest he is acceptable. He should put all things under him. Then shall he also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. If therefore all things are put under him, with the exception of him who put them under him, he is Lord of all, and the Father is Lord of him, that in all there might be manifested one God, to whom all things are made subject together with Christ, to whom the Father has made all things subject, with the exception of himself. <laughs> and this indeed is said by Christ himself. As when in the gospel he confessed him to be his father and his God. See, it makes perfect. Like, like, oh, why does Jesus pray to pray to the Father as God? It's because he is God. Because he is the Father. It's just why wouldn't he do that? For he speaks thus. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a lot of it really just has to do with the atonement, salvation. <clears throat> well, you can definitely see the persons here. You're right. One of the things that needs to be uh, that we need to be wary of <clears throat> is as if Jesus 
was a, like a spirit, as is generally described, as I've seen it in various, in various ways, like a spirit wearing a flesh suit. As if he was really just like God came down and put on a flesh suit and I was like walking around like, ooh, this is neat. As opposed to literally being an actual person, every part of him was truly a person who was living as a person. He was a person 100% in every way, as far as we could, except for the fact that, it's like he says, like that, that, that he didn't sin. Now, how that's possible, how that is, what that looks like, like what the the science is behind that, right? Like that's, I'm fine that like that's God through God, all things are possible. But the difference is that if it's not the case, then he truly didn't do these things. Jesus was, it's, it's almost like, it's like dishonesty when Jesus is sitting here saying, Oh, I am, I am here with you. You know, I am doing these. like, it's. Okay. I'll and try to. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll try to make one other little thing here. This is <laughs> like this is how I'm seeing it because I'm not I'm not saying the sun pre-existed. I'm saying the spirit of God became flesh. And then what was born is the sun. Okay? And then the sun, that flesh body which died on the cross and was resurrected or transfigured or somehow or another became a spiritual thing. That's still called the sun somehow or another, and it ascends to the throne. So that there, now I can see the persons, the tri trinity, the triunity, or the economy. So don't you but think the word... That, oh, sorry. Before that, I would say no. But go ahead. So you said you don't think the sun pre-existed because you don't think he was the sun until the spirit, this Holy Spirit came and basically kind of generated the sun with the whole, you know, with Mary. But, yeah, which is pretty much exactly what this letter is saying, but yeah, that's right. Uh, well, I don't think so, because the argument of this letter is the word pre-existed. So don't yeah. you think the word pre-existed? Yeah. And that yeah. the word is not the father? Right. right, well, I'm just saying the word son, you can't really say the word son until he's born. Okay, well, aside from the title, though, the, the the word the word of god the word of the father being distinct from the father that's that's the argument here that the word of the and 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 also the argument here is that the spirit is distinct from those but that's kind of beside this point but but here what you're saying because you're like well there was you know the son was didn't didn't exist it wasn't pre-existent because he didn't come to existence until you know and therefore you're saying well then the holy spirit is this pre-existent Yes. This. So even so, then you're so you're so then in that case you're making a distinction between what the Father and the Holy Spirit. But then, again, the, the you seem to have you you would have you would seem to me to have to go at lengths to 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 get rid of the the three the threeness, which I think you've already kind of I, I don't know because various times I talk to you and you 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 seem to well, to be like no. oh yeah I can see it in that way, but then like. It'll be months later, but then it's just kind of like you've reset. <laughs> no, there is a three: a Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I've never said there wasn't. It. Well, what about well, what about the word Father, Word, and Holy Spirit? Wouldn't that be this? Are you are you not saying the same thing when you're saying those? Because uh, the earliest this guy, and also the earliest one is from 180 A.D. Because it was what got me into truly delving into the Trinity, and that's from a. Uh, like the third audiobook I ever made, which is Theophilus of Antioch, because he first goes into explaining, which is already explained in scripture. That's where it's like I'd already read it, but it's it's funny you hear it in a different way and it's kind of clicks with you. But where he just explains the Father, the Word, and the wisdom, um, you know, it, something in it kind of struck me. And then I kind of started to approach it from these various directions. Again, keeping in mind that they're God and anything of God is a person, you know, even if. Even if part of God was a uh, I mean, anything, there's no part of God. That's 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 the that's the rub, is that God doesn't have parts. So, but He has a distinction. So, what are these distinctions? Well, whatever they are, we know what they aren't. They're not parts. So they're not impersonal, because there's that's that's why you see pictures of God where He has like eyeballs all over Him and it's sort of spirit, you know, like this sort of thing where it's like it, it's a it's a it's, obviously it's a 
spiritualized view that the fact that there's no part of God that that isn't personal or that that is in that's not a person or there's no parts of God in, at, at, at all. But there's no distinction in God that isn't a person. either. But anyway, I'm totally getting sidetracked. But because you, you, your view again, because you would where do you? Yes, I didn't give you a chance to answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just went on prattling uh, as far as the word, because you say, yes, there is a Trinity and you say it's the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. But you just said that the son didn't actually come into existence until uh, he was born of Mary. So then would you say that? Bef but I don't think it's you. Oh, I don't want to put words in your mouth that you're there for arguing that prior to the incarnation that God was a duality, right? Like a, or a, a divinity or, or whatever. I, I, I don't know. The question you asked about the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, I don't know. I don't know. Well, because obviously, and again, like I said, I don't want to be like, but 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 because I mean the view, this is the view. This is the view I thought we were going to take because this is what I think this view is: is that even if I were to concede to you that the proper title of the second person of the Trinity isn't the son until he was technically born of Mary, which I would still okay. disagree with because if there was the father begotten of the father, I would still, cause we can still, but anyway, this guy's argument agrees with you there that he's not the son, but he, but he does say that he was still called the son prophetically. Right, However, right. but if you're saying he didn't exist as a person until he was born as a flesh and blood person through Mary, that's where our disagreement is because the disagreement is that the spirit is still the spirit, which you, you agree the spirit of God is personal. Um, you know, and again, we're not even getting into what we even mean by that because we're not even agreeing on whatever, you know, center of consciousness or, well, you know, pretty close. it's pretty, pretty close. Again, it's but, just like one word. Spirit, different. Father. And then, so you're, you know, and then this is where the distinction is because you're saying now a third was there, Definitely when he was born as the son. And then you're saying, well, he yeah. kept on being the son, and now you have a trinity. So the argument here is that the word of God, because my argument even from, I know I've argued with you before on this, or, you know, or had a little that Socratic dialectic uh, on that, the two, two natures of the second person of the trinity, or two names for him, rather, in scripture, in the book of Daniel given, is uh, the son of man, right, prophetically. And the word of God. So the son of man and the word of God are, are two descriptions of the same person of the okay. Trinity, as it were. So, so again, even if I were to concede to you that the son wasn't truly or the second person, that, that there's still the word of God still existed, pre-existed. And that the word of God is distinct because this is where this. So there's the other rub. Like, would you so you. Do you disagree, therefore, then, that the word of God is not or is distinct from the Father and from the Holy Spirit? Well, not from the Holy Spirit, but from the Father proper. Yeah, because the, I'm saying the word is the spirit comes from the spirit of God or the spirit of the Father. But, I mean, it's it's pretty close. But I can I can see that essentially... You know, it, to say it really basically, he, he comes down, he picks up a flesh suit, and he brings it back up to heaven. So there's the second person right there. Well, the the who who came down, right? That's now because again, the Holy Spirit never stops doing what the Holy Spirit does or being what the Holy Spirit means. Um, although he does have many different ac actions, so, but when you're saying came down and took up a flesh suit, I mean, <laughs> yep. do, you, do, do you think that, I mean, so, I mean, in your view, we're all flesh suits like that? We're spirit, yeah, well, of course, we're spirit in f and flesh, and when our flesh dies, the spirit lives on, it's still uh, me, it's still me. Well, uh, I mean, I think that this, we're getting into some, in a whole different territory, as far as what life is, what it means to live on. But um, that's why I'm saying Christ is the Holy Spirit in flesh. It, that's him. He's the, the spirit of God. OK, so going back to the word of God, this uh -huh. is. So so your argument, let me get you said the word of God. 
comes from the spirit. From the spirit. Yeah, no, the word. Father. I mean, Doesn't the word of God come from the Father. You're right. You're right. It's, a, it's the breath of His mouth, the spirit of His mouth. The spirit is breath. Yeah. So word is, him. but yeah. So word, word or logos is a form, which the, there's a form in the spirit, right? Just just me merely having a breath doesn't give me words and forms of it. Yeah, I need to actually. There needs to be something else there. That's my point. So I and again I think in that, that that does lay in the distinction between the Father, the Word, and the breath. Okay. And yeah. No, I'm not going to. Three of these yeah. are eternal, co-eternal. Like that. That's that's the argument. Where about you? You were you were saying that the either like the logos itself or the the word isn't really there yet right but yet because you has to get about to get split off and then put into and then made into this new this new cre yeah i mean because what i'm trying to do is just find all the different reasons to disagree with you at this point because i mean we, we can see where we agree but 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 because Because the stuff I just said isn't to me isn't conducive to a God who doesn't change. So if I were to concede all your points and be like, yeah, you know, there isn't really a word as a separate person, and God actually sent off a slice of Himself, because that's essentially what it would amount to. Because I'm, I'm not trying to necessarily. I mean, I don't think I'm trying to, you know give a reductive view of you because if if this new because a new creature is being created at this point right in the sun you have a new creature called the sun well no 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 it's not a new creature it's just the image it's just an image it's the same but he didn't <laughs> exist before person. but you're saying he didn't exist before i'm it's saying he did exist before well I'm just saying the word son. You can't really say the word son. He did pre-exist the spirit of God. Or you're, I mean, you're right. The word, the, the word, word, and the word spirit are two different words. So there must be some sort of difference. That's what I'm if you're having problems reconciling the notion of the son being eternal and pre-existent, because you're like, well, how was he a son? And, and in scripturally, if you're not seeing, because I'm saying also, What's pointed to scripturally is the concept of the word of God, and that is given in distinction with the Son of Man. So word of God and Son of Man are are both used prophetically, and that is always viewed as, and, and, and again, just like this guy is saying, you know, the, the Son of Man, um, that, that he, he couldn't actually, because I've seen this in other views too, I think it's in Hillary, where he says, yeah, we don't call him the Son of Man until he's actually the Son of Man. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, they agree with you there too, but he's still the word of God. Yes. And the word of God is a separate person, eternal. And, and, and this is why they go at length to show how Abraham ate with God, you know, and, and God spoke with these people and that the God of the burning bush was the son of, was the word of God as well, that he well, is I'm the word of God, not and set distinct from the father. That's why I, again and again, the early church is very, very, very clear that the the God who says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that spoke to Moses from the burning bush is not the Father. The visual representation of the Spirit of God or somehow the Word, the Word was visible. That's how he does things in this world. That's how I'm saying it. We're kind of saying the same thing. It's just a little snafu here and there. And I'm not 10,000% articulate on this. I mean, <clears throat> but I got the basic idea. I'm kind of saying the same thing. The, the burning bush, what you saw there, was not God the Father. It's his spirit. A visual well, no, representation of his spirit. And you're saying it's you know the same thing, just using different words. Well, well that's what I think. Because if you're, if, if you're still... In your in your paradigm, because we seem to be in just two different paradigms. Because if I would never say that you see a spirit, that's the thing. And if you are, but yeah. you can see something that has a spirit, or you can see something 
spiritually or you could but the very meaning of something being a spirit means that there's nothing there that there's no visual to see whatever that visual is is now then you corrected yourself or rather you know or maybe just for my sake because you knew that i was going to say this <laughs> but uh no, i i know it's a little bit of a how do you see spirit you no, can't have it. It, create it at the same because then all of a sudden now there's something new there but the scripture tells us that that the sun is the like you said the the perfect image of of the invisible god yeah so do, do you would you disagree then that god always had in this image that his image is eternal and perfect and never was created his image wasn't created i mean i think you would agree with that so if his image wasn't created then here we have this image which is the image of the invisible God. So now we have two. We have two. two we have a plurality of an invisible God and a visible God. But yet we have a spirit which can't be seen. So now we have a third thing, which isn't that which we're talking about, which is the Father. But we have this third. So this is where the the Trinity still works with that. Okay. Because okay. The yeah, image I'm... of the invisible God, but yet the invisible God isn't completely the spirit. But you know, just like you already agree with there. So, but we have yet yeah, Jesus is the image of this invisible God. But I guess you could still say, well, he's the image of the spirit. But yet you still have a distinction in the father. So this is why it's just to me, it just makes a lot more rational sense just to, to have that distinction in the father, son and Holy Spirit, which is where I think that's why these descriptions are, are you know, have always been there. <laughs> OK, no, thank you for that. I'm going to put that down as food for thought. Thank you. Um, I'll go on this. If, uh, let me see if anybody is. Uh... So if he also be subject to him that put all things under him. So yeah, so yeah, we have the father uh, putting all things under subjection to the son. Um, and the son has all things. And Paul directly says under subjection, all things with the exception of him who put all things under him. So we have a distinction there between the son and the father. Um, if therefore all things are put under him, with the exception of him who put them under him, he is the Lord of all, and the Father is Lord of him, that in all there might be manifested one God, whom all to, who, to whom all things are made subject, together with Christ, to whom the Father has made all things subject, with the exception of himself. And this indeed is said by Christ himself, and when in the gospel he confessed him to be his Father and his God, for he speaks thus, I go to my Father, and your father, and to my God, and to your God. If then Noetus ventures to say that he is the father himself, to what father will he say Christ goes away to, according to the gospel? So that's that argument's pretty clear. <laughs> but if he will have us abandon the gospel and give credence to his senselessness, he expends his labor in vain, for we ought to obey God rather than men. Throw in a little shade there. <laughs> If again he alleges his own word, do you want to skip right to where he's going into his description of his view of the Trinity? Oh, because again, I don't want to act like this is your view, um, unless you're no. interested in hearing what this this monarchianism is all about. <laughs> well, I mean, there's been good stuff all throughout, so it's kind of up to you what you want to do. No, that's cool. Um, if again he alleges his own word when he said, "I and the Father are one." Uh, let him attend to the fact and understand that he did not say, I and the Father am one, but are one. For the word are is not said of one person, but it refers to two persons and one power. He has himself made this clear when he spoke to his father concerning the disciples. The glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me. What have the Noetians to say to these things? Are all one body in respect of substance? <laughs> or is it that we become one in the power and disposition of unity of mind? In the same manner, the Son who was sent was not known of those who are in the world, confessed that he was in the Father in power and disposition. 
for the son is now this is the part that and the son is is the one mind of the father for who have the father's mind believe so in him we who have the father's mind believe so in him this is where these translations are, are i think funky but they who have it not have denied the son so if you don't have the mind of god then you don't have the son because he's saying the son is the mind of god to have the mind of god is to have the knowledge or to have the son is to have the knowledge of the mind of god and if again they choose to allege the fact that philip inquired about the father saying show us the father and it suffices us to whom the lord made the answer in these terms have i been so long time with you and yet you have not known me philip he that has seen me has seen the father do you not believe that i am in the father and the father in me and if they choose to maintain that their dogma is ratified by this passage as if he owned himself to be the father let them know that it is decidedly against them and that they are confuted by this very word and though christ for though christ had spoken of himself and showed himself among all as the son they had not yet recognized him as such <clears throat> That's interesting. <laughs> uh, neither had they been able to apprehend or contemplate his real power. And Philip, not having been able to receive this, as so far as it was possible to see it, requested to behold the Father, to whom then the Lord said, Philip, have I been with you so long time, as you have not known me? Have you, you have seen me, you have seen the Father. By which he means, if you have seen me, you may know the Father through me, for through the image, and here's where you're, which is like the original. Now the original I think is not in the translation. Which is like the image, which is like the original. The Father is made readily known. But if you have not known the image, which is the Son, oops, oh, who has been set forth, was sent from the Father and goes to the Father. Well, you skipped a sentence there, but... Oh, wait. Uh, and then this is made clear by the rest of the chapter, which signifies the Father is made readily known, but if you have not known the image, which is the Son... See, now here's where I would I would argue with you. Like, we'll see where... But like, I, with the Son being an image, separate than a spirit, but yet separate than the Father. How do you seek to see... Now, again, you still... Again, this is where I got into your member that you're, you're agreeing that the Son is there after he's already incarnate. Um, so, uh, which, but how do you see the father? And this case is made clear by the rest of the chapter, which signifies that the son who has been set forth was sent from the father and goes to the father. Cause again, we have a whole different activity between that and the Holy spirit. The Holy spirit is still the Holy spirit, Holy spirit, uh, many other passages or rather all of them attest the truth. A man, therefore, even though he will it not is compelled to acknowledge God the Father, Almighty, and Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who, being God, became man, to whom also the Father made all things subject, himself accepted, and the Holy Spirit. Now, this is where, you, you know, I guess you'd be like, well, maybe some, some medieval monk added that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. There's, there's, I understand. And that these, therefore, are three. I guess he would add it all that. But if he desires to learn how it is shown still that God is one, or that there is one God, let him know that his power is one. As far as regards the power, therefore God is one. As far as regards the economy, there is a threefold manifestation. Hey, Ricardo, I don't know who you are, so I'm not going to let you on unless you somehow let me know who you are. Otherwise, yeah, you can chill in there all you wish, my man. Burner, burner, burner. Hey, Mr. Music. But as regards the economy, oh, wait, where were we? Uh, as shall be proved afterwards. 
as far as the economy, there is a threefold manifestation. See, I love these words because, again, in my view, again, I, I firmly believe the Trinity. And I think that these guys, just like us today, are just struggling to, to explain it, to understand it. And I think that's the way it's supposed to be because we're talking about God here, you know. <laughs> but it's funny because just like I've always said, like a lot of the ways these early fathers speak, it's usually very sloppy because they're not necessarily anticipating um, how other people would take their words out of context or whatever. You know, this is where this is. And this is why, why I think what well, my theory was originally. And I don't know, maybe I've changed it over time since I've studied more on it. I haven't really rethought of it. But that the reason why they started using the word person was to prevent people from uh, from 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 making it impersonal, from making it like like a magic force, like a mystical force, you know. Um. But yeah, threefold manifestation. Because this is where later on the the hypostasis, because hypo means under, and stasis just means like situation of what something is. Like so, that's where you say principle or hypostasis, meaning underlying principle of it. So it's like, well, God is three underlying principles. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, I, I, that sounds good. Well, that's what they. That's what the Council of Nicaea does. <laughs> As far as shall be proved afterwards, when we give account of the true doctrine. In these things, however, which are thus set forth by us, we are at one. There is one God in whom we must believe, but unoriginated, impassable, immortal, doing all things as he wills, in the way he wills, and when he wills. What then will Noetus, who knows nothing of the truth? That's where I think that's a pun on his name. Um, Wait a minute. Dare to... I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt, but I had to do something, but uh i just want to don't want to miss this because you said hypostasis was many what was it principles of uh just hypo because there's hyper and hypo um hypo means under underneath underlying underlying principles yes and then uh, that makes sense that makes sense um because i first really because i didn't really study the council of nicaea but in, but again, looking at writers like out of that time, um, where they refer to hypostases, that's where it may start to make sense to me because I'm just like, okay, I can I can, you know, but I can see what they're trying to do because you can't if you're trying to describe God as a single substance or a single God as Scripture describes him, so then how are you going to describe what you're talking about? This is where we start getting in the words like plurality. And economy and hypostasis and homoousion, you know, because <laughs> I mean, you can see what they're trying to, to do, and you see they're trying to to say it in the right way. Because, and this is where it it would I would argue because wolves in sheep's clothing are everywhere looking for any way to, to to try to fleece the flock, and you do that by, you know, somehow uh, misrepresenting uh, the gospel. Okay, because I don't think somebody needs to understand, you know, the the substances of the homoousia, you know, or whatever. But you know, but this is where our so relationship I, with God. So if somebody believes that that they like, go, oh, Jesus is my homeboy, rather than Jesus is my Lord, you know, they're going to have a different relationship, you know. Or if they're going to believe that the Holy Spirit is a uh, is a magic force that I can I can will like Harry Potter, uh, you know, does with a wand, you know, that's going to give me a different relationship with God. Than what I think, you know, the way that we should have one in my particular judgment. So, so there's the three underlying principles of the same being. Yes. Right. There you go. I didn't say same persons, but the same being. Yeah, like I said, the that I think I pointed to it before. The Boethius um, theological tractates are where I really got got a lot of thinking of that from. But then again, when I I mean, the Hillary is before that. Um, and after, I mean, I don't know, man. Thomas Aquinas actually is what started all this. 
um, in, in, in my, from my, uh, <laughs> Some of these things, because when I started reading the early church, you know, the earliest apostolic fathers are all, you know, they're all edification, you know, and if you're still just trying to study scripture and, and then reading those guys isn't really going to mean much to you. because It's like, OK, I, all right, what am I what am I reading here? But when you get to Justin Martyr or when you get the apology of Aristides, like that's the first time you see people explaining their faith to people who don't believe it. And that's where you really can see how they, you know, how they uh they defer in a lot of their their opinions. And I can understand why. Because again, I know how my views have changed. We're all supposed to change like this. Now again, the the, the fu fundamentals are supposed to be the same. The fundamental, the gospel, who, who your relationship with God. Somebody either has a relationship with God or they don't. You know. Now again, people can fake it. And people can be deceived. <laughs> hey Wesley God bless you man I'm going to keep reading this um, am I sharing the right screen there was I still on the economy here uh, for where there is one God, we must believe, but unoriginated, impassable, immortal, doing all things as he wills, in the way that he wills, and when he wills. So what then will this Noatus, who knows nothing of the truth, dare to say to these things? And now, as Noatus has been confuted, let us turn to the exhibition of the truth itself, that we may establish the truth against which these mighty heresies have arisen, without much as being able to state anything to the purpose. So this is where he's getting into what he believes his view is. Okay. Um, there is, brethren, one God, the knowledge of whom we gain from the Holy Scriptures and from no other source. I found that to be a, uh, an interesting statement. <laughs> For just as a man, if he wishes... Because remember... The, you understand for this, I and mean, this is like a hundred years before the Council of Nicaea, right? <clears throat> like that that's what when I started reading this and these these declarations about the persons and stuff like that. I'm muting you, Wesley. Oh, you can unmute yourself if you want. Or I'll unmute you. I know if you were doing dishes or something. So we gain knowledge of God from holy scriptures and no other source. Just as a man, if he wishes to be skilled in the wisdom of this world, will find himself unable to get at anything uh, in any way other than mastering the dogmas of philosophers. So all of us who wish to practice in piety will be unable to learn its practice from any other quarter than the oracles of God. Whatever things then the holy scriptures declare, at these let us look. And whatsoever things they teach, let us learn. And as the Father wills our belief to be, let us believe. As the early Calvinist, and as he wills the Son to be glorified, let us glorify him. And as he wills the Holy Spirit to be bestowed, let us receive him. So I found this to be a really interesting statement. Because right here, we are we're looking at a direct demonstration of the economy of of the persons of the Trinity. Because you see the Father willing your belief and you know and being served by the Son, even, and the Son being glorified by us, where let us glorify him. And now him is always talking about God. God, God, God. Let's glorify him. And then he wills the Holy Spirit to be bestowed. Let us receive him. So the Holy Spirit is received. The Son is glorified as the Father wills. Now, again, they're always doing the will of the Father. But because the Father is the Father, then it's his will that everybody is glorifying. Again, even if all their wills are the same, their wills are going to be too for the sake of glorifying God. And they are not according to our own will, nor according to our own mind, nor yet as using violently those things which are given by God, but even as he has chosen to teach them, 
by the holy scriptures. So let us discern them. So, uh, right. so God subsisting alone and having nothing contemporaneous with himself determined to create the world and conceiving the world in mind and willing and uttering the word, he made it. Now, I guess first, last. Yes, there you, you go. Could, you could say, well, did he make the word? I don't think he's saying he made the word. No, but, but I mean, mind essentially is spirit. Well, I mean, see, once you start saying essentially, it, like that's where we're already. Then we're not. Then we're already talking blurry stuff. Okay. The mind is essentially a spirit, or the spirit. I mean, is is that the King James version? No, this is this is a writing by Hippolytus from the oh. year the year two thirty A.D. Oh, you're not going to learn anything. From that. <laughs> Well, he's writing Fables. against. He's writing against Fables. somebody. Fables. Fables. Well, this guy's quoting the Bible. Quite. Uh, although he's really quoting, because so, there's somebody else quoting other scripture to prove that, that uh, yeah, that the Jesus and the Father are the same person, and, and the Father and the Son. This is this guy's he argument. Is. This, but he is the, the Father, is, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I pray only to Jesus. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, would you put the taste of honey in all the mouths watching and making this show in this same minute, please, Jesus? Jesus, I pray to you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus, and no other. You guys are going to taste honey in your mouth in just a minute from the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Jesus. Well, I appreciate that. And yeah, if you're praying to Jesus, you're praying to God, for sure, because God, Jesus is, Jesus is God. Yeah, in 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 the Old Testament, whenever it says, you know, God made a pillar of fire or God appeared to Moses, it is Jesus every time. I, I think if we see him, I think the Father is the Father, the Son is the Son. I think if if this. If, if God is sending God, God, that's the Father sending the Son, just by definition of the Father and the, and the Son. When the Son is sent, the Father is sent. You understand when you die and get to heaven. Amen. So then <laughs> maybe, maybe. So this guy says, For us it is sufficient simply to know that there was nothing contemporaneous with God. Oh, wait, did I skip something? Uttered a word. He made it straight away. It appeared. He formed it formed his creation. This is God creating creation as this guy's as it had pleased him. For us, then, it is sufficient simply to know that there was nothing contemporaneous with God. Beside him, there was nothing. But he, while existing alone, yet existed in plurality. For he was neither without reason, nor wisdom, nor power, nor counsel, and all things were in him. And he was the all. When he willed and as he willed, he manifested his word. And there you go again. And the times determined by him. And by him, he made all things. So he, I mean, right here, you got to agree first, last, that he, re he refers to the word as a him. Because he says he, the father, manifested his word. So, so far we got the father and manifested the father's word. In the times determined by him, the Father. But then it says, and by him, he made all things. So that's by the Father, or I mean, sorry, by the Son, or by the Word, he made all things, right? Okay, yeah. Again, not necessarily the Son, but by him, the Word. Because the Word of God, as distinct from the Son of Man, um, even though the Son of Man would still be the prophetic <laughs> title for the Word of God, <laughs> when it comes down to okay. it. Yep. When he wills, he does, and when he thinks, he executes. When he speaks, so in this part, see, I think this is where he's getting into like the mystery of that economy of the Trinity. It's like when he wills, he does. Because, I mean, in the language, I don't know if there's any way to, to designate who is talking about whom. You know, when he does, he does. When he thinks, he executes. When he speaks, he manifests. I can only imagine what he's saying here is when 
the father does this, the son does that. Okay. But he could also be saying when God does this, God does that. I think that's where he's he, maybe he's getting kind of uh, you know clever with his language as people do. <laughs> when he fashions, he contrives in wisdom for all things that are made. He forms by reason and wisdom create. And this, but this is where his argument that the fact that that God even before he had create that creation was created, God had a plurality about him. Otherwise, there's no. And again, I think the Trinity explains this: the word and the breath is a simple simple way of looking at it. But everything we even know about words and breath are secondary to the actual truth of the the perfect word and the perfect breath. <laughs> so, you know, our, our descriptions are still going to be lacking, obviously, in our understanding. Because his breath and word were the first ones. Creating them in reason, arranging them in wisdom, he made them, and then as he pleased, he for he was God. And as the author and fellow counselor and framer of the things that are in formation. He begot the word. Now this is where he's, I think, I think he's talking about here where he's born of a virgin. Maybe he begot the word. And as he bears the word in himself and that too, as yet invisible to the world, which is created, he makes him visible and uttering the, the voice first and begetting him as light of light, he set him forth to the world as its Lord and his own mind. And whereas he was visible formerly to himself alone and invisible to the world which is made, he makes him visible in order that the world might see him in his manifestation and be capable of being saved." There's a whole lot in there. Because <laughs> at one point, though, where he says, formerly visible only to himself alone. I mean, I, I think we, we still absolutely have a pre-existent word here, which is eternal. Because he's, he's, when he starts talking about, oh, now he begets the word. Well, begetting is is where the word now is having something to do with something else that's creation so now there's creation aside from god before there's only god and the trinity the, the god that is the father is word and his spirit and so now there's creation and creation is by the word so now you have the word begotten amongst creation that's why he said is the first amongst creation that's not that the word is created but that the word who is the son, you know, well, again, I, I think he's the son. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, you know, I, I can, can think about the descriptions of the word of God as the son of God. Although, again, I think he's still the begotten. He's eternally begotten. So, I don't, and as he bears this word in himself, that too, and yet invisible to the world, which is created, he makes him visible and uttering the voice first, begetting him as light of light and set him forth to the world as its Lord and his own mind, whereas he was visible formerly to himself alone and invisible to the world which was made, he makes him visible in order that the world might see him in his manifestation and be capable of being saved. And thus there appeared another beside himself. And when I say another, I do not mean that there are two gods, but that it is only as light of light. Well, that's where the Bible differs. The Bible says Jesus is God. There is no other God beside him. Well, he wouldn't be another God beside him. He's, it's the, I mean, if the father, if the, if the father, if the son is at the right hand of the father, but that does not mean that there's another God beside him. He said, that's what he said. There's not two gods. I do not mean that there are two gods. But there's another, but there's only, but just like light of light or water from a fountain or ray from a sun. Now that can go very slippery, but, but there is one power, which is from all. And the father is the all, which from whom comes this power, the word, that's the word. <clears throat> and this is the mind. So this is where it gets weird for me, I think. And this is the mind, but I don't think he means like the brain, like I think we have to avoid putting our own 
thoughts into it. This is the mind which came forth into the world and was manifested as the Son of God. So there you go again, distinct from the Father. Now getting into our argument, first, last, for still there, because I'm only looking at this one. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> um, again, where the Spirit is here is another matter. All so things then are by him. Sorry. Do you remember um, as far back as August 25th in the year 2005? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I probably don't want to. Or November 5th, 2005, or February 22nd, 2006. I was in New York City uh, on a New Year's going into 2005, from 2004 to 2005. I was standing in a, right at the southern part of Central Park looking uh, southward down because they had everything blocked off. But, uh, Those were the first three appearances of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God, to all mankind, all people of all nations. And he spoke. And he said, tell the vision. That man, that olive skin, dark, some say black. I don't think he likes the word black concerning it. But that man in the Holy Spirit with the black hair and the white robe. He no. created you the heavens. Talking about to you? They, they he talk to you. is God. He created it all. Why? I, don't under, I don't get how come you're so, how, how it's so difficult for you to understand and believe that. That was God. That is God. Well, no, just like you Creator just said. Creator of the heavens and the universe. Just like you just said, we have the Bible. That's all we need. That's what we, how we know. The Bible doesn't talk anything about a black man like that. So All of skin. <laughs> I'll continue. Well, uh, I, I thank you. I, I don't want to listen. I, I, I like listening to you, but I don't have anything to do with what you're reading there to me it's a fable and so i'm going to excuse myself and, and thank you for letting me speak no no problem I, I saw jesus on august 25th in the year 2005 a child lifted their hands and said it is he and there was jesus the creator of the heavens and the infinite universe have a good day praise the lord <clears throat> Do you know where you were? Yes. All things. Uh, forward, forward, right there. Uh, all things then are by him, and he alone is of the Father. I can see where you could go this with like, okay, if he alone is of the Father, where's the Spirit? Who then uh, juices? Hmm? No, no, no. Go ahead. Sorry. Who then adduces a multitude of gods? Oh, oh. This is a question. Who then adduces a multitude of gods brought in, time after time? For all are shut up, however unwillingly, to admit this fact: that all that the all runs up into one. If then all things run up into one, even according to Valentinus and Marcion and Serinthus and all their fooleries, they are reduced, however, unwillingly to this position that they must acknowledge that the one is the cause of all things. Thus then these two, though they wish it not, because uh, remember these guys, they have these varying principles. They have various underlying principles that are beyond the one uh, thus then, these two, though they wish it not, fall in with the truth and admit that one God made all things according to his pleasure. So it's like they all, if they're going to think that anything came from anything, he's basically given the, you know, the precept. <laughs> thus then, these two, though they wish it not, fall in with the truth and admit that the one God made all things according to his pleasure. And he gave the law and the prophets, and in giving them, he made them speak by the Holy Ghost in order that being gifted with the inspiration of the Father's power, they might declare the Father's counsel and will. It's 
crazy during this time. So this is like the two thirties. Like Christianity was was not being <laughs> was was not well liked. <laughs> So it's not like this was like this guy was like writing in like a well I don't know I think it it might have been early enough still where like Christians were so, well I don't know I don't want to sit there and speak um, acting then in these the prophets the word spoke of himself for already he became his own herald and showed that the word would be manifest among men. And for this reason, he cried thus, I am made manifest to them that sought me not. So this is this is a pretty common argument in that, again, just like I think I've already probably said it like 20 times, as far as like God made manifest would be the, the word. Because he's the form of the invisible God. And again, form of the invisible God isn't necessarily the same, but yet may be with the spirit of the invisible God. And he who is that is made manifest, but the word of the father whom the father sent and in whom he showed to men, the power proceeding from him. Thus then was the word made manifest, even as the blessed John says, for he sums up all things that were said by the prophets and shows that this is the word by whom all things were made. For he speaks to this effect in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was the word was with God, and the word was God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. And beneath he says, The word was made by the world was made by him, and the world knew him not, and he came not into his own unto his own, and his own received him not. If then said he, The world was made by him. According to the word of the prophet, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Then this is the word that was also made manifest, that we also, that, that we accordingly see the word incarnate, that we know the Father by him, and we believe in the Son, and we worship the Holy Spirit. So he literally says we worship the Holy Spirit. But, I mean, he's putting them all together as, as one God. Accordingly, we see the word incarnate. We know the Father by him, believe in the Son. And it's also in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Son. And we worship the Holy Spirit. Let us then look at the testimony of Scripture with respect to the announcement of the future manifestation of the word. So this is getting into the, beyond the... Because, again, they don't often go into the Trinity much. I mean, not the Trinity, the uh, the Holy Spirit. There, there are there are individual works that exist that I've actually I've wanted to do in the past. <laughs> hey, you didn't you didn't taste it. <laughs> you didn't taste the sweet honey. Uh, Jeremiah says, who has stood in the council of the Lord and has perceived his word? But the word of God alone is visible, while the word of man is audible. That's interesting. <laughs> word of God being visible. The word of man is audible. Yeah. When, he's, when he speaks of seeing the word, I must believe that this visible word has been sent. And there was none other sent but the word, and that he was sent, Peter testifies, when he says that a centurion Cornelius, God sent his word unto the children of Israel by preaching of Jesus Christ. This is the God who is Lord of all. Is that what he says? What is that? Uh, hold up. That will be Acts... I don't like the way this thing. I'm going to look up that actual verse from Acts 10, 30. 
Because that, that doesn't sound like a standard issue translation that I'm aware of. Well, that could just be remembering wrong. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't sound recognizable. I wonder what this guy would have been using around two thirty. The word of which God, the word which God sent unto the children of Israel. So this, I'm just going to use the King James. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. So that's interesting because if this says, if this, let me go to the rest of the, let me share this tab. That would, I wonder if that means that the Bible that he was using translated this as God. If he says, if he's quoting this as saying he is God of all. Hey, what's up, Dan? Hey, what's up, Kelby? Can you hear me? Yes. Nice. So, Paul? Oh, there's no Paul here. Paul rolled out. Uh, who's that? I can't see. Is that first and last? I'm sorry. Yeah, hey, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Pretty good. Long time since I talked to first and last. Whew. Is this this one guy? No, much better looking. Much better. <laughs> No, I talked to you a long, long time ago, way back when on Praise's channel, when Praise was like a oneness, crazy, uh, not that he's more sane now, but he was like a oneness Pentecostal something or another. I, I doubt you remember, but I remember everything. It's like a curse. So how y'all doing tonight? Good? Hanging in there? Well... Pretty good. I mean, Kelvy's going through this letter here, which I thought was pretty good, but <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but uh, um, yeah. Continue. I I just I really I didn't see what you were doing, Kelvy. I just I kind of fell asleep and I woke up and I said, "Ah, let me join." <laughs> so. Oh, is this Dan Straight? Yeah. Hey, how's yeah. it going? How's Dan it going? is Dan is Bitsky. That's who it is. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I've ever actually spoken to you. Yeah, Except yeah. for people were like, I mean, I'm sure I'm, if, I don't know, I'm sure I've seen you. I, mean, I, know, I, I know I definitely know you in chat. I don't know if I ever actually like spoke to you. Here I am in the flesh. <laughs> digital. In the digital Dig flesh. Digitalized. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, I mean, so this guy, I'm called, reading this letter from, well, it's not really a letter. It's a It's a writing against somebody. But he's quoting, it's from the year 230 AD. So it's like 100 years before Christianity got legalized. Uh, but he's quoting. Oh, wait, there's where the distinction is. He's quoting this line from Acts. This is the God who is Lord of all. Nice. He says, God sent his word unto the children of Israel by preaching of Jesus Christ. This is the God who is Lord of all. Amen. This. But this just says, the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Yeah. But are you trying to prove, like, the, the deity of Christ or something? No, I'm just looking at the translation because this... Well, <clears throat> Obviously, this is written in like 2:30. So, I, you know, whatever Bible he was—I mean, they, they didn't have books back then, so they—they they would have been just working off scrolls still. So it's just yeah. interesting. There, like, I don't know if he's just misquoting it, or if he's—that's what his actual, if his translation of a, uh, of Acts said, in his letter, or in his writing. So, Kelby, let me ask you if you agree or disagree. Oh shoot, because he says this is God of of. So it's like that's not in the actual like the King James version. So I don't know if I went and looked at other translations, would that say this is the God? Well, because in all the times I've ever you know argued that Jesus is God, I would have I would have I would have known about this verse, right? If it actually said that, <laughs> yeah, probably, probably an insert or something like that. Well, what I want, I mean, because if you look at the next sentence in this letter, <clears throat> if then the look, word is sent by Jesus Christ, 
Okay, yeah, because in that Acts 10, what you were looking at, essentially what he's saying is God sent his word through Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is speaking his word, right? If then the word is sent by Jesus Christ, the will of the Father is Jesus Christ. So, I mean, do you agree or disagree that essentially God's word is coming through Christ? Kind of. I kind of agree with that. He's speaking the word. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't discount him from being a person, though. As long as, but if we keep in mind that he is a person, then yes, Jesus Christ is is you is so if we have what you're talking about is the dichotomy between the son of man and the word of god because there's there's a there's um that's where if you, if you ever look into that again like the stuff with the nestorianism versus eutychianism because there's there's entire groups of christianity that that once they start going off on if jesus jesus the the incarnate jesus is like a separate person than the pre-incarnate Jesus. Like that's its own thing. And then there's ones that say that the Jesus who is incarnate is actually just like, I think is more like your view, which is the Eutychianism, which is like that. He's just one sort of incarnate spirit. He's not, but where I would diverge from that is to say that, well, he's not an incarnate spirit. He is because you're interested because you're like, well, then aren't we all incarnate spirits? What the difference there is. No, I don't think our natural state, is spirits without a physical body. I used to believe that. But now I think that our nat- because our natural state seems to be a spirit with a body. So us without a, a physical body is not us in any kind of like... It's lacking. Right? State. It's lacking, right? It's lacking something. Like we're supposed to be embodied. Otherwise we're lacking, right? Yeah, we're supposed to have form and, and like image like that. And yeah, our dead body is not our image. <laughs> where, where I part from that is where, like, like, like something like, like, uh, Jamie's kind of belief, like a physicalism or whatever it's called. I part from that, like, like we are our body, like, like our body is our spirit, kind of. I don't know. It's like materialism or something. Like, I feel like I, I definitely believe, like, we have a separate thing called a spirit. You know, like a. I, I, you know, like I part from that idea, like, like we live, like death is, it, I think death is separation from body and spirit, right? That's death, okay? And you could call the second death is when, if God destroys your spirit, I guess. But uh, I think God gives our spirit a new body, right? Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything like rest. So yeah, like the 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 changeover. There's like you said, like a new, like whatever that that change is. I just don't think we're defined by our physical form. You know what I mean? Like that, that doesn't define who we are, like our personality, our will, or who, what we like, who we are. That's our spirit. I don't know. That's the way I see it. Like God, is, God that. is spirit. God, God, God is. God doesn't need a body, right? I mean, I, I know it's God, but it's just like God is spirit and God is personal. So persons can... Well, this thing that I'm body. reading, you ever hear people say that the Trinity didn't come around until the Council of Nicaea? Yeah, Muslims, yeah, sure. Well, this, this what I'm reading, is from a uh, hundred years before that. Yeah, I mean, I... I you know, I, I maybe the word Trinity wasn't used or something like that. But I mean, well, no, he, he uses the word Trinity. <laughs> he even does uses he doesn't really. Trinity. And he talks about persons yeah. and he talks about the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> everything's awesome. there. That's, that's awesome. He's not, he's not teaching it for the sake of it. Teaching this is the Trinity, because I mean, in, in my view and probably in your view, too, like the Trinity, as far as they understood it, they didn't need to teach it because they already, they already sort of took it as granite that Jesus is, is divine. Like to go into the nitty gritty of how he's not the father, but he's God and how he's the word. That was a whole, I don't think, I think that was only for kind of the, the, you know, the the people who had the luck to sit around and and, and debate about it. Exactly. Exactly. It's like for debate purposes and stuff. I I agree with you, man. I don't think you like, uh, to me, I don't even bother. I don't, I, I try not to even argue stuff like that because it's, 
it's like it's God number one, and it's going to be over my head anyway. And I will get lost eventually if someone's really smart at like asking me a million questions. I'm sure I will mess up. So I mean, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and I just, like. We can see the reason that they did come to you know to write all this stuff and have all these councils and all this kind of stuff. What was because again, if there wasn't any heretics coming and and spreading all the false ideas, then yeah, it, it would be then we. Oh yeah, well, they, they wouldn't need all these creeds. They wouldn't need yeah. to have these councils and all this kind of stuff. But it's but, just like it's but, it's inevitable. The cracks are going to start forming. Yeah, so the, the birds are going to roost. Yeah, the trees. Well, thank God for for smarter people than me. You know, <laughs> yeah. that people sit around and think about all this stuff and work out all the details and all the stuff like that. I mean, to me, it's kind of it, it's it's. I don't try to overcomplicate it. You know, it's like I don't know. It's just God revealed Himself as Father, Son, and Spirit. That's it. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't try to figure it all out. It's not like a. I figure when I'm dead, I'll, I'll learn. You know, and I don't try to like push the details. You know, but like I will respond. Is is the Spirit a person? Yes. Yes, the Spirit's a person. Is the Son a person? Yes, it's a Spirit. You know, and the Father's a person. It's you know, and I just get like these people. They come at you with like. Well, they talk about predicates and, and, and you know what I mean? They just get like hardcore philosophy on me. It's like, how do you count? And, you know, I'm like, stop it, man. Stop. <laughs> just stop now. Come on. They're, they're... But first and last, I think, has some issues with this stuff too, right? Am I well, wrong? no, you know, I don't have any issues. It's just about trying to understand it. And this letter has really been helpful. Yeah, I, I remember back in the day, first and last, and I'm not, I'm not trying to misrepresent you or, or, you know, just saying that you believe this now. I just remember back in the day, you always used to say something like, we have a, a, a body and a spirit, and a, a, how did you used to say it? Uh, you used well, to... I, I don't know, but that sounds pretty much correct. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm just saying you used to say it just like that, like a... You you basically made God like a man, like you modeled man after. I don't want to say you modeled God after man, but uh. well, I, that's what I said earlier. I mean, that's what a person is made of. I mean, if you look at Genesis two seven, you got the breath of life, which is the spirit, and you have the dust of the earth, which is the flesh. So, yep, but God became embodied, right? You you believe that, obviously, right? Like Jesus, yes. Like the Spirit man God Jesus Christ Jesus was was born. He he went into time, right? So before that, what was Jesus? Who, like who was the Son? He, the Spirit of God. And who was the Holy Spirit? Well, the, it's the same. The Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit, I would say, are the same thing. Yeah, see, that's where it gets a little weird. I don't like that. That to me, that's where it's confusing because I would say that. The Holy Spirit is a separate person from the Son, and a separate person from the Father. But always, yeah. always. Yeah. So that's where I would say, I think that that the way you say it, it's a little cause might cause confusion because if you read Scripture, you see you know different examples or different instances where the Spirit speaks and the Son speaks and the Father. Wait a minute. Speaks. The Spirit it? speaks. Yes. The spirit yes. speaks. Yes. So he is he is what? The word? Is he the word? Here, here, did 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 did, did Jesus send no, the spirit? The Father did speaks. Jesus, did Jesus send the spirit? The Father speaks, yeah. The spirit of God speaks. Yeah, but right. if you you who speak are not identical to the word that you speak, there's a spoken and then there's the word that is spoken. There's a distinction. That's the plurality. And then there's also the breath through which that word is spoken through. So now there's the third of the underlying principles of the Father, you know, the spoken, the, the, the word, and the Father who speaks, the word that is spoken, and the breath through which it is it's, it's, yeah. it's immediate through which it's spoken through. Like, yeah. I think it, it might be a mistake to tur like to make God into parts. Like, you know, it's like, it's like the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, I just, are God, just or is he God, you know? That's what but I if think. God is breathing on somebody. For as a you know as a, some kind of description, you know, God gives breath. But just like I was saying earlier, like God giving breath to something, like 
God giving life, like that's different than God giving form to it. And we know Jesus Christ, who is the word, uh, formed. Because, I mean, well, see, see, right here, this is where I think first, last, you can't agree with me. Because I was about to say, and if I'm wrong, that Jesus Christ formed all things. But I don't think you, that, but you can't, if I can't say that around you, because you would have to disagree with me. Well, it's just that the not you wouldn't say the word the words Jesus Christ because he wasn't born yet. I mean, he's that's the Savior anointed. He, uh, you, he would say the Son, the Son, the Son, the Eternal Son. How about that? The Eternal Son of God for, formed all things. But if Again, he's, I, I don't think you can say the word Son until he's born. Uh, Even so, though it, so you it think is the, the Son same. began to exist, so you don't believe the Son is eternal. Okay, that that's. That, that's going to be a problem. No, the sun is eternal. It's just that you wouldn't use the word sun. You would just say <clears throat> the spirit of God. So this is where this, this this writing here is interesting because it's one of this guy kind of offhandedly mentions is that in his view, the second person of the Trinity, because he clearly has the three persons, um, like isn't rightly or perfectly called the sun yet. Now I'm sure this, there's some name for this and it's called some heresy. I, I, I mean, it's not, it, it, I think it's called, uh, I can't remember it now, but any, I think I looked it up before, but um, I can't keep up with those names either. <laughs> yeah. it's But, but that the sun didn't, uh, yeah, that he wasn't the sun until he was actually born of Mary. Um, really? Yeah. And that before that he was the word of God. Cause, and cause that's okay. what, one of the things that this guy is that there is the distinction between the the two two different natures, not persons, because we're not Nestorian. Right? It's like, but um, but but that the Word of God and then the Son of Man, and then prophetically he's called the Son of Man, and then he's not the Son. Now my argument though is that no, if there's if there's any distinction between the Father and any and the Word, then the Word is the Son of that who speaks so the word is the sun so yeah i, I can't see the word is not being the sun despite what what hippolytus here says <laughs> yeah i mean i'm gonna agree with what you just said there like the sun is the word of god because he's begotten he's eternally begotten yeah and eternally begotten, just, begotten whatever i mean that's a hard thing to even understand too but he's just <laughs> always been so yeah that's why i'm not gonna be like oh hippolytus is some heretic you know like i mean because they work out yeah i mean i like you, you know yeah I mean, I agree with you there too. Like, I mean, God, God judges, right? Like, uh, too much. Uh, what is it? Uh, much is given, much is expected, right? So, like, you know, these guys are working these things out. You know, like it's not like a. That's why it's fascinating to to watch it, and I mean, we have the luxury of watching it play out. And again, we, as long as we don't put too much credence into it, you know, like. Uh, you know, Wesley Curry was on earlier. You know, he justifiably was like, "I don't, I don't buy any of that. I don't believe any of this. This is all fiction. This isn't the Bible." You know, and I was like, "That's a fair cop." You know, it's... wait, the, the 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 schizophrenic old guy. <laughs> well, I mean, he still has, he's had a valid point. Uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I, it's rare that I see him like with all his stuff together. <laughs> honestly, I mean, I, I feel for the guy, but he's well, like, I like to think our prayers. Well, I mean, he's not going to get magically, you know, transformed. But yeah. I think that, uh, well, again, if he, he, I'm sure he's not going to be busting his junk out or anything. So, I oh, right. yeah, I know what's his name that. actually helped him a lot. Actually, uh, I forget his name. Uh, what's his Sorry. name? <laughs> he helped him a lot, though. He actually raised money for him and got him another apartment and all kinds of stuff. That guy. Oh, what was his name? I can't believe he hasn't been on. He hasn't been on for such a long time. Uh, what's his? P Mars, what's that? Not P Mars. The P Mars needs help too. Believe me. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't remember his name. But anyway, plausible problem. Yes, LPP. Yeah. Did he do that? That's LPP did a lot to help that guy. He was thank God. He praised up. <laughs> That's where I first seen that guy, and I'm like, whoa. You know, he started, he's like, I seen, I seen Jesus Christ on a park bench in New York. And like, you know, I'm like, whoa, whoa. But anyway, LPP did a lot to help that guy. So I'm glad to know that he's doing all right. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's great. But yeah, I, like I said, I, well, you know, like what about the scriptures? Uh, 
first and last, where it's like uh, with the glory I shared with the Father before the world was. Like, what about that? Like, what do you do with that? Well, I'm, I'm just to, to give an answer, I can't really answer that one right now. Well, okay. yeah, that's the Let me just say, like, the, he was with the Spirit. Because he said you think the Spirit came and was born in flesh. So... This is just the spirit saying, hey, I was with you as the spirit. I, I think it has something to do with, like we were saying, the flesh body essentially goes in spiritually to the throne. So he's saying, I'm coming back to you, and this flesh body is now going to have that same glory that we, that you. <laughs> but do, you do you understand now how, because even if I, if I grant this, that to you, which I don't. <laughs> Um, but if, if that was the case, that now you have this son, I don't see how you're getting around that now you have a new creature being generated. Because now, because even if you say, well, there's the spirit, because if you acknowledge that whoever that was speaking about being before the father, before all creation, um, I don't know who this is. Uh, so... Uh, I don't know. We should have to, I should figure out a way to 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 screen people because uh, I apologize, uh, Bible teacher. Uh, you seem to have a good name, but uh, Bible teacher. I recognize that name, but I can't. I can't remember exactly who that I, is. Do I know them in the chat? I mean, I don't know. They, they, it, to me, it's like either they're either okay or totally not okay. <laughs> so I don't know who they are. <laughs> I don't. I just recognize the name. Yeah, I mean, you, you can. You'll forgive me, but uh, I mean, if, I mean, unless you can like. I don't think there's someone who's who's gonna like, like uh. Well, I assume they can hear hear us, and and so if, if I mean, can you chat or something? Like, do I know you? Are they trying to join or something? Yeah, they're they're backstage. What is what is a mantle? Ask him that. What is a mantle? What does hypostasis mean? Oh yeah, then you would have been. Like, <laughs> Put in the chat what hypostasis means. Uh, maybe I'm thinking an end times teacher, and that guy's just kind of annoying. But I mean, if I was somebody that wanted to to get into a stream and like you know, I don't know. I'm not sure who that is. But... bomb them. What would I? What what name would I use to to get myself on there? And Bible <laughs> like show him, just tell him to show his face. Can he, can he show his face backstage and all that stuff? Well, they 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 can get, they have stuff for that too. That's the uh, thing. I don't know. I mean, I'm. I mean, it's sad that you even have to worry about something like that, ain't it? It's so stupid. It's so stupid. It's ridiculous. Uh, how's Paul doing anyway? Well, it's like, why not just chat? How's Paul doing, Kelby? Um, he is improving. Um, his body is is you know a bit wrecked from the uh, from the treatment that very much cured him. So the the stuff they gave to cure him, I mean, it's like. Yeah, it's like drinking Drano. You know, it'll clean you out, but yeah, leave you hollow inside. Yeah, it's like shoot up some clear Clorox and I'll clean you right out, kill everything. All right. Well, Thanks, uh, thank improve. God. Hopefully, he'll get better. I love Paul. He's just a nice guy. Yeah. Amen. I mean, you could definitely see the heart of God in that guy, man. No doubt. Yeah. You know, I seen like uh, the other. I had, I had was like, I think when I was falling asleep yesterday or today, I, I was, listening, I had praise and stream going or something, and he, he started bashing Paul. I'm like, you're gonna bash Paul at all people? Are you kidding me, man? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Stop it, man! Just stop it. What is wrong with you people, dude? This guy's got a heart of gold. He's sitting here. Like helping all like drug addicts, and he and he's in the hospital, like preaching the word of God to all these people, and you're gonna get down on this dude. What is wrong with you people? Like, how can't have any, uh, can't have any, any makes, dissent. Makes me can't, sick. Who it is. No dissent. You have to fall in line. It makes or, me kind of sick to my stomach. I, I, I really it disgusts me a little bit. It's like, dude, what are you, what, what, like, what are you guys doing? What you're seeing there, in my opinion. Do you, do you believe that there are spirits that that travel through throughout people? I don't like mean demon possession. Not, not necessarily. Or maybe I do. I don't know. Attitudes, you mean? 
like like maybe that is maybe that is what I mean because the the results are the same. Um, I, like like this like a Jezebel spirit that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't you know, know what I mean when people talk like that, like like. Like, like basically, I could get into person. what I think I mean, but I don't, I don't want to give the wrong idea, so I usually keep silent on my, my, my more sort of. I, I do believe in demons, and I do believe, I do believe in like uh, people. Uh, I, I mean, I believe in a lot of. Sp I believe there's a spirit world. I believe, but whatever the the the, the, the cause the, of it. I, I hate name dropping on these things, but whatever the the Sam Shamoon thing. Of like, oh look at these dogs barking in chat. Oh yeah. look, at these like, and the fact that he's was recently on there, I never thought about like, that. Doing all this stuff and going throughout all of the, and you know, basically, and again, I, I get, it. I get the, I, I'm, I try to stay away from the attitude of having this, and then so he goes on there, and now, and then oh. last thing you see Frey's talking about, oh look at these, he says he's using the same words. In the same attitude. So yeah. all it is, it's the same spirit. That's what I mean. That's all. I mean. I, no, yeah, I, no. If you just say it like that way, then yeah, I agree. With and you. yes, I don't want to be like, oh, there's some demon it's jumping the same, around. It's, but, it's the same attitude. The, 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 but the I same, do think that there's something to that as well. But I, I, again, I believe that too. There's no That's sense in. Talking. We don't have to call it a demon. We don't have to turn it into a science or something. But it's right. just that same. It's that same attitude. That same. You know what I mean? The same. Attitude. Yeah, I mean, that's whatever it is, spirit. fasting same and spirit. prayer, same the spirit. Holy Spirit, God will, you know, God can, God conquers all. Like God can take care of anything, whatever, you know, whatever we want to claim it is. Yeah, where's the love in that? Though? Like, where's <clears> the <throat> passion? Where's the, where's the? I don't know. I just, I don't. Like, I, you know, you know, Sam called me a dog, and I think he blocked me. And you know why though? Because I said, you know why? This is why he blocked me because I said, Sam. You know, it, it's a shame. Like I remember you and um, uh, what's it, uh, and David Wood and, and Anthony were, were were all seemed to be like close friends, and you'd all do streams together. And it's a shame to see you guys all fighting with each other. Uh, you know, it'd be nice if you guys could reconcile. That's it. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah you dog. You well, he's one of the first get off my channel. <laughs> like I'm like okay. His dude. channel. Honestly, it was like it was probably like him and like Leighton Flowers. Honestly, I if I think back at it. to originally when I first would start actually chatting on these chats it was back in like probably 2019, like right, like it was before, right before COVID, or right like around like, and uh, and yeah, his was one of the first ones though that I noticed like there's no like the free chatting thing wasn't really a. You didn't really do that. It was like, oh, if I'm talking, like, cause I remember when he would yell at me, "Oh, Kelvy, Kelvy, I love you, brother, but uh, yeah. you gotta <laughs> shut up and, and stop chatting while I'm while I'm preaching here." You know, it's like take your Bible out, right? And then it'll force you to go to like five verses, and then call you a heretic, and like they kick you off the stream. It's like, what the heck was that? Man? What are you doing? It, it, well, it's very it's egotistical, beautiful. very prideful, like just just silly. Cool. Yeah, my reaction, the, the more vocal you are with certain things, because uh, what finally got me kicked off of there was was actually uh, eschatology, which I know he doesn't go into much, but but it's funny that it was that, because everything else was, uh, well, because he was talking about the, I think, uh, Israel and got into like replacement stuff. It was years ago when I finally uh, got, got booted from there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, he's just, I don't know, just the whole, I don't, I don't whatever. I mean, just whatever. He's like, I, I agree with you that I don't, you know, and not not for nothing. Also on that, on praises channel, like I never heard like, like you could say one thing and it's like, oh wait a minute, you effing piece of s and like what the heck is going to? Are you serious right now? Like you're just well, this cursing, is uh... cursing people out. Like 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 where are we? Like, are, are we? Are we in the subway right now? And like, like, what is going on right now? Like, people are watching this. Aren't you embarrassed a little bit? Like, come on, man. You know, I, I don't know. But I guess when you don't use your real name, I guess you don't really care, right? Yeah, that's usually how it works. <laughs> yeah, I always say they should just make everyone use their real name. I, I don't have a problem with it. I used to use my real name all the time. I just short. I, I just I put in straight. No short, shortened. I don't really care to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I don't really agree know. with that. There's I too, don't. Many, too many things around that. This is a professing preterist. 
right? I don't know if he's still there. He was. Well, in... I'm here. Uh, this guy is. Not, he's not going to porn bomb your thing. I'm pretty sure. I no. I disagree with this guy from what I say, but but he's a decent person. <laughs> I don't think he's crazy like that. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. W- 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 welcome. Hello. How yeah, I just I have to hover my mouse over the thing because so I was like, should I boot this? Because I, I honestly was just like, all right, it's, this is probably some hacker trying to figure out, or maybe hoping I accidentally join, uh, or some porn bomber hoping I accidentally click him in. So maybe I should boot him from the studio. And then I saw what your name actually was, and I was like, oh, it's this guy. So, uh, yeah, he, welcome. He goes into Fraser's stream. I think I've seen him. You know. Yeah, yeah, I go in there. Yeah, we're, we're going through. Uh, this this uh this writing from two thirty A.D. Hippolytus, you said, Kelvin. Yeah, Hippolytus of, of Rome. Although I don't think he was originally from Rome. It's, he, it's pretty cool. He uses the word Trinity. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, and like he he, it, I, I would be interested because I don't know what language this originally was. I'm guessing it was originally in Greek. But because he uses the word economy, it seems a lot. Now, the translator keeps putting disposition. So I, this is where I'm kind of like wondering what the deal is with that. Although he uses economy more than disposition here is at it. Huh. So um, I'm not sure about that. Give us an account of this economy disposition. But there are other parts where he straight up just says, just like here where he says, you know, we're not talking about two gods. We're talking about the father and the son, you know, and he's like, Oh, the third person or the third economy. That is to say the, the grace of the Holy ghost. So uh-huh. see, <laughs> you know, you know who, who gives good teachings about like, like a, he even goes back to like a Judaism, like second temple Judaism, like a Anthony, Anthony Rogers, uh, he, yeah. he he digs up some the targums or something like that, like ancient Jewish writings, and I, I mean uh, it's pretty well, shocking. I, like they go through. I want to and... find Philo because I'm I know a lot of his stuff is still around, and I want to actually because I know there's supposedly teaching specifically of his about the personification of the word, or the the, the yeah the word of God. Um, I, I want to just find that and read it, and you know make a book of, audio book of it. He had different. They had names for it, though. They had, uh, okay, they had the uh, the father, obviously, right? And then they had, uh, what did he call the spirit? They had a different name. Uh, I forget the 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 name they used. Oh, what was it? First and last, you know, because he was on, and, and Anthony told him. I just can't remember. Oh my um, god! Uh, I didn't follow the question. That's not a question. It was a uh, you. you the, yeah, the spirit they had, they had, they. El Shaddai. Uh, no, no, the but. Uh, what was it? The, the Rima, the uh, the, the Numa. Well, that's that's the Greek. N- Numa, maybe the Numa, something like that. Yeah, that, that would be Greek though. That wouldn't be Hebrew. Is, is it? It was something like they. It was just something different. Uh, well, Every Ruach is spirit. The Ruach, also. the Ruach. Or something like that. I'm just thinking of all the different. There's a couple of different words for spirit. They just uh, had one for breath. Um, they just had different terminology, but they definitely referred to God in this different personalities, right? Like different persons. And I agree is, with that. That's what I'd say. Like this letter here, it's like he's talking about the Trinity, like. Everybody already knows what he's talking about. Like he's it's, it's the purpose of this the writing isn't to, to talk about this is what the Trinity is, but he's he's except for in in opposition to what this other guy is teaching that that the father and the son are the same are you know the same person. And so he's kind of like this is where it's like you know, I think they, they without even trying without without the Trinity being articulated as the Trinity. They are, they just took for granted the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were divine. Now again, not everybody didn't know about hypostasis and persons yeah. and all that kind of stuff. They just knew the Spirit was God, or the Holy Spirit was the Holy Spirit. You know, however, it, you know, most people didn't. Yeah. Well, if, if they were followers of Christ, right? I mean, if they were following around Christ, 
and they were listening to him teach and he's praying to the father and then they see that he's divine right he's the son and he's talking about sending the spirit like i mean to me it's just you're gonna make those connections anyway right like i don't know it just seems like if scripture is true which it is you know and the teachings of christ are in scripture it just follows that they would have that knowledge in their head already you know like from following Christ and his teachings, you know, like, and I agree, like, it, like, like more, like the Old Testament, it's, it's more, uh, it's, unless you, unless you really study it, it's less clear. I, I would say that, right? Yeah, and the, I mean, and the fact that this is a hundred years before, and a hundred years, I mean, I mean, a hundred years before Nicaea, and yet we. I mean, he's he's using. I didn't. I didn't. Like, I knew the Trinity was there because we have Tertullian, but and I don't know how close this guy is to Tertullian. Um, as far as like, I got, I knew Tertullian is is way before this guy, um, by like a generation, I believe. So you know, it's not a big deal. It's for that big of a deal. But I didn't. I didn't even know this existed. As far as like this earliest attestation to to the Trinity, where he actually does use the word. Again, I mean, he probably he either got the word from Tertullian, you could argue, or again, I mean, the word Trinity is just a, it's just the word unto itself, and he's he's describing these three, you know, the third economy of the of of the power of God, who is the Holy Spirit, and he's like, oh, you know, the Father indeed is one, but there are two persons, but they are two persons because there is also the Son, and then there is the third, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I mean, I don't like I, I you know I don't get the people that fight fight this idea either. I just don't get it. like why why fight it? Like it just seems like it's not like a it just came out of like like the Council of Nicaea by some pagan like that that, that kind of nonsense. It's just okay. Well, I, I kind of will, I will fight it, and I just I've been reading this fourteen and it's really good. But Kelvy, I gotta I gotta ask you your opinion on this because if you go back a little bit. to 14 um well i mean you were doing good as reading it but it'll say here well i don't know where you want to start but well i got to where oh hang on you got to go back hey, can you tell me real quick what you're fighting is that okay thing? hang on in the beginning was the word and the word was god and the and the word was was god was with god and, and is god and then if the word was with god and also, and also, God, uh, what follows? Would we say that one speaks of two gods? No. Wait, wait. You said I also shall God? indeed. I, hang on. I sh I shall not indeed speak of two gods, but of one, of two persons, not three, two, of two persons. Mm -hmm. However, and a third economy, the grace of the Holy Ghost, and that's kind of what what I was saying is. Yeah, you have the Father and the Son, and then the, the Spirit is. And he also home. refers to the the other ones as also as the economy. They're all the 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 whole can the, the whole meaning okay, of economy is, is that they're all in a this relationship. So he's like, but then there because later on he says there are two persons because there is also the Son, and then there is the third. But he keeps saying two persons. He says it twice. Two persons. Yeah, but he's he's, he's describing that that John the line the, the scripture of John. Like I don't to me. It's about the Father and the Son, right there. Where he's yeah, like, yeah, here's the clear. Father and the Son. These are two persons. Yeah, that's okay. clear. And then there's the denial. third, the Holy Spirit, which is there. <laughs> okay, okay, no, that's that's fair enough. But I, I, th that part, well, I see what you're I'm, saying. He's not, uh, you know, we don't have a clear, the clearest cut where he literally says the Holy Spirit is a person. I get you. But this part I, I saying here's the Father and the Son. He's like, he's like this. He's like this verse is talking about the Father and the Son. He's like, and those are two persons. And he's like, but uh, and then there's this third economy, the yeah. grace of the Holy Spirit. For the Father indeed is one. And there are two persons, but there's also the Son. And then there is the third, the Holy Spirit. Jesus Father, refers to the Spirit as a he. He goes on to talk about their their economy. The economy is like I said, the, the relationship, like what they're actually 
why they're not necessarily interchangeable. Yeah, I think that that's a, that's a word to describe like their unity or something. I, I I'd have to study that though. I'm not sure what he means by that exactly. This part after that, the Father decrees, the Word executes, and the Son is manifested. I think that's really telling. I'll have to go back and look at that. From the Father and through whom the Father is believed, because there's a part later where he says the Holy Spirit. There he goes, gives understanding. Because because yeah. the Father decrees, the Word executes, the Son is manifested, through whom the Father is believed. The economy of harmony is always led back, or is led back to one God. For God is one. It is the Father who commands, yeah. the Son who obeys, and the Holy Spirit who gives understanding. Yeah, that's beautifully said, actually. Yeah, that's really good. And that's that's three persons. Like they right here, he's quoting uh, what is this Ephesians or uh, the Father who is above all, and he's just adding the Son who is through all and the Holy Spirit who is in all. And we kind of otherwise think of one God, but believing in truth in Father and Son and Holy Spirit. For the Jews glorified or glorified in the Father, but gave him not thanks, for they did not recognize the Son. And he says the disciples recognized the Son, but not in the Holy Ghost. See, this is where it's not just like, because the way that when the Holy Ghost is being described, again, he's, he's not, it's not like being described within the same role or function. As if, he's just, as if he's just like he's another Son or another Jesus doing something. The Holy Spirit, that's why he's always like, you know, doing stuff in the sun or with this, but then the Holy Ghost, it's always like it's described with another sort of verbiage, like, oh, in the spirit or, or with the spirit, whereabout it's always like in the name of the sun. You know, there's, there's usually a distinction in the verb used with these two persons, wherefore they also denied him. So he's saying that when the apostles, because they did not yet have the Holy Spirit, they denied the son, the, the father's word, therefore, knowing the economy and the will of the Father, to wit, the Father seeks to be worshipped in no other way than this, gave this charge to the disciples after he rose from the dead, go teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And by this he showed that whosoever omitted any one of these failed in glorifying God perfectly. For it is through this trinity that the Father is glorified. And the Father willed, the Son did, the Spirit manifested. The whole scripture then proclaimed this truth. Man, that's beautiful, man. Ah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, what are you fighting against? The, uh, I'm not enough? fighting. I'm, we're just. I'm studying. <laughs> no, well, you. No, you said I'm. You're fighting, fighting me. It. You're fighting me. No one. Don't. I'm not fighting you. you no, we've. Me. We've. Uh. I, I mean, this. This guy's. The, the, I like I said. I'm, I'm surprised I found this. So, like, I didn't know about this writing. Like, in all of the kind of looking into like the Trinity that I've been doing, like I didn't see something. I was like, Oh, and this writing clearly is like, this is where it, it, I really do think it's like a conspiracy to just hide this. Cause it's like, this is, cause I talked to some people like, no, the Trinity was a, uh, nobody wrote it. It's all like people just either don't study or they're trying, they're just, they're trying to hide it. And first and last, I'm not fighting against you. I think you have a great attitude towards this. I really do. For someone who, who just doesn't like accept it, whole, like just, wholesale i guess I, I don't know how to describe your yeah, mind yeah, yeah. but you have the right attitude you're asking the right questions and you're you're not like uh you know what i mean I, i'm not i'm not trying to fight you at all yeah, I, I'm, I'm I, sorry. I, you know what i mean so I'm, I'm not saying that like uh, you're the one that kind of, when i said like i don't understand why people fight against it you jumped in and said right. I did. i'm right. fighting against it so yeah. i'm asking well, you i wasn't i wasn't when i just said that people don't start i wasn't talking about you i was talking about in general and people don't know about that these writings even exist where they actually talk about the Father, Son, and the Holy the Holy Ghost very clearly. And it's like, you know, 100 years before Nicaea. And then, because I've heard so many times the, the argument that it was all didn't come out until like Constantine invented it. And it's like, no, he didn't. So, well, what, what you're saying also is that the Council of Nicaea definitely would have known about this, basically, right? Not necessarily. So again, I think the teaching, I think this teaching of what of who Jesus is with the Trinity and all this kind of stuff in the gospel, I think that's the actual um in, in, in my opinion, that is what the apostolic succession is and should be, is the true teaching of the Trinity and Christ and the gospel. Like that's so if I wouldn't say they had this, I would say they actually had the true teaching. 
And they were yeah. trying to maintain the true teaching in the face of all these heresies that are overwhelming because it was, yeah, I mean, we, we can see what was happening at the time. Um, and, and, and we can also see what happened after that time and that the, the non-Trinitarians um, became, they, they were really the ones that married the church with the state and they started persecuting Trinitarians and using using Roman police, they basically to police their uh, their doctrine and other like, yeah, it was it was the yeah not non it was the Arians specifically. That's when they for like a generation or so they they took over the the mainstream. Uh, one and it, it was a shame though because that was when Christianity first again became legalized. Constantine was actually. You know, he was not into Arianism. His sons were into Arianism. And and even uh, Julian the Apostate, in the year 360, he writes, he's like, oh, these Arians are clearly only in it for, for wealth and gain. <laughs> it's like, this is what... Just sad how, how fast you see, you see like, uh, uh, Christianity, like, turn on itself. You know what I mean? It's just so sad, like, when you think about that. You got these... You got these uh, like followers of Christ dying for this, right? Dying for what they know to be true, and then it takes how long before you get all these like it divides up into all these different things, and they're attacking each other and arguing with each other and like burning each other. The mechanics make sense because in like Arianism, it's teaching cool. that Jesus is a man given godliness, right? Like it was like Jesus was just some man, and then God made him. And somebody's mic is uh, absolutely. Is that mine? I think it is. It might be. Really? I don't know. <laughs> that was me. Sorry. Um. Uh, that just blows my mind, though. How fast, like, the, the, even like you just even when you see on YouTube, like, like, like them turning on Paul, and like this is silly fighting and infighting. I, I kind of think it's shameful in a way because I catch myself getting into it too, and I really do. Like I'll I'll, I'll be right in there sometimes. And I'm like, and I, I have to stop myself. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, this is so dumb. Like, you know, like uh, I mean, in, in, when push comes to shove, uh, like you know, when you're when you're standing before God, right? Like, it, it, like does it matter? Like I'm sitting there arguing in some YouTube stream or like. Should I be out helping someone like who needs really needs help? Like you know what I mean? It's like it's kind of shameful in a way. It really is. I don't know. It just gets to be a little silly and prideful and selfish. Honestly, it really does. You know, that's what I'm saying. Calls yeah, out there, preaching the stuff. word, spreading the word of God, spreading the gospel, helping people in need, dealing with sick people, and you're gonna bash on him. I just think that's so shame. That's so wrong, man. I don't know. I, I just shame on them, man. Honestly, that's just bad. It's really bad, you know. I don't know. And he's sick. It's like, where's the love in that? I, I don't. I don't. I don't see it. I, I just. It just seems so. You know, you're backloading works and all this crazy nonsense. You talk to stop it, man. Just stop it. Like stop. You know, like you're not allowed to do works or or you're a heretic or something. I don't know. You know, and I also wonder, and going back to Sam, because Sam was on, and because if, if, if in any, because Sam knows, or, or Praise is going to know that, that Sam and Kelly are not the the best of, of acquaintances. So, uh, I so I, not. I imagine in that case now, you know, that then Kelly's going to be fair game anyway. Right. And then even so, like, you know, it's going to be something that's going to, that Sam is that's going to be favorative from Sam anyway. Yeah, I didn't even think about it. I didn't even put that together because you know I try not to think like that. But you're right. You know, you have <laughs> Sam on, and all of a sudden he's attacking attacking Kelly. And what did Kelly do that so bad? I, I don't get it. Kelly's Kelly seems like a great guy to me. I, I you know when I go into streams, he's talking. You know, he's teaching the word of God. What is he teaching that's bad? I, I don't yeah. get it. All right. Well, I mean, he did it. He did come at free grace. He came at free grace. That's what he did. Uh, he, he, he did a big list, and he said, "This is what the hair. This is what false false teachings that are around." And one of them was like, because he, he and and I, I noted in my mind that he didn't make a distinction 
an extreme free grace or anything. He was just like free grace. And he's like, like, no, we need to, you know, if you have a job, if you're not doing that job, then you're, you really in that job. You know, it's that sort of arguing. Like, yeah, I, I mean, but I, I've always said this from my problem with that whole entire, hey, listen, grace is unmerited favor. That's just, that's just what it is. Okay. Definitionally, it is unmerited forgiveness, right? That is grace, right? We don't have to say free grace. That's just redundant. It, it, it doesn't, grace is unmerited favor. But why on earth would you spend all this time teaching, like talking about what you could get away with or something like that? It's just bizarre to me. It's like, listen, listen, w like when you put your faith in Christ, that is like the first, what, second you become a Christian, right? Then you have your entire life to live, okay? I don't know so, what, what like, Tom's view is of it, but when, the way I've heard that the, 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 whatever the guy's name is, Paul, the other Paul, because that guy has come in, and I, I don't know what what left field he came in from. Is that the right? cursing guy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the one who sounds, I mean, the, the, the dude, you know, Lebowski. And and the, the stuff that I've heard him saying, like, for example, that we, we can now bypass the son and go right to the father. What? And What does that even mean? I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Bypass the sun? Well, I don't. I, know, I don't even know what that means. And then I heard him earlier say something like, Bypass "Actually, it was." I, I can remember where he said that. He said something like, "The father, like Jesus, just came to." It, there was. I, I don't. You know what? I, I don't even want to get into get into it. Hey, but, yeah, we don't have to. We don't have to even put names on it and stuff like these that. Views, I, I don't think his views are sound. And, and and but I don't think but when I look back at the history of this whole thing, honestly, when I it when I look at uh, like Layman Seminary, right? Like I remember I kind of debated with him. I mean, it wasn't in any public debate. I don't even know if it was public on his channel, but it was. Are on you willing to publicly debate me on that? <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. Yeah. That's what he always says every two seconds. But the, the the idea that that they come in and, and pick apart scripture, and in order to find some sort of intellectual uh, explanation for something that you can that that has been that 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 can justifiably been la be labeled a mystery, like oh this is mysterious you know this is what something people argue with, so then bring something in that does answer that question, because and I, I think because I think ultimately it's interesting because almost like a third leg. Um, between because it's the same thing I've said about Calvinism and Universalism, because and or even open theism, because they all seek to fill in a blank and answer a question, and I think they answer it with an error. And then the false the false response is, well, then what's your answer? And it's like, well, my answer is that it's a mystery. And they're like, well, that's not acceptable. And it's like, well, that's your problem then. That's that's your inability to humble yourself. If you think that you, you know, if you're going to attack somebody for not having the answer and therefore, and again, I think there are, there are valid things that we, you know, that we, we can say without having to say, it. Like, I think there are things that are, that they'll need to be mysteries. Uh, depending on how you, how you frame open theism, I mean, I have less of a problem with that depending on how you frame it than I do with like, honestly, than I do with Calvinism. Uh, with with with, the, with with like hard determinism, like God determines all your actions and all that stuff, all your sins and all that stuff. Like I I have more of a problem with that than than, than saying something like uh like uh there's kind there's some kind of uh the future's open in, in a certain way. You know what I mean? Like it's not determined already. Like I have less of a problem with that than I do with uh <laughs> that God determined all my sins and stuff like that. And then I have, and, and with the whole, quote, free grace thing, my problem is it's like, I, I just, it just seems like the whole entire thing is, is okay, okay, uh, you're saved, you're saved by grace through faith, and let's just cut Christian, Christianity off right there, because that's what it's all about, and everything else is just whatever, you know, you say anything else, like what you're supposed to do, and this and that, and how you're supposed to live and how the spirit changed your life and how, how, you know what I mean? Like all these great things about being a Christian, 
it's just like and all the hard things too that we're supposed to be here supporting each other with because you know, listen it's not easy like i have lots of problems it's not like my life's like perfect because i'm a christian not even close man i mean i struggle all the time like all the time okay so but we're supposed to be helping each other through those things and it's just like the second he's they take all the the love and this i want to say spirituality and I, I think that maybe that's a bad way to say it but like all the the love out of it almost like they there's like truth. there's you know there obviously then that that's the whole tricky part of it there's truth makes sense like I don't, I just don't. It does. It feels like fake to me almost. And I'm not calling them fake or nothing like that. I'm just saying it's like, why are you? Why are we? Why are you stuck right there? Like, why are you stuck? And if anyone says anything else, you start accusing them of being like a heretic or something. Like, what is going on here? Like, I I, I really think that that Kelly is just trying to, you know. He's trying to disciple people and help them, uh, like what what it, what they should do as a Christian, how you should live your life, and, and and disciple people. Like, what is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. That's what you should be doing, you know. And to say he's a false teacher for that, I I, I, I don't know. I I just I have a lot of trouble with this kind of attitude. I, I really do, you know. Everyone's throwing the word heretic around. Like, what, what are you guys going to be the only ones in heaven or something? Like, I don't get it. Like, what are you doing? Stop it. So, have some grace toward each other. How about that? You know, and I try to have grace towards them and I agree with them when it comes to, yes, you're saved by grace. Okay. Just, you know, through faith. Yes. Nothing you did merited your, 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 your Jesus forgiving you. Nothing you did, you know, you trust him to save you. Okay. I I am all with that. Okay. But now what? Now what? N now go back to living like a, like, like, like nothing ever happened. To prove, that, to, to prove a point to say, well, guess, guess what I found in the Bible. And this is, this is why I brought up, uh, cause again, I, the first time it's just cause the, way, the first time I personally saw this being sort of, like being being brought heavily into the community was was with the uh, layman seminary and i don't think that he's some kind of great arch heretic or anything like that necessarily but um but he he specifically is bringing a, a more you know the intellectuality to it where he's basically and i think he's even said like whether regardless or not if he truly believes it if he can find out how to argue it intellectually, then he's going to do it just to kind of flex his muscle. I know, you know? What you mean. I know. I think I know what you mean exactly. That's what. I, that's what kind of like what I'm saying. What I'm saying. It takes the love and the, 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 the I don't know, the beauty out of it. Like the, like the realness out of it. Almost, you turn it into spirit. like a, there's no spirit. It's like an intellect. Yeah, it's, I, I said spirituality before. I, I didn't want to make it sound like Christianity is like spirituality, but yeah, the spirit out of it. The, the, the. I don't know. I, I, then they're like, well, then prove prove to me out of, you know, show to me out of scripture, show to me the logical way. Cause you know, and it's like, well, cause are you a sinner? And cause at that point, I don't really know the difference between that and, you know, the ones that say, well, that, 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 that literally do openly say, well, I can, you know, if, if you're saying I'm sinning, then you're the sinner, you know, but they you know what, you know what it's like? It's like, yeah. it's like a, Jesus is a, a person. The father is a person, right? The Holy Spirit is a person, right? So, like, it's not just words, right? It's not just some words, like you, you, like, like, like you just say the words, and since, since, since the Word of God says it, so if you say it, then you're good. Like, like, where's the relationship? Where's the, like, to me, it's, it's, it's like, do you, do you really believe it? Is it real? It's algorithmic. <laughs> Is it real though? Like, do you really believe? Like, you're gonna see Jesus? Like, do you believe that, or do? You, is it just words? Like, it's not. It's not. It's not a a, a a philosophy test. You know, this is your life. This is like your your. This is everything. This is like the most important thing in, ever. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't. I don't get them. I I don't. The way they talk, I don't get them. Like, you're you're sucking the life out of it. It just, it, I don't know. It's ugly. I, I think it's ugly. That's the best thing I could say. It's ugly, you know? They have a point, yeah, but then you, you stretch it out into like it's, it, it, it's a chart. It, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, 
this classification and this class. Like, okay, you know, like systematic theology, yet there's there's good points to it. And, and it, it, it's a thing that like, you know, it helps you learn theology better. I agree with that. But stop sucking the life out of it, the realness out of it, like the, the relationship out of it. Like this is not this is not like some textbook or something, you know? It's like like this is your life. This is like the most important thing you could ever have. And and you're turning it into like just nonsense. Like I don't know. I, it upsets me, to be honest with you. Because I think, you know, I've heard them say things that seemed real to me that they love Jesus and, and like things that seem real, but I haven't seen that lately. I haven't heard that lately. It's been ugly. You know what I mean? I don't feel any kind of love from them at all. I don't know. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's troublesome to me and it's not a, a good representation of what Christianity is, in my opinion. I don't know. Maybe that's harsh, but uh, that's the way I feel. No, I think that was well said. <laughs> I mean, I, I I don't like seeing what what it's what the things have uh, evolved into. Yeah. Personally, again, no, that's my opinion. That's why I I know my opinion isn't. I've 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 long ago given my opinion, and, and I realize like there, there's nothing I'm going to say that's going to change anything. Um, and I, I'm not going to sit around and bail out the ocean. Like, uh, like, like uh, that's for somebody else to do. Because again, I already know that I'm. It's just gonna frustrate me more than I'm gonna be able to be useful. So, you know, it'd be great to see him take that platform where he gets all those people on there and do something good with it. Okay. Yeah, and it can still happen. But again, yeah. like I think that the 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 inf the influence of and, and again, like I, I think it's just like goes to the same length of universalism and Calvinism when you go to these extremes, and then you basically dare people. To pit scripture against scripture, you know, and say, well, and, and it's almost okay for the sake of proving you wrong or proving yourself right against what? What are we trying to prove here? Yeah. Are we trying to prove that that Jesus is is Lord. <laughs> well, that's why I can't. You know, like I'll get into these little little spouts with like Calvinists, and I'll go. I'll catch myself going like on and on and on and on and on and on, like I'm almost like obsessed with it. Like, no, what is wrong with you? Can't you see it? Can't you see this is just not God? This is not the Spirit of God. You can't, you know, and I go on and on and on and on. And eventually I'm just like, I just have to stop myself. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, what am I doing? <laughs> I got this. It was New Year's Eve and I, I was sitting there in a stream with like Jill and Veckel and what, I forget who. And, and I'm like, Wait a minute. I'm just like I'm like you know what? I have a beautiful wife sit, sitting in, in in the other room, and I'm sitting here wasting my time with this stuff with you guys. I'm like I gotta go, man. I'm like I love you all. I gotta go. Man. I'm like, listen, man. You know it. Just you know, put your faith in Christ. I mean, yeah. I mean, it is people. You know, it's it's an interesting thing. I mean, it is real people. But again, it's, it gets silly. It's get, it gets obsessive, and it gets it gets to me. It's it's a pride thing. I, I really do. I really think, for me at least, I can It's a pride. Like I get caught up in my pride. You know, like listen, if they're not gonna believe what I'm saying, if they're not gonna see the contradiction that I see in whatever they call that compatibilism or whatever, if they if they if God determining all your sins, they don't see that as a contradiction to you being responsible. Then uh, how can I help them? You know what I mean? You either see it or you don't. I don't know what to tell you. But you know, that's right. Like, so if somebody isn't, because most people that I've seen that went from Calvinism to not Calvinism, I, it, it seems to me that it wasn't somebody coming to them and saying, "Hey, did you know your Calvinism is blah 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 blah." It was them themselves yeah. saying, "This, there's something wrong with this. Let me look into this. Oh, I'm wrong. Let me repent of this and 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 seek elsewhere." You know, or they never, in, in my view, or, or that they're going to say, oh, none of this, you know, I've been lied to by religious people. Christianity is all fake, and I'm, I'm yeah. never, you know. I mean, well, there's the people that are ignorant, right? I mean, there's there's the people that are ignorant. So there's people that don't, just don't know, you know, like they're a Calvinist because whatever. They're, they're, they're you know what I mean? Their pastors are Calvinists or their families are Calvinists. And they don't even really know, you know what I mean? Because no one really, 
And I'm, I'm sorry, man. I don't even believe these people. I, I, I mean, I, in my heart, I don't believe they really think God determines their sinful actions. I really don't even think they believe that. They I, don't. They let them go. They just, they just. They're just through. arguing for the sake of arguing. Like, is it? So it's just like you know, it's like well, but I'm like just I'm gonna not argue with you because you're just setting your ways. Like it's not, it's, it's pointless, you know. It, it's worth it to put it out there, like like someone like Layton Flowers. He puts it out there. He explains the text. He explains the different interpretations, and it, that's all you can do. I mean, it, you know, to sit there and go in these battles with the same people over and over. It's just yeah. it's, it's foolishness. It's, it's folly. Hey. <laughs> So Dan, yeah, these guys are immature. They've never had to sit under elders. They come on here, uh, people that are elders, people that have ministries. They have no problems slashing their name. You know, they have no problem whatsoever, just like smearing uh, whatever. And they've got these little minions that follow them that don't know any better, right? And they're buying into all this crap. And there's no telling what gets spread around. Um, and you know, God's seeing all of this at the end of the day, I don't have anything to worry about. I wash my hands clean of it because I know where I stand with God on this, you know? And, um, but I don't know if they, I don't know if they fear God. I don't know if they, uh, they take this serious, you know? No, why would know. they, why would they? Cause they're saved. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, well, nothing else matters. Yeah. Nothing matters. Who cares? Let's do a couple yeah. fart signs. Let's throw where's a couple the, dirty where, jokes. Where's the gratitude? Where's the love? Like, where, like God died for you, and, and you're like, oh, good. I'm, I'm good now. Screw it. F you. Like, F I don't F care F how I feel about praise. His immaturity, and his, li his lack of respect for God and for elders and stuff, to yeah. me, puts him, uh, puts him in a bracket where uh, I'm disfellowshipping him. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna have anything to do with him. Um, he's proven himself to be. You know, I've given the benefit of the doubt over and over. I've tried to come over there and, and talk and minister over there. And at the same time, um, I'm sorry, man. I've been in ministry for a long time. I'm older. Gentlemen, you know, I've been through things. I'm not saying I know everything, but I do know this. Uh, these people don't know anything about true Christianity. You know, they don't know anything about being part of the body and how you treat people and how you speak with people. Um you're supposed to be an example to people too. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's like I, I can't take them serious if all they're going to do is slander people and they're good at it. You know what I mean? And then, then I get to hear about twenty thousand fart noises and some bad jokes, some off-color jokes, some nasty foul language and nasty talking. You know, and and I'm supposed to respect him. I don't know, man. I heard him say something about you. I kind of, I kind of lost it. I wasn't in the strand, but I kind of was like, I, I kind of got upset about that, man. I'm like, who the heck is? Are you serious right now? Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm like, doing. what is Paul doing, and what are you doing? Because I hear you running your mouth in this thing, and I hear Paul in hospitals and and, and, and helping uh, drug addicts and all this stuff. And, and you're here, what, running your mouth about backloading or, and, and bass and telly powers? I mean, like, what are you doing? To stop it, man. Like, what you, you know what? Now, now, think about this. This is what I said, man. I said, I said, Jesus said, continue in my love. And he said, it's not for salvation. It's because of salvation. He went off. That's what I'm talking about. Your backloading works and all this. And he's been buying into this Charles chart crap, you know, Charles Layman's charts and uh, it's extreme free grace crap. You know, you know, it's like at some point, you know, when he was when when praise went through his Calvinism phase, when he went through his conditionalism phase, when he went through, I don't know, there was something in between there he went through. Uh, you you missed a lot, Paul. I knew I I knew praise when he was a oneness Pentecostal. Okay, well, uh, yeah, charismatic and all this, but but let me just say this: he always had the same mo. You know, to go slander everybody that doesn't agree with him. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of sad. It's kind of like uh, push to you know, and bro, um, and then like attack people, and then join up with other people. It's kind of he's manipulating. I have no respect for that whatsoever. I see, I see through it it's all. Sad. I don't like people, that. people need discernment if they don't see it, and they need to. If you are, if you do claim he's your brother, and and you know this is how things are, then I would ask you as a brother if you can have that kind of conversation to confront him um i've tried confronting him um, yeah there's no 
the thing with him is he has never had to sit under any kind of um, eldership or any kind of leadership uh, within the church. And he kind of sets his own rules and does whatever he wants. You know, and he's running the show. Yeah, so, and it's like entertainment or something. I don't know. I agree with He that. don't take this serious, man. He don't – I don't think he really understands. And, and I don't – you know, I would love for him if he hears this to know that I have a concern for him. I'm praying for him. Um, he, he has a lot to learn, and I would ask him to be fearful, you know, when it comes to these things, to be respectful. And, uh, humble, be humble. Like, stop it. Just, just. I, 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 I pleaded with him a couple of times. At least I, I wrote to him. Pray, stop jumping from doctrine to doctrine, from side to side. You're so quick to bash people before you even know what you're even talking about. Praise, please, just stop. That kept, you know, your last night on that thing about Kelly, about Kelly, right? I kept waiting for him. That like he would say one or two words, Kelly would, and he would stop and he would go off on his tangent for thirty minutes of what he thinks about Kelly and what Kelly said, but Kelly hadn't said anything yet. And I'm still waiting for Kelly to say what he's being accused of, and I've still yet to hear it. And then it gets cut short, and then it gets into this. And I'm sitting here listening to everybody going, blah, 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 blah. I mean, everybody's going off. Blah, 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 you know, and it's the same thing every night on his channel. I'm like, how in the world is this fruitful? It's angry. And and it, it's a one thing. Okay, say, say Kelly had a doctrine that you disagree with, okay? Okay. So talk about the doctrine. Don't make it about Kelly, number one, okay? Talk about the doctrine and, and explain why exactly you disagree with it and show some scripture explaining why you think this, right? But don't make it into Kelly's, uh, he's a false teaching, uh, Kelly's a false teaching heretic, and I don't know what's up with Paul. And like, it's so, it's angry and it's ugly, and it, it's just, it's not, it's not the heart of God. It's just ugly. I, mean, I don't know. I, just, I don't get it. Where's well, he's stuck. Love? He's got stuck in his compartmentalism uh, that Free Grace has, you know, about are you saying I'm not saved kind of uh, mentality. Like, no matter. If you talk about anything, like they'll agree that, yeah, we do agree that we should go into discipleship. They'll say that. But, if you, ever, if, but if you ever say anything about that, right, you're accused of work salvation. backloading work salvation. I totally agree with you. I never and so it. It's just really ridiculous. It's like this weird circle that never ends, you know? Yeah, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. And I to I, I've said it over and over in the chat and, and, and even comments after saying, listen, I don't get. Like I, I literally, he had a stream on there, basically, basically like uh, bashing like uh, good works or something. It was the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. I've never seen a Christian come up there and like uh, almost advocating for sin. It was just bizarre to me. I'm like, what is yeah. this? What are you doing? Just, this is not right, man. This is not right at all. You don't have yeah. streams saying it's okay no, to freaking not believe. Not. It's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got to be able to talk about, you know, um, growing in the grace and truth in Christ without being accused of, you know, backloading words. You got to be able to have that kind of conversation. I mean, how do you have full, full, like four hour streams on, on it's okay to uh, worship other gods? Like, what is that? Like, no, it's not okay. That's not cool. It's not cool at all. <laughs> that's not, no, no, that's a no no. You don't want to do that. <laughs> you want to grow. Jesus said a kingdom divided cannot stand. You want to be conformed to the image of God. You want to be led by the Holy Spirit. You want to, like, like what do you, like, it's not about what you can get away with. And, I mean, that's what it's almost like. It's like, I became a Christian because I could do whatever I want. <laughs> and if you say something about it, you're a heretic. It's like, what? And think about this. Like, anybody, you know this as well as I do, Dan. Anybody that gets in that lifestyle, like, they start, like, people start hearing this. Then they're like, well, why should I change? Why should I do this? I don't have to do anything. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like sort of like with universally. Atheists love universalists. Exactly. They're going to yeah. heaven, right? But what, what does it matter? In the end, we're all going to be safe. I so, don't believe none. <laughs> it yeah, so, and then all this harm is coming on these people. All these things are coming in their life. Because uh, because what if there is truly those that are saved and they're taking this mentality? And what I, what I know just in my own life, man, uh, you can't live like that. Uh, I, I tried a couple times. 
Yeah, you're gonna you know? hurt yourself. You're gonna hurt. And a lot of harm came. Exactly. A lot of things came in my life, and it ain't no joke. It ain't gonna be playing around with. I 100 percent agree. It's it, it's dangerous. It's straight up. It's straight up dangerous. You you're gonna and hurt. If you people. love these people. This is where the lo- where is the love? You know, if you love these people, uh, the the last thing you would want them to do is encourage them to do something that would bring harm to them like that. Yeah, to to yeah to 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 make it sound like it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. It's definitely not okay to continue on and, and sin and just do whatever you want because you're saved. I mean, to, first of all, I'm not even you know I believe that I'm saved, right? I believe that, but I still I don't want to sin. I mean, it's like a, a it's still a, you know, and may, maybe it's my weakness, but I still worry, man. I don't really, you know what I mean? I'm like I feel like I'm letting God down or something. Like that. I, I, that's just my my that's just the heart I have for that. I, I, you know, I, I don't like to do the wrong thing, and yet, and I know when yeah, I yeah, but do it. see, they don't want you to feel that way. They want you to be like just so it's okay because you're never going to really know you're saved unless you're just okay with it. You know, it's like no, listen, I, I know I'm saved, and that's why I'm not okay with it. Why can't it be like that? You, you know, it's yeah, yeah, no, exactly. That's the right attitude to have, and we're supposed to. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like you, you want to do the right thing, don't you? Like you don't want to just what I could get away with, and it's okay. Like, ew, ew like that's that's just a backwards. It's so backwards to me. It's like, where, where, where are you being saved from? First of all, like, what's the point? That you know what I mean? If that's the attitude, what's the point? Like, why become a Christian if you just want to do whatever you want to do? I mean, who cares? I, I really <laughs> believe this, man. They've adapted, and and I think uh, Sean and I have talked about. Kelly and I've talked about this. They've adapted a liberal love, not the father's love. Uh, they, they, they took the, 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 the they took the, the uh, person. Like they, it, 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 it's not to me. It just sounds like a, almost like a magic spell. I mean, I don't want to sound like Jamie because that's what he says. But it's they're turning it into like a magic spell. Well, I said I put my faith in Jesus, so everything's great. <laughs> So it's like what? What are you talking about? Wait, is the whole point of Christianity just because so you don't go to hell? That's what it is, right? Like that's the attitude. Like you don't want to help people. You don't want to. Like I don't get it. I just don't get it. You don't want to have a good life and share the love of God with people and 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 just, you know what I mean? Like I, it just seems so backwards to me. It's it's insane to me. It really is. It's just insane. Well, what I mean by liberal love rather than the father love is that it's based on not offending people. It's not based on the truth. Yeah. And so, so when you look at love, you know how you go about things. It, the main, the highest priority is is to not offend people. Uh, true. Uh, and, and that's that's the worldly love. Uh, the Bible says that you can't have the love of the world and the love of the Father. They're not the same. Hey, t- tell me, Paul, you're someone that helps a lot of people, right? So I'm sure you, you know you have a lot of times where it doesn't work out and and it and it hurts, right? Right, and that that's a hard thing to deal with, right? Yeah, most but the times that it it does when you do help people, I mean, what what's better than that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you, you you bring people to God and. and they turn their lives around like isn't that the best like isn't that like what it, uh, it's about almost to me i don't know you know for me it's a beautiful do, thing i think i don't you know. do get personally involved right because uh you're planting seeds or watering or whatever you're doing right yeah. but at the end of the day i know this if anything happens if it's good if anything comes about it's because god did it you know, absolutely it. absolutely but to be so, a part so of it, it's me, amazing like, yeah, for, yeah for me it, it disconnects me from like uh I don't know where I don't put myself in that position. You know what I mean? Because I know it's not true. Um, yeah, the Holy but... Spirit does it. The God does it the same way it happened in my life. But I do, I do, I do believe this. If God's working through you, you know, if He's using you, exactly. And you, you get that front seat to watching this, and you see people you know, make changes. Yeah. It's amazing, you know. And and when you see them fail, it, it hurts like as if you are yeah. a part of it, you know. Um, yeah. But I'm saying, but isn't that what God is supposed to do with us? Like, like uh, we're he he gave us works to you know works to walk in to do like a job to do, right? Like we're supposed to be out there doing the work, right? Like I don't know, I don't know. 
it just I don't know. It just it's just it just this is the, this whole thing has just gotten bizarre to me. It's just gotten really strange and not normal. This is not normal Christianity. This is just weird. Well, that's that's just it, man. It's people out there playing games and you know it, it's become like an entertainment thing, like something to do every night. You know? Yeah, and to be bashing on people, the people that love God like that, like stop it, man, just stop. You know, who are you judging these people? Who are you? You know, does he even really know Kelly? I mean, I don't really know Kelly, but he I said that he's had conversations with Kelly and that, and I was still waiting to hear what he was, you know, what he's accusing Kelly of. I still yet to hear it. Um, and even to throw your name in there, I mean, from the little I know about you, Paul, you seem like a good man of God to me. And I, it's just hard to believe that he would judge you like, like, uh, I don't know. It's just wild to me. It's just, it's just so not. I think, I think he was upset because I was sitting there calling him out. I'm waiting to hear him say something about Kelly, and I get to hear it. I kept calling it out in the chat, right? I kept saying, "Well, come on, man." I said, "Let me hear what what Kelly has to say. You're accusing him of these things. You know, let's hear it." And I, I didn't hear it. You know, I didn't hear what, what the accusation was. So, because um, see, I personally know Kelly. Uh -huh. I talked to him quite often. I've been with him for a couple of years, I think, now in fellowship. And um, <clears throat> I've heard his testimony. I know how he looks at work salvation. And I know he does lean towards a lordship type salvation, but uh, yeah. but not not fully, I don't think. Yeah, but I mean. Uh, to, I the mean point, I... to the point where he's. Um, a work salvation. A work salvationist, yeah. yeah um, no. He just thinks I... being a Christian means something. I mean. Uh, he he believes that if Jesus comes in your life and you give the Holy Spirit, yeah, the, th the things are going to happen in your life. You know, he believes that when you become a Christian, you should do something with it. <laughs> like you know, what I mean, I, yeah. to me, that's because th that's the attitude I get from him, and I think that's it, it, I think it's just on call for to start to start taking people that are trying to do the right thing for God, who who openly say you're sick. I mean, Kelly repeats over and over, you're saved. By the grace of God, you know, through faith. Okay, but then he says, you know, okay, now you're a Christian. So now, what? Now what do you do? So you know, you get to work. Like, I mean, yeah. you yeah. know, like, like, it, and I think Kelly has the right attitude. To me, that's the right attitude. We should be doing things for God, not not just just sitting around talking about what we could get away with. Like, that's just dumb. It's just what, what did Jesus like, say? Satanic. It's evil. It's demonic. It's not I mean, the right way to think. It's I mean, Dan, you think about it. All, all I said was that Jesus said, continue in my love. And he said, he called that backloading works. You know, I'm like, wait a minute. I said, Jesus said that, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could, you could, you could you, quote you, scriptures and, and you're the, you're, you're, you're are you uh, saying uh, Jesus is backloading works? Yeah. No, you just don't understand, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. And it's you can't it's obsession, man. It's just demented obsession with free grace. You know what? One time I quoted, I quoted, uh, I forget the, uh, I said, uh, they were talking about salvation, right? To being saved, right? And I'm like, well, you know what? Salvation, salvation is uh, uh, through sanctification by the spirit, believing the truth. And like five people jumped on me and called me a heretic. I'm like I'm quoting scripture. You, like, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What I'm quoting the literal scripture. It says salvation is through sanctification by this Holy Spirit, believing the truth. That's scripture. <laughs> okay, you could you could call me a heretic for quoting scripture. Something's wrong with you, man. <laughs> no, you don't know what that means. I'm like, I didn't I didn't even explain anything. All I did was quote the scripture. Mm -hmm. And you're jumping on me like like a like like a demon possessed crazy person, like uh, I don't understand. All I said is what I literally just quoted the scripture and didn't give an explanation, didn't say anything about it. I just said what it is. Do you, do they disagree? Salvation isn't through the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it isn't through sanctification by the Holy Spirit, and you have to believe the truth. Basically, you have to faith. You have to have faith. Like you don't believe that. Like uh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Know. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit in. Uh, uh, what's his name? Charter or something? Like I don't get it. Like,
Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I know this. That it, you know. Read acts like do they sit around and talk about what they could get away with? Is that was that what they did in acts? I don't, I don't get it. Like it's just wild for me, man. We are we are definitely in these times where people are calling good bad and bad good. Yeah, it's kind of and you know. Yeah, well, it's just you know this this whole world of we're a Christian because we say so on YouTube kind of thing. It's kind of. You know, I feel like I feel I, sometimes I, I wish like we should just cut all these wires and force people to go out and, and do do things for people because that's where the real work is. You know, yeah. you go on the streets and there's people and they need help. And and it, that's where it gets hard and it gets really real. OK, it's really real. OK, yes. like you yes. talking to people online, you, you know, you might help someone here and there kind of. Maybe because you don't really know because you never really see him and, and you don't really know, right? So maybe, but even like someone like Kelly, you see him talking to Jehovah's Witnesses, like spending hours with them, trying to go through the scriptures, trying to explain it uh, through Mormons, through you know what I mean? And, and and like to me, like okay, you compare that to your backloading works, you you know what I mean? All this nonsense. Who's helping who? Like who's who's doing the right thing? Come on, man. Like who are you judging right there? Stop it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I it's you get like five minutes of, of scriptures that are the same scriptures over and over that yes, we have you know, we're saved by faith. We all agree. We all agree. Yeah, this is yeah, yeah, that's where they need to calm down. They need to understand look whatever you're trying to accuse me of as far as work salvation just let it go i, I believe in the true gospel and I, and I said a majority of us here do i don't know what your deal is what you're trying to prove yeah. you know it, you're taking this doctrinal statement and using any little kind of slip of the lip or something or yeah. our, our miscomprehension you know or miscommunication yeah. or you know anybody can take a jab at anything and turn it into whatever they want you know and Hey, watch that sweep shot, Ed Hominin. Yes, yes, Ed Hominin. <laughs> I'm going to throw it all in there. Ed Hominin. I'm going to throw watch it all in there, man. Well, how about, how about the, like, uh, what, 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 what was I going to say? Like, uh, like the, the idea that, like, uh, like when you when you really do, like, lay, lay all your, your, your burden upon the, like, the, like, at the feet of Jesus, right? And you just give up, like, you just put your faith in him. And the idea that that doesn't have any effect on your life, like it's just nothing, it's just words, like like the Holy Spirit indwells you and, and nothing's different. Like there's nothing about it that changes. I mean, because that's the attitude they have. Like like if you say that like the Spirit, like uh, you know what I mean? You had like this a different attitude towards sin, and, and, and you know the, you felt a change in yourself. You know what I mean? You felt that God did something to you. And you felt a burden lifted from your shoulders. If you say that, that they, they call that like works or something. Like you're like like you're you're I don't know. Like to me, like Yeah, they're denying the power that's working in you. Yeah. It's like what are you talking about? What why would you why would you argue against that? Like I, it's crazy to me, it's man. I mean, you're stuck on like the positional change. <laughs> so you have a positional change, like you're moved from one fence to cross the other fence and that's it and that's that's all there is as opposed to what I mean, are you in a, like a hospital <laughs> or what is that there's so much tv on or something <laughs> it sounds like uh, uh, it's either andy griffith or uh, oh oh wait a minute hold on man that's okay. yes, sorry that's all right paul yeah, but I mean, like, why would you fight against that? Because I don't know. To me, you're gonna turn away a lot of people too. Like, oh, what's the point? Like, nothing changes. Nothing matters. Like, uh, in some, in, uh, when I die, maybe I'll go to heaven. Like, well, who cares? Like, it's just, it's just like there's like no realness to it all. I don't know. It's just scary to me. I, well, I, some people, and I'm not, and I'm, I don't even think any, but it seems like a lot would be like, well, it's, it's almost true to like, like they found some kind of a loophole. Um, like God, <coughs> yeah, but that's actually how people are doing it. But this is how it seems to be being presented like, oh, guess what, guys? We found a loophole, and now you can just do like, as a, and 
And they'll call that the gospel. They're gonna get away. They're gonna get over on God, right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Have you ever, you ever heard? So I mean, this, this is something that's very common that they do. They'll do a review on somebody, right? And I swear, every two words they'll pause it, and then they'll go into this thirty-minute thing of explaining how wrong they are, and the person hasn't said anything yet. And <laughs> I've noticed, I notice people that do this. It ain't just him. It's, there's other people that I can name. That whenever they attack people, whether they're right or wrong, it doesn't matter to me. Let the pieces, let the person say what they want to say, so we can see if you're taking them out of context or not. You know, or if there's some kind of, you know, maybe there's a possibility. Uh, you're you're just really stretching this and twisting it, turning it into something that it's not, or maybe maybe it is. You know, but let the person speak. You, you want to do a review of somebody? Let me hear their whole statement. Let me hear their whole comment that you're accused. You know, that you're basing this off of. But how, I, Paul, how, think about this. What if someone actually just decided one day to just take the time to do this to praise? Out of all the things that he's ever said on that, on, on oh, the screen, man. can you imagine? Can you imagine? I mean, you could have like a like a, a marathon for like six months of, of things that came out of his mouth that are just totally crazy, okay? Like, I mean, can you imagine? And, and, and to me, it takes some kind of nerve to sit there and, and just like attack all these people. Like, come on, man. You know, you could disagree with the doctrine. I get that. I, I, I disagree with, with, with people, sure, with doctrines. I disagree with lots of doctrines. And I agree with some of those same people, many of their doctrines, and some things I disagree with, whatever. But I'm not going to sit there and call them a heretic and bash them to hell, and they don't believe the gospel, and they're not a Christian, and all this crazy stuff. But if someone decided to do that to praise, how hard would that even be? I mean, that would be the most simple thing in the world. I mean, you could take probably any given night and do that to him. You know, with me, I, I, being ministry-minded all the time, man, I'm always thinking, well, you know what? Maybe praise has got something going on. You know, he is allowing people to come in there and say things. You know, maybe there's some good that comes out of this at times where, you know, somebody's listening and, um, you know, they had this view and then this come up. Now there's somebody that's showing in the Bible where that view might be right, wrong, whatever. You know, and maybe it opens the door for that where some people, you know, this wouldn't be allowed. It's sort of like being out on the street, having a conversation with people, you know. So I took it in and, and you know, and lightheartedness in that mind. Uh, being very open to the idea of this, you know, that there, there could be something good come out of this. And I still hold to that in certain ways. Right. Um, well, God but, can use anyone, right? But, and, and this is the but he was talking about last night. Well, there's a but. Yeah, there is a but. You know, unfortunately, there is a but. You know, and at some point, there has to be moderation. You know, the same people coming in and doing the same things constantly making a mockery of God, cussing God, saying vulgar, nasty, you know, stuff all the time. Podcast you know, the sun. You, you know, you know what, what I mean? That? I've never heard anyone say that in my life. Oh my gosh. You know, and then, you know, there has to be some kind of, uh, you know, I'm sorry, man. It, he said, he said something about we're not at church. I said, yeah, but we are the church, you know, yeah. and there has to be a standard. We're not at church. We're, we're well, two or more gathered in my name. I'll be there, right? Well, yeah, yeah, but what he's saying is that, you know, the, the thing that he's doing is not like us being at church. He's not trying to monitor people. At the same time, ho, 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 at, the, at the other side of his mouth, say, I don't need a church. This is a church. I've heard him say it. I've heard yeah, him say it. Yeah, but we are the church. You know, we don't stop being a Christian. A church isn't a building. I agree with you. We are the church. That, that's true. Yeah, hey, I'm going to get off and try to get myself to sleep, but I'm going to be listening in first last. But definitely great talking to you, man. Uh, maybe we can get back to this. Uh, yeah, let's, can let's, you maybe next week, can we pick up on 15? Yeah, it'd be great. So, okay. sorry, sorry to derail. Wait a minute, do we interrupt you guys? Are you guys in the middle of something? I think I derailed them, to be honest with you, first. So. Well, no, I, mean, I wouldn't have. I mean, I still, still got to get to sleep anyway. So. Good night, Calvi. God bless you. All right, Calvi. Good to see y'all. God bless you. I don't know, Paul. It did upset me to tell you the truth. I really did. When I heard when I heard him put your name up there, I'm like, what? Are you serious? I was kinda I was kinda shocked, like what he was saying about, you know. Even uh, even like even the you know, like it, 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 
even the Calvinists give you more love than that. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Like you get up there and you're like, you know, I totally disagree with you. But I mean, you, I, you always try to find like the middle ground and the, I don't know, Paul, I don't know. Just out of all the people to attack, man, I, I just, uh, it's just, it kind of, kind of upset me, man. <laughs> it really did. Yeah. It's just silly. I, Look, I, if, I, if I was wrong, I understand it, man. You know, at the end of the day. Yeah, you're you just know, being too nice. I, I, can, I can be, I can be wrong, but the thing that, the thing that upset me about Tom is, you know, the thing that he was coming at me with, you know, like uh, work salvation. What do you see? Tell you how many times do I hear? You, have I heard you say, Paul, like all all the good works that come out of me are are of God? Like like you 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 won't take credit for anything you do. So it's a, it's just it is uh, it just baffles me. It's just so wrong. It's just so misplaced, and it's so like jumping to conclusions emotional nonsense it's just not right you know what i mean you, you know what you know what i hear sometimes man is like um whenever i was over on uh uh ace Steel's channel and i was trying to talk to him and and uh, we were accused of being the james gang like you know christians are the james gang we're we're, we're uh Pharis pharisees or whatever you know uh, and uh and uh but anyway it was this holier than now it's like oh you think you're holier than now you're holy. It's so basically to try to do what the Lord wants you to do, like basically to obey God, right? And set it in your heart to do that, knowing that you fail at times, right? There's no perfection in this, but you have it in your heart to want to do good. It's like they want to diminish that. They want to put you down for that. I don't see you judging anyone, honestly. <laughs> Whenever I see you join these dreams, you just try to go to the word of God and that you try to just say what you believe to be true which probably all the time i agree with you to be honest i don't think i've ever disagreed and, and uh i don't I, I don't see it like what are what are they jumping on you about what are you doing what, like it's like what if you're just trying to share what the truth like you're you're a pharisee like, what is it? I think, I think, no I, I truly believe that because he is having that um you know, he's having that stream against Kelly, and I called him out on, I haven't yet to hear, you know, the accusations that he had against Kelly. I've, I've yet to hear Kelly say anything. That's not calling him out. That's just asking for the, for the, um, like the. Yeah, the, yeah. The, and I was just letting him know that it was ridiculous, you know, and, but I don't know, whatever. Yeah, um, I, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to make it strictly about praise or about this guy or about that guy. But I just I like I I I, 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 I I almost want to just make it about like Christians attacking Christians for no real reason. Just, that's uh, there's a, there's another thing right there. <laughs> that, that's this is where I'm at. I'm like, all right, this whole apologetic stage. I, I used to tell people, I said, there's pitfalls in this. You know, it's a setup for some things. Like, if the apologetics turns into where, um, how can I say it? It gets ridiculous to the point that it's at now. You know where you're actually accusing people wrongfully. Well, this is fair. It kind of seems like the the way the Pharisees are portrayed, almost like 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 we're holier now and you're not, and you're we're right and you're wrong, and it, 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 you know what I mean. It didn't miss it the whole point of, of the whole thing. Like I, I don't know. Just it, like I said, it, what I told Kelby, it sucks the love and the realness and the spirit out of all of it. It it just turns it into like a game or a fight or a yeah, it's just what what are you doing? What are we doing? Who are we helping? You, you know, I've seen this with uh Kelly, he brought on some people that were uh Jehovah Witnesses, and or one was a Jehovah Witness and one was a Mormon one night. Yeah, I he sat up there for two or three hours, right? With these guys, yeah, he had, he had the most patience I've ever seen, right? Yeah. And he allowed these people to say what they needed to say, get their point across. He allowed them to even give their pointed uh you know opinions of them and and some of them were even slanders for a minute and then because of the way that he held himself though at the end they almost like apologized like saying i should you know i know i got out of hand here i want to say i appreciate you doing this and then they wanted to come back and have another conversation with him yeah because he because he and, and, and he did it the right way right? he right. was charitable and he he is in gentleness and patience and kindness and with love you know you you i mean isn't that what we really want or do we want to just bash people over the head yeah. not to mention that these people already believe in love jesus so it's like, what are you bashing them for like what are you doing it's like stop it 
Like, is- there's souls to be won. There's people that have nothing. There's people that need us. Okay. Kelly doesn't need you to bash him over the head. Not to mention he's been a Christian way longer than you. And he's been studying the word, word of God way longer than you. He's been out in the streets way longer than you. If you've even ever been. And it's like, why don't you show a little respect and a little patience and, 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 and some charity. Like, like, you know what I mean? Bring Kelly on. If you got a problem, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him like a man. Like, you know what I mean? Like a fellow, like a brother. You know what I mean? Would you, would you bash your brother? Uh, 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 you know what I mean? For the world to see, basically. I mean, I know. Well, I, there, there's definitely been like uh, I know one time there was this time where Kelly and I just did not see eye to eye on certain things. You know, he was having a conversation, and I fully let him know that I didn't agree with it and why. And yeah, uh, that's fine. Uh, but at the end of the day, that was it. And the next day we had, you know, we had a gathering and we all showed up. And we weren't carrying anything with us, you know. It wasn't. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with like having a disagreement. Like that's what I said, we could disagree with each other. That's fine, because uh, obviously we, all Christians don't agree. You know, obviously, right? But that doesn't mean we're gonna damn them to hell and call them heretics and like and and like we all of a sudden we we know we we know everything and they know nothing and like I, yeah. I don't know it just gets ridiculous it, it gets very it's pride it's it, to me it's pride is like the biggest thing that I I struggle with it too I struggle with it a lot like I was t- I was telling them before I catch myself with the Calvinists I get all worked up and I and I you know what I mean and, I'm like, <laughs> and, and, I, and I and after a while I'm like what am I Doing. Mm-hmm. Like what? What? This is dumb. Like this is just dumb. Man. Okay. Like, how about we just we agree that we love Jesus. We agree that that you know we can only be saved by Christ, and mm-hmm. let's let's just okay. We we disagree. Fine. We're not gonna we're not gonna see eye to eye on this. But hey, you know. And you I, know, I, I heard a lot of people talk about like Anthony Rogers, right? I, uh, I like him honestly. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I've learned a lot from him, man. You me know, too. He, All the time. Very, He's highly uh, steeped in, in, you know, the background with the church fathers and the Trinity, and yeah. uh, a lot. Of, he knows a lot about the Bible. Uh, he's very reformed too. Very reformed. But 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 I will say this about his reform. A lot of people say this about him. They like, well, I don't mind him being reformed because he doesn't he doesn't uh, push it. You know, like his reformed position. He just, you yeah. know, if it comes if it comes about in his teaching, then so be it. But. Uh, yeah, he doesn't push it, and and I'm like, well, you know, it's never been about me. It's never been about who is a Calvinist. It's always been about what is being taught in Calvinism, you know. And yeah. I know how to separate that, man. I know how to separate like uh, a doctrine from a person. Yeah, but yeah, you know what's funny though? I've actually, I've actually ha- heard Anthony talk, okay, because you know his teachings do go on to like uh things that would kind of where calvinism would affect the way you would teach it right Mm -hmm. and and i they've intersected many times okay like if you listen long enough and carefully enough they do intersect from time to time and i've I've seen people come on and kind of confront them on it Mm -hmm. and even the way he talks about his like being reformed and god and god uh determining all things and all the way he talks about it, it, it it's 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 so much more palatable than, yeah. than the way these other guys are saying it. Right. Like, yeah, God just determines all things and that's it. You know, like like he doesn't say it like that. You know, he even says like God gives us like I mean, I've heard this come out of his mouth, like God, like we do have choices we have to make. God gives us the borders, right? God makes the borders. So like like you only have so many choices, right? And God's gonna steer everything in this direction or that direction, kind of thing. So it's like the way He even describes the, it, it's way more palatable, and and and, and uh-huh. you know, and 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 He teaches like like we really do have free will, and our choices do matter, and we are responsible for them. And it's not like God chose for you. Yeah, yeah. Right? He he. If I can hear a Calvinist say that <laughs> there's accountability without being called synergistic, right? 
Yeah, all that it, nonsense it, is dumb. I mean, it, just, yeah. it just monitor just all that. Yeah, it is. It gets in the way. All, it's all nonsense. It gets in the way of something that's very simple to understand. You know. And, yeah, but that's all personal attack garbage. It's just invented to just it, uh, arguments. It, it's what it's. That's all it is. It's just it's nonsense, man. I mean, na- name one person that really doesn't believe they put their faith in Christ. Like, okay, I'm sorry. I don't care if you're a Calvinist who. Who, after the fact, says that God made you believe, or whatever the heck you want to say? Mm-hmm. We all know that you're the one that put your faith in Christ. You decided you were going to trust Christ. We all know it because we all live the same kind of. We have the you know life experience where we make choices, right? I mean, yeah. everyone lives that. That's the life experience we all experience. You know, you don't sit around and wait for God to make you go to the bathroom and do this and do that. No, you get up and you go, right? So it's like, well, come on, man. We all live the same. So you could you could say after the fact that God determines all these things, okay? But you live like you're making the choices, right? I mean, we all live the same kind of way, right? I mean, it's yeah. a choice. We make choices. I don't I don't care what anyone says. That's just the way life is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just, I would love to hear him say that, you know, like what's come out of this Leighton uh Dr. White uh debate here recently is that God drawing us, the Father drawing us, is really us coming in the truth, you know, of what God set out. God um, does draw us, though. Like, I mean, yes, yeah. but but not everybody accepts it, you know. That's uh, yeah. Well, that's where that's where the doctrines get weird, right? Yeah. Because yeah. like the, the like uh, it's it's almost like the Calvinists will say like God, uh, God doesn't draw all men, but yeah, no, God draws all men. God God draws men, and he. You know, by normal means, like by by the gospel, by by scripture, by preachers, by apologists, by by all kinds of means, right? God yeah. uses normal means. He doesn't do hocus pocus in your brain, as far as I know. You know, like we come to God through different means, but they're normal means, like our life experience. You know, like my my daughter being born was a big part of me coming to God. Uh, I ran into a, a, a someone like just out of nowhere, a Christian that just changed. Like, like I, I was like a like kind of like a dumb, almost like a dumb YouTube atheist that had all these like answers in my head for everything, and this guy just totally tore me up with with with, with answers, like real answers. It made me made like, and I don't know what it was but this time when I heard the answers, I shut up, and I actually listened to him, and I went home and I felt stupid. I was like, let me think about this now. And like this whole this whole chain of events like changed my trajectory, you know. And I believe that was God working through. Like you know what I mean? I, I, yeah. God God using people and different means to get me back, you know, to get me towards Him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how, yeah how do we know if God drew us? Well, it, if what you're believing is what is taught by God in the Word. And God's drawn you because faith comes by hearing the word of God, right? Yeah. Well, all that, like all that brought me back to the Bible, brought me back to, I mean, it, it, I mean, I could tell my, I could tell the story one day. I mean, it's not like some crazy story where I'm like smoking crack out on the streets and all this, like nothing crazy, but like, you know, it, it's, a, to me, it's like an amazing thing. You know what I mean? It's like a whole, I went from being this attitude, this total stupid attitude to like a chain of events, like one after another, after another, after another, that just drove me all the way back in. Like, I'm like, you know what I mean? And a part of me always knew God existed. I, I mean, I, I might've said I was a total atheist and like, God's not real, but uh, believe me, when something bad happened, uh, I was praying. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I mean, a total hypocrite. Uh, that, that definitely I was. But like when something bad would happen, the first thing I would do was look up to God, like God, please, 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 you know, like don't let my dad die, like kind of like crazy stuff like that. And, and like, but but you know, when when I was like you know like twenty something years old, I didn't want to hear nothing, and I just wanted to be with girls, and do drugs, and do whatever the heck I wanted. Yeah, I wasn't hearing nothing. I didn't want to believe in God. That's the thing. And then, like I said, I grew up a little bit, and things changed, and like this whole chain of events just set me on this whole different trajectory, like totally different, and changed the way I think. And like I said, I still struggle. I still have all kinds of problems, but God definitely draws people with with not you know it doesn't have to be supernatural means. I don't I don't mean I don't know what that means, but 
just you know, through people, through events, through life experience, God draws you, you know. And yeah, uh, to me, like it came to a point where I had to make a decision. Like, what am I doing? I'm not an atheist. This is dumb. Like, this is totally dumb. And I need help. I need God. <laughs> you know, and that's it. And so I totally agree. Like, like God draws people. But I did have the choice to say, no, nah, I'm just going to go screw girls and do drugs and fuck it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the F word. But, you know, screw it. So, you know, and that choice was definitely really there. I could have made that choice. I could have resisted. You know, so it's like a, that's where I disagree with the Calvinist. It's irresistible grace. No, it's resistible. Believe me. And I, you know, from time to time, I do resist it because I still sin, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, you can believe in God and believe in God and still deal with this sin, uh, you know, desire to sin at times, you know, I mean, it's all, it's all part of it. I mean. No, I agree with you, but it's like if, if, if God's, you know, if it was God's will and it's irresistible, it's like, then why are we running around messing up? Like, well, for me, part of my salvation, like practicing righteousness, is is instead of just saying, "Okay, this exists," so, you know, this desire to sin, and I can believe God at the same time. Okay, I, I can accept that. But when you're when you're practicing righteousness, now you're going to try to deal with it. You yeah, know, it's, yeah. like, it's not it's not just letting it sit there and uh, you know not dealing with it. Yeah, hey, amen. I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes I'll, I'll even, uh, yeah, I, I believe me, I mess up, man. I definitely mess up. And sometimes, yeah, but everybody, everybody does, Dan. I mean, everybody. I'll does. even, I'll even like try to like push it out of my mind, but it, it, it can never last that long. You know what I mean? It's like every day, it's like, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I stopped this. What, what is wrong with me? You know, and then I'll be on my knees. <laughs> I really will. I'll be on yeah, my knees. Yeah, yeah. And look, look. And listen, there is no timeline on this. There is no, it, this is what it is. It's about, it's about what's going on in your heart, you know? Yeah. Um, how are you looking at God? You know, and, and I promise you this, the more that you practice righteousness, which, which means that you admit your sins, knowing that he is faithful and just to forgive you. Right. Knowing that, that your sins are already paid for once you come to him. And so when you bring this sin to him on a daily basis and you're saying, you know, I, I sin. I admit my sins, Lord, and you start thanking him because he's faithful and just to forgive you, then you're getting your sins wrought in him. You're practicing this righteousness. You're dealing with whatever it is going on in your life. You're bringing it to him. Yeah. And, and so you and you got this relationship with him where yeah. you're dealing with that. You know what I mean? And, and you know, and I, I, know, I know like we're not promised like a, a better, like a, like some kind of peachy, clean life, easy life or something. But honestly, when I do, you know, cut cut out cut out like the nonsense and, and, and just just stop, you know what I mean? Stop and, and, and just really just try to focus and, and you know what I mean, try to do the right thing basically just let him lead me kind of thing. Uh my life does get so much better so quickly too. It's it's it's, it's amazing to me. It really is. Yeah, and then, then we'll we'll run a good we'll run a good run for a minute and then bam. Yeah. Something else, something else will come out, right? Or yeah. maybe, maybe the same thing will come up. Yeah. Well, you know, that's man, kind of how can, and then how can I do that again? I've done, you know, and, and you start beating yourself up a little bit. You go through that and then you start. And this is what I've learned. I said, just bring it to Christ every time. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and allow the goodness of God. Right. The fact that he is faithful and just to forgive you. Allow that goodness and that truth to do its work in you. I mean, uh, it wasn't like two months ago. I mean, I was like losing it, man. I really was. I was losing it. I, I was like, I felt like my world was falling apart. I'm like, what is happening? Everything was so good. What is happening? Like, why? My why, why is everything going wrong right now? And no lie, you know, like I. I mean, I then I then I I got even worse. You know, that's when I was sitting here going, please pray for me, please pray for me, because I'm falling. Like I didn't, I didn't give details or anything, but I'm like, I need help, man. Please pray. And then I, you know what I mean? I just kind of stopped and was like, you know what? I can't, I can't control any of this, man. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I, I can't control any of this. I just got to stop and, and stop yeah. acting like I'm going to fix everything. I'm, I'm, I'm in control of all this. Like I got it. You know what I mean? I just, I just stopped. 
and I calmed down. And you know what? And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I, I've been trying to do, you know, I mean, the best I, you know, best I can. I keep reading the Bible, keep praying. And, and you know what I mean? Trying to just let him lead me. Like, you know, like just do what's right, basically. And I'll tell you what. It has improved so much, so fast. It's insane. Like, I'm like so grateful. It's, It still has ups and downs, ups and downs. But it, like where I'm at right now, it's like. I could I, two months ago I was like, it's it's so much better. It's it's insane. It, it's so great. I'm so grateful. You surrendered, didn't you, Dan? You surrendered, Dan. I mean, yeah. see that that's like you know you, you when I when I first was going through this addiction that I had and um, you know I tried for I don't know how many years, man, to quit every month, every day, every week. You know, a new a new attempt to quit, and I failed and failed and failed and failed. And then I finally come to the conclusion, I said, God, if this is going to happen, you're going to have to do something that I can't do. And so I totally surrendered that God would do something like that. Uh, and then people say, well, how do you know God wants to do that for you? I said, well, what do you think he doesn't? Yeah, right. <laughs> is that how you look at God? I, I, I agree with you right there. Like, and, 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 and so when I come to that surrender, it was hard for me to stay in it, too, because, there, you know, I was popping in and out of it. Uh, with that doubt, thinking, well, well, what if God's punishing me, though, right now? What if he don't want this for me, you know? And all these kind of things. And and then I finally just come to that full surrender, man. And I just trusted him. And guess what? Along the way, I had a lot of failures. I had a lot yeah. of bumps and bruises, man, along the way. Well, I but think I, the devil creeps But I stayed consistent. The thing that the Lord did is he kept me consistent in keeping me in that surrender. Yep, Even yeah. when I did fail. Yeah, pick pick you right back keep, up. Get right back you right up. back on the track, right? Yeah, keeping me from falling. Every constantly. time you fall, it's like less and less almost kind of thing. Yeah, and no matter how many times it took, it didn't matter. I finally come to this conclusion that God does want these things for me. And I am weak to it. He knows this. And I have to depend on him and his strength, you know? I think he wants us to depend on him, right? I mean, that's yeah. the way I'm starting, like... He wants us to just and let, so in my, yeah, in let, my let, 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 like, let him help us, right? Well, well, not only that, just believe that he wants to. Yeah, amen. I, I mean, he loves a, us, a, right? He died for us. I mean, <laughs> there's a passage in James that says this, and, and and this is, I would like to run this to the free grace and Calvinists and all these people, right? There's this passage where it talks about wisdom, right? That God wants to give it to us liberally. He, he, he doesn't want to upbraid it. He doesn't want to, want to keep it from us or anything. He said, but there's one there's one expectation he has of us. And, and I think it's basically, do you think I'm the kind of God that doesn't want to give you good things? You know, that I don't want what's good for you? And, and that's basically what's being said, that if God made a promise that he would give you this wisdom if you asked for it, right? He doesn't want you to doubt it. Because if you do doubt it, you shouldn't yeah. expect anything from the Lord. Yeah, and, and you know what else? Else, like you know, people get in their heads all kinds of kooky stuff, like, like, uh, like money, like God's, like wants you to be rich or something. No, like I'm talking about godly things. Like I'm right. talking about my family and my, my, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that. Like that's, that's like what you know what I mean? That's what I want. That like God, I, I, I'm positive. Like I'm, I'm, I'm I, I, I totally trust that God wants this for me. I, I, I totally believe that. You know, you know, in the Bible, it talks about that the poor are given more faith, that, that they're given the reward to those that love God. It, it says that in James that, that basically the poor are given the reward. And I, and I had to look up poor. I said, what does that mean? Like they don't have no money or something? No, the poor are the ones that, that you, you know what it is? God wants you to understand that we are all poor in comparison to him. And mm -hmm. we have a need for him. Right. So that's how we are poor. When the Bible says, when Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He's saying, blessed are those that come to this truth, basically, yeah. that they understand that they are poor and they need me. Well, wasn't it like the disease guy or the blind guy? Didn't he say like he's closer to closer to God than, 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 than other people? Yeah, that's because he's more in the truth. It isn't because he's like a better person no, he or has he has some he better has values. God, right? I mean, he has to no, no. 
Listen, yeah. if you study out repentance in the Bible, man, you're going to come to this conclusion that it's never been about you meriting favor with God by stop doing something wrong. Right? Yeah. It, repentance is this, is that you come to a change of mind, which is uh, that you come to the truth that God set out. The truth is, if you say you don't sin, you're, you're a liar and you're not in the truth. Yeah, right? If you don't know that you're poor, you know, because blessed are the poor in spirit. That means blessed are those that have come to this truth and they come to me in this manner. Yeah. They, you, know? yeah. you, have, you have to know you, you, you need God, right? Yeah, yeah. because see, to really understand how salvation works through the mercy of God only, through his goodness, his grace only, you have to understand that you can't do this any other way. You cannot gain favor with God through anything that you do right. You can't. It's impossible. So when yeah, I, God, God, what, God taught me, God taught me to be very grateful for what I do have. I'll tell you that. Very great. Like I, I've learned to be so grateful recently for for the 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 like I'm blessed with so many good things. It's not even funny. Like God has brought so many good things to me, and I take them. I took them all for granted, basically. Right. You know, and it's like you appreciate what you do have because I, God has brought so many good things into my life. Uh, I, it's amazing. Well, I, I know this, man. When, when you're in that mindset of being poor, then you're on common ground, right? In First John 1, it says, um, when, when you walk in the light, as he is in the light. And, and when you really study that out, light being the truth, that he come to give us the glorious light of the gospel, that he's the light of the world. And and if we're walking in the light as he is in the light, that means we're walking according to the truth that he set out. And what that truth is, is that all men are depraved and are um, condemned, right? Yeah. And, and what I mean by depraved is that we're poor, we need him, right? I don't mean that. I don't mean that we can't ever make a right decision or anything like that. No, no. I mean that we're we need him, right? And so, when you're walking in the light, it's easy in the light. He said, "Then you'll have fellowship one another." I always thought that was a weird thing to say. Why in the world would they say fellowship? Well, that means it brings us all on this common ground. We're all in the same position before God. Every single one of us. It knocks a pride out. Uh -huh. Yeah, when you look around, every single one of us are in the same position. And so, yeah, we will have fellowship with one another. And then the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us from all sin. Why? Because we're in the truth. It, God doesn't operate in lies. That's uh, well said. So, you know, if you if you get that down, that surrender part, that you're you're poor, and the reason you're not able to overcome these things the pulling up of strongholds is not possible unless you come to this truth. And then God will come in and do a work in you. And you'll be sitting there going, you know, it'll be like this time four months from now. And you're sitting there going, how did I get here? Yeah. I struggled. I struggled this for 10 years. Then all of a sudden God came in and made a difference. Yeah. That's, that's how, that's almost how I'm feeling right now. Like, <laughs> how, like if it, like from like, it's probably maybe two or three months. It's like, I, I look back and I'm like, dude, I was like ready to just like lose everything. Like, I don't know. I can't even explain how bad my mind was. And it's like, look at this already. Like, you know what I mean? It's almost like it, it before, you know what I mean? It just happens. And you're like, wow. You know what I mean? And then that's what I'm saying. Like, that's when I got to step back and realize how good he's been to me because, you know, I didn't even realize like how much. Because, you know, like when you live your life day to day, it's almost like you don't see how much ch has changed. You have to step back almost for a second and really think about it. You know what I mean? Appreciate what God has done for you. So It's a beautiful thing, Dan. Amen. Thank God you. is good, man. And listen, it, and in this in this truth, though, everything gets locked into place, too, man. I mean, like there's so many things that connect to this in our daily walk and, and how we look at things and see things just in the simplicity of being poor in the need of, in the need of God and 
and being humbled by that truth, you know. Ah, who cares? We're saved, man. Do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, the last thing is that, you know. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that attitude? That just blows my mind. It's so sad and so wrong, and you shouldn't say that to anybody. It's just so, it's just so un, 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 unloving and ungrateful and dangerous. Ugh. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the last thing I would need to hear. Like, ah, don't worry about it, you know. God doesn't really do anything. What, what is it? What is it, a magic spell? What do you think the Holy Spirit really changes you? Like, I mean, that's the kind of things I hear him saying. I'm like, what? What? Like, you're just making people not want to be Christian, it sounds like to me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, no, the Holy Spirit does help you. God does help you. God does change your life. God is real. It's not like, it's not some words. He's a person. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, when the Holy Spirit comes in your life and you're sealed with him, if there isn't any change, if there isn't any difference, there isn't anything. Then who are you talking to? Like who, who are you then, praying then where, to? What where's you the Holy Spirit at? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was, like, was, was the Holy Spirit just ghosting you? Just kind of yeah. hanging out? I mean, but that's the way I mean, I've heard them I heard them say it several times. Like not once, not twice, not a misspeak. I literally heard them say it. Like when someone says, like, you know, you should feel some kind of change, like a you know, and it's not just a feeling though. It's it's a it's it's a it's a ongoing re, it's a, re, a relationship it's a person like you you god works with you like i don't know how, how do you say that synergism I don't, know. I don't really care what the words are no, it's, it's you know what i mean man, yeah. i don't care what the words are it's just that you know it's real it's not like some hocus pocus just a bunch of words just a book just some self-help help yeah. book or something i wonder i wonder how many of the it's the, real it's real. God is real. It's not like I wonder how many people in the Book of Acts and and Corinthians, you know, Thessalonians, uh, Philippi, all these things, uh, which I think that's going to be the next book we go to in our Sunday night Bible studies. So Philippians, but I wonder how many people in these churches right then we're having the kind of conversations they're having today, you know, with these labels and with these none of them theological zero. arguments, you know, probably zero. Uh, I mean, there was definitely the, you know, like the battles with the Gnostics and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I guess when we get closer to the Council of Nicaea and the early church fathers, there is like quite a bit of a, uh, heresy yeah. mounting at that point. Yeah, but I mean, and that's just, yeah, I mean, I don't want to say it's just, but I mean, that's just like ironing out doctrine and like just, getting rid of bad ideas, kind of like what we're hearing now. But, like, there's nothing new under the sun, right? No. <laughs> so. Nope. Started in the garden and hasn't really changed. I, I don't know. I just don't like to, to hear people take the the love of God out of God. Like, I just don't well, like it's, like, it's, like, it's like if I say, hey, Dan, I got this box here. I want you to take this box, uh, take it to 110 South Avenue, right? And you know where this is at. Drop it off to the guy, and the guy the guy will pay you, right? Uh-huh. But along the way, you start questioning, well, what if the guy doesn't pay me? Yeah, right. So then you start plotting out different ways. Okay, well, I'm going to do this, man, but I'm going to make sure this guy pays me. I ain't giving him the box till he gives me the money. And then and you start changing everything, right? Yeah, I'm going to call the guy first. And, and then, it don't, then it don't work out. You know what I mean? And you're sitting there like, well, this is kind of like uh, how I see things sometimes. Like even in the garden, you know, it's very straightforward. Don't eat of this tree. Well, what if I do eat of this tree and it makes me to be more like God? Yeah, right. Maybe that's why he said it. And you know what I mean? It's these questions. These answers. You can't just take the word of God straight from what it says and believe it and leave it pure and do exactly what it says. Yeah. You gotta manipulate it. You gotta, you gotta convolute it. Pride. 
It's pride. We all think we know the best, right? We're all smarter than God. Yeah, us analyzing it makes us so intellectual. Yeah. Instead We're of so just take, taking it at face value for what it says and just listening and just, you know what I mean? We've got to turn into this convoluted, like, just mess. Yeah, that, but that, I'm saying that's the same thing that's been going on, like you said, that's strange. I think that's the same thing that's been going on since the beginning. You know? Yeah, probably. I don't doubt. Well, I'm going to get off here, Dan. I'm going to shut this sucker down. Yeah, I'm tired. I got to go to bed anyway. I got work in the morning. All right. God bless you, Paul. All right, Dan. God bless you. It's good seeing you, buddy. You too. Take care, man. All right. You take care. Bye. Good night, anyone. Left remaining. God bless.